Thank you so much, TJ. The December 15th, 2020, 6 p.m. meeting of the Douglas County Board of Commissioners will come to order. Please allow me to start uh, the meeting uh, with roll call to verify the presence of our district commissioners. Uh, when I call your names, please acknowledge your presence. Uh, district 1, Commissioner Mitchell. I'll come back. Okay. District okay. 2, okay. Commissioner. I, I heard Can you. Can you hear me now? Uh-huh, oh. yes. District 2, Commissioner Kelly Robinson. Present. District 3, Commissioner Tarina Carthian. Carthan. District 4, Commissioner Ann jones guider Present. Chairman Jones, present. The board is present and the full board is present and accounted for. Uh, this evening, uh, Board of Commissioners and Citizens of Douglas County, we will move on into our invocation and we are pleased to have with us our own Director of Communications, Rick Martin, uh, to lead us in our invocation. And after the invocation, I ask that you join me in citing the pledge to the flag. Uh, Rick Martin, you have the floor. Good evening, Madam Chair, Board of Commissioners, staff, if you may bow our heads. Our Heavenly Father, I come to you with the honor and privilege to pray at a time where life is filled with change, transition, death, and sickness. I pray for your divine power to continue being in control. I ask for your continued protection of our citizens, our first responders, and our elected leaders. I pray, Heavenly Father, for the wisdom and discernment to be conveyed over this meeting. I pray for the astonishing ability of our elected officials to judge and decide well. I thank you for our local government and the privilege of free speech. But I also pray for the ability of understanding no matter what our differences are. I pray for civility and emotions to be removed. And more importantly, I pray for love. Let the lessons of love's impact be shared among all who are part of tonight's meeting. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Thank you so much, Director Martin, for that uh, powerful prayer. Uh, Board of Commissioners and citizens, if you would join me in reciting the pledge to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Board of Commissioners and citizens of Douglas County, and thank you, Director Martin, again for rendering the invocation this evening. Clerk, do we have anyone sign up for public comment? Yes, ma'am. We had um, six individuals sign up, so I will go through them first, and then we will ask if there are any others out there that have just called in. So, okay, thank you. Um, before I start, um, just please limit your comments to three minutes. When I call your name, please restate your name and your subject matter for the record. Once you've reached your three minutes, I'll ask you to wrap up your comments. So the first person who I have here is Mr. John Tomaski. Mr. Tomaski, are you on the line? Maybe he hasn't joined yet. I'll, I'll come back to him. Um, Pastor Daryl Mauman. Uh, yes, can you hear me? Yes, sir. You can go ahead and start. Just restate your name for the record and your subject matter. All right, Pastor Daryl Mauman of Old Mountain Top Baptist Church in Winston, Georgia. Listen, I want to talk for just a few moments. Uh, and I want to start off like this. Is Slavery still alive. The slavery still in existence because in slavery they had people that were riding horses carrying a whip, and this whip uh, we called them crackers on the side because they would crack the whip and beat you down and make you work hard, bend your knees and bow your head, tote that bar until you're dead. And we worked 
from can't see morning to can't see night. And they gave it what you call cotton picking tape. And it's sad that when the slavery was over in the 1800s, and here it is, 2020, we still acting like somebody got a whip and popping us in the back to bend us over to work a certain kind of way. But here it is, 2020, I want to ask that question to those beautiful folk that's sitting on this commission and those that are listening to my little humble voice. Because the sad thing about all of it is that we got people that don't want to change. We got people that don't want to do what's right about particular things such as uh, America and even Georgia and Douglasville. They, they got things that they hold on so strong that they want to keep men down and keep men hurt. But the saddest part is that we got a situation here now. A young lady that won by vote and have been raised up by working hard in her life, a lawyer, seven years experience, and only got two other judges that done the same thing, that making a particular thing. And then the sad thing that one judge stand up with his will, cracking it on Channel 5 with another white man on that white channel that, that that's really into one thing. And that thing is wrong because it's not about right. And they crack their whip on this situation. And here it is. We got history. The first black and woman that's the probate judge. And we sitting up here allowing them to crack a whip to make her work but cotton pick and pay the same thing as a man that worked in what they said. All you had to have is a, is a diploma, G, GED, and, 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 and 25 years old. And now this court has been raised up, and you're going to let somebody get on there from another courtroom who need to mind their own business, crack his whip, and tell you she ought not get that. But if she do get it, y'all need to give me a raise. As though saying a, a, a woman ain't got no business getting what he gets, or a black person ain't got no business getting it. So I want to ask the question to all y'all that's there now. I got to ask you this. Are you a slave? If you're not a slave, then the day you need to vote right. Don't let nobody pop no whip and make y'all get this girl cotton picking tape. This is a woman that has fought for right in Devlin County and stood strong and fought to do the right thing. And all y'all need to do is right. But, but, if you let, but if you let her do the same thing, get that same little salary because somebody done crack their whip, I hate to tell y'all, Commissioner, because I love you. I hate to tell you if, you, if you vote for that, you, you vote that you still a slave. You got to deliver yourself because it's right to do right. And if you're going to be a slave like that, then ain't no use of running for nothing but for change. Because change is not upon us if we're going to still do the same thing. We raise it up to the standard where everybody see eye to eye. Let this thing be seen eye to eye. Let this young lady work with the full qualification of what she's supposed to have. Just like the other two judges, $175,000 a year is the truth, and ain't nothing wrong with it. For the qualification, anybody that got their whip, I want you to know I will snatch your whip away with words that's right, and I won't be silent anymore, and nobody else will be silent. Because you think this is right, it won't be right, because I'm not a slave. And if y'all not a slave today, y'all must vote for right, and y'all must stand up and vote for that 175 and that budget that you need to successfully run her, her office like that other judge that was on Channel 5. Thank you for letting me talk, and I love you very much. Thank, thank you so much, uh, Pastor Mormon. Um, uh, Lisa, you you have the floor again. Thank you so much, Pastor Mormon. Uh, Mormon. We'll take this uh, your this matter under advisement, and uh, we appreciate you coming in, uh, expressing your concerns today. Uh, Clerk, you. you have the floor again. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I wanted to see if Mr. Tomaski has um, joined yet. Yes, I'm not ready. Okay, you can go ahead, Mr. Tomaski. Just um, just a reminder to keep your comments under three minutes and uh, go ahead and restate your name and your subject matter, please. Go ahead. 
Uh, John Tomaski, I'm talking about the uh, budget. There's a few points. I'll start with uh, the one presumably the last gentleman was speaking about, and that has got to do with the uh, probate court. Uh, according to the official code of Georgia, 1594, once a county's population exceeds 90,000, the next probate judge must be a licensed attorney of at least seven years' experience in the practice of law and 30 years of age or more. Previous requirement was 25 years old, not 30, and only a high school diploma, not even a college graduate much less a person with a degree in law and experience in the practice of law. The probate court now requires capacity for jury trials, for which previous judge did not have jurisdiction. Newly invoked qualifications for probate judge are identical to those for state and superior court judges. Hence, now probate judge is entitled to salary higher than the last probate judge, not less than that. In fact, entitled to a salary comparable, not at par, but comparable to the state and superior court judges. I therefore suggest that you act on this in accordance with the requirements of state law. Once the population went over 90,000, state law requirements kicked in. And what was the case previous to that is irrelevant because that is a different universe. You know very well that there are distinctions in state law between large and smaller counties. Moving on to the tax commissioner's office, the tax commissioner has uh, been uh, criticized from time to time for uh, Spending money, but he's been spending it wisely. <clears throat> he came in and was told not to bother to collect back, back taxes because they would be uncollectible. He collected $5 million and only had to hire one employee to do that. A great return on investment. Thank you for the time, and I hope you all have a great evening. Thank you, Mr. Tomaski. Um, Thank you. Our Thank next you. speaker, our next speaker would be Miss Alva Armenta. Did I pronounce that correctly? Yes, you did. Okay, you can go ahead. Um, good evening. Thank you for your time. Um, this is Elva Armenta, and I'm a resident of Douglas County. Uh, in regards to the bu uh, the subject budget, I um, just wanted to just kind of piggyback on what the previous um, gentleman said. I, 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 sh I agreed that um, the probate um, judge um, should get uh, what she deserves, and I think that's only fair, you know, you know to if you can take into consideration giving her um, the salary that she d deserves since she is qualified and she has a... Um, a law degree so uh, just if you can just take that into consideration um, um, and you know so um, that's all I have to say really just in regards to that thank you okay thank you um, the next speaker miss uh, Triana James uh, yes I'm here okay go ahead 
Uh, good evening, everyone. I don't know how, what's the time limit? Two minutes? Three minutes. Three minutes, okay. Uh, I'm Triana Arnold James. I'm a resident of Douglas County. And um, I'm also the president of Georgia National Organization for Women um, and a recently elected board member for the national headquarters out of Washington, D.C., uh, which is headquartered in D.C. And I just wanted to say that, you know, um, first of all, we're in the year of 2020. Uh, 100 years ago, we celebrated a woman's right to vote um, in 1920. And, and here we are in the 100th uh, centennial celebrating that, just receiving the right to vote. And then also we're 97 years uh, since the Equal Rights Amendment was presented. And the Equal Rights Amendment talks about equal pay for equal work. And as we know that the uh, equal pay for equal work has not been ratified, it is not just even in 2020. And we're still, as women, we're still fighting for equal pay for equal work. Even um, um, as Black women are being paid, uh, less than what uh, our white men or white women or black men are being paid. And so, and I'm not trying to make this about race, but what I am saying is it's time for equal pay for equal work. Um, the elected probate judge, she's qualified. She has a, uh, the law degree. She's more than qualified. She was elected uh, by the people. And, uh, and then with the expansion of probate court, in all the duties that it is here, I can't imagine not receiving her just due pay as well as um, a budget so that she could get her job, so she could do her job. And I don't think that we're asking for anything that's unfair or unrelated or above, um, as you know, what pundits have said and, and the media has said. I do not believe that, um, you know, we that she's not asking for. Uh, anything more. Only thing we're saying is uh, to be fair and to be just. Uh, pay her what she deserves and uh, let us move on so we can continue to move this county forward um, in the right direction. Um, and if that's what's needed, and, I, and I've seen the budget, and I know that that's what's needed, then just give it to her. Do the right thing and, um, and so that we can continue to move forward. Um, like, again, I'm not trying to make this about race. I'm not trying to talk about, you know, between man and woman. But, um, and as we know, in the in the early 1900s, everybody thought that the man was the breadwinner. Well, in 2020, it's not like that. And so you have a qualified person that's elected by the people. And I, I'm asking, I'm requesting, demanding that you give her what she deserves and pay her what, what is rightfully so. So thank you all once again. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak on her behalf. Thank you, Ms. James. Our next speaker is uh, Sharon Bachtel. Ms. Bachtel, are you on the line? Hello? Yes, Ms. Bachtel, you can go ahead and start. Okay, this is Sharon Bachtel. I live in District 3, and uh, I'm talking about the budget. First, I would like to say uh, Merry Christmas to everybody and Happy Holidays, and thank you for allowing me to speak. At the last meeting, many of you said I was misinformed, so I sent an email to Chairwoman Jones and asked her to explain, but I received no reply. If I am misinformed, then the misinformation comes from the Douglas County budget books and the financial reports and the Douglas County committee meetings that I watch online. I stated that the tax commissioner increased his budget by 40% and overspent it every year. Here are the numbers. In 2016, the previous commission budget was 1214527 His actual budget was 1186492 The previous tax commissioner was $66,876 under budget. In 2017, the budget was $1,255,366. The actual budget was $1,405,009. That's $149,643 over budget. In 2018, the budget was $1,526,134. 
The actual budget was one million five hundred thirty-five thousand eight hundred and five. That was nine thousand six hundred seventy-one over budget. In 2019, the budget was one million six hundred seventy-two thousand six hundred sixty-three. Actual budget one million seven hundred thirty-nine thousand five hundred thirty-nine. Sixty-six thousand eight hundred seventy-six dollars over budget. In 2020, the budget was set at $3,116,238, which included a $150,000 contingency fund and a $1,017,000 budget improvement for software. If you subtract the $1,017,000 software, the actual budget is $2,099,238, which is a 42% increase over the 2016 budget. Also, for 2017 through 2019, the, uh, he overspent the budget $226,000, $226,190. It doesn't not matter why, it matters that he did it. The coroner increased her budget also. In 2017, the adopted budget was 123,954. Her actual budget was 216,364. That would be 92,410 over budget. In 2018, the adopted budget was 145,565. Her actual budget was 221,572, and that's $76,000 over budget. In 2019, the adopted budget increased to 212,707. She spent 209,691, which was 3,016 under budget. In 2020, her budget was 214,552, which is 39% more than the 2016 budget. In three years, she overspent the budget 165,401. It seems like some departments are rewarded for overspending their budgets. What is the incentive for coming in under budget? I also said the revenues, well, I'm going to go ahead and stop because evidently I'm out of time, but I just want to say that, number one, I think somebody should explain to me why you think I'm misinformed, but I just want you to remember this pandemic has been horrible for the citizens, too lost businesses, lost jobs, lost loved ones. You increased our taxes 27%. That is money that we could be using for our own needs. Please don't waste it and cut spending. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bachtel. Um, our next speaker would be Mr. Steve Benton. Hello. I'm Steve Hi. Benton. Okay, go ahead and start, please. Uh, my wife and I have been residents of Douglas County over 35 years. Uh, we live in the Kensington subdivision off Presley Mill Road. I uh, am formerly a, a public servant. I worked with the Atlanta Police Department for 15 years before leaving to go into, into uh, corporate America. Um, we first have to understand that this is a public service position. This is not a private uh, entity position. Uh, the judge-elect knew what the salary was when she ran for election and was elected. She subsequently has asked for uh, a substantial raise. Uh, I'd like to bring up some figures here real quick. First of all, I looked up to today several different uh, figures. First, the average uh, medium in, median income for an attorney in Douglasville, Georgia, is $94,139. 90% uh, our top attorneys in Douglasville, Georgia, earn $120,869. That's, uh, uh, you can compare that with the salary that, uh, uh, uh for our probate judge. Um, currently, in, uh, in the state, in, around the city of Atlanta, probate judges average $111,000. That's uh, uh, that is a five-year change. Uh, the current average base salary for 
uh, probate judges in Georgia is $98,676 per year. That's based on a, a seven year uh, seven years of experience in the job. Uh, a senior judge would make one hundred and twenty-two thousand. Uh, I, I need to ask and 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 reemphasize, not ask, but reemphasize that this is a public service job. This is not a private entry entry job somewhere with some top law law uh, uh, firm. Um, the U.S. Uh, assistant U.S. attorney starting salary. And in, in uh, the Northern District of Georgia, is $92,000 a year. Now, I go back to the original statement. This young lady, and I'm sure she's qualified, uh, ran for this particular office knowing full well, or should have known, what her salary would be. Not after she was elected, not after requesting an additional pay raise and staff for... Uh, for herself, uh, and the pay raise she's asking for is well in advance and exceeds that of all other probate judges in the state of Georgia. Anyway, thanks. For Were you finished, Mr. Benton? I said yes. Thanks for letting me okay. share. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um. That's all the citizens that we had signed up, Chairman, but I wanted to ask if there were any others that had called in that didn't get a chance to sign in that wanted to speak. Madam Chair, um, yes, I okay. had signed up, and uh, my name is Alan Nottingham. Okay, Mr. Nottingham, you have the floor, and uh, keep in mind you have three minutes to um, speak. Thank you. I'll be, yes, I'll be short and sweet. I'll be mm. short and sweet. Yes. Madam Chair, mm -hmm. uh, members of the board, greetings. Um, I'm Alan Nottingham from Douglas County, uh, and I want to take this opportunity to thank the board for allowing me this moment to speak regarding the judge of the appropriate court salary. Uh, there are two main reasons um, I would emphasize on is that um, the consideration for an increase in the budget regarding the judge of the probate court salary. The two main reasons, which is the normal in any business, qualification, that is, the qualification has changed. The responsibility has increased for a wider jurisdiction according to the state, then it's only fitting that the salary consideration should be considered at the time when these changes were made. And now that this is the budget we are talking about, it's not in the middle of the year or, or after the end of the year. This is the beginning of a budget which we are working out. And that is what we do with a budget. We work it out, we tweak it, and where fear is fear, that the opportunity for this individual to get compatible salary, I would ask the committee to actually uh, make this possible. As again, our taxes has gone up, and a lot of people are going through many different things. And talking about qualification, I've experienced this myself when I came into Douglas County 26 years ago, applying to the Board of Education. And at that time, I had a bachelor's degree in management. I have been a procure manager for quite a while with experience. And the fact was, I was overqualified for that position because as a result, I've been traveling from Douglas County to Alpharetta and Cartersville on a daily basis to work when I could have been working near home and making similar salary. So I know it's difficult, but this is what budget is all about, to tweet it, to make it possible where you make things fair and square. And if this person, when they make this, this um, 
situation whereby your salary is going to be the same, but the responsibility and qualifications got to be at a higher level, then it's obvious that uh, you should come to terms with the uh, salary that is being paid. I will ask the board to consider it in the budget. Thank you. Have a happy, merry Christmas and be safe to all. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nottingham. Are there any other citizens that did not get a chance to sign up that would like to speak? Yes, this is uh, Kevin Holder. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Holder. All right, um, I want to talk about probate court. Um, good evening, Madam Chairwoman and other members of the commission. My name is Kevin Holder, and I serve as the executive director for the county probate court judges of Georgia. Um, our council statutory mandate as set forth in OCGA 15-9-15 is among all things to quote, further the improvement of the probate courts and the administration of justice, end quote. I wanna provide some context for the responsibilities of our respective probate courts and judges across Georgia's 159 counties. Yes, all 159 probate courts handle general probate matters such as estates, guardianships, and conservatorships, both for minors and adults. But then things get more interesting because 119 of our courts have vital records responsibilities, such as Douglas, uh, 88 of our courts have traffic jurisdiction, 31 of our courts handle elections. All of our courts handle our most well-known administrative function, which is licensing for marriages and weapons. But we are the so-called catch-all courts because there are other matters that are random in scope and are performed by our courts. Our class of court is comprised of both attorney judges and non-attorney judges. The magistrate courts are the only other class of court that allow for non-attorney judges. At the start of the next term, we will also have 27 Article VI courts, and Douglas County will be making the transition to the status of Article VI. By law, judges of Article VI courts must be attorneys and have practiced law for at least seven years. <laughs> has concurrent jurisdiction with superior courts in certain matters as set forth in OCGA 15-9-127. Not surprisingly, our respective Article VI courts have the highest number of general probate and mental health filings each year. Similarly, they also process the most marriage and weapons licenses each year. For all intents and purposes, they are our high volume courts. Not to mention the other various and sundry matters that aren't so neatly captured in a data point as other matters may be. For these matters, Article VI probate courts tend to be more adequately resourced than our non-Article VI courts. Finally, if needed at any point now or in the future, I'll be more than happy to provide you all with any information relative to the work of our probate courts across our 159 pro counties across the state of Georgia. Thank you very much for your time and enjoy the rest of your meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Holder. Are there any other citizens that would like to speak? Okay, Chairman, that was all the citizens that we have signed. But we do have um, Tax Commissioner Mr. Greg Baker uh, wanted to speak as well. Okay. Okay. Uh, ahead, I'm, I'm online now. Uh, I'm just going to go over the budget because I got a copy of my budget this year. And again, for the young lady that spoke about the tax commissioner office being over budget. Again, I've never been over budget since I've been here. I've stated that you can come to my office. I'll be happy to go over everything with you. You stated that you email Chairman Jones, but it's actually my office that handles that. And so I'll be happy to sit and talk to you with that and go over my budget in detail but let's talk about the current budget that we got coming up now uh just going over my budget i got today i noticed that salaries had been reduced by twenty six thousand. uh part-time has been reduced by seventy two thousand, and overtime reduced to zero um again i don't know why i just got this uh, but anyway, I I can't really work with the budget I received. Also, my postage has been reduced in this budget, which sends out all the bills and uh, statements to all the citizens of Douglas County. Um, 
to me, I don't know why this budget was was reduced, but I'd love to hear why. Uh, most of my part-time people handle calling citizens of Douglas County that are behind and not got their taxes payments in to the tax commissioner's office, which amounts to about $1,463,000. So if I reduce that by $72,000, I estimated that the county would lose about a million four in this year budget coming up. And with the cuts that I've uh, seen to my budget so far, which I'll be sit happy to sit down and go over you guys with, uh, we will we will be short somewhere around three three million six hundred forty three dollars eight oh eight, um, and that's just something that I came up with this evening, this afternoon after looking at my budget. So again, constitutionally, I'm obligated to do certain things, and I don't have any choice. That's mandated by the state, and with what you propose is I'm happy to work with you. Uh, we took the 800 and some odd stuff, thousand out for software, uh, which we did because I was promised to get that back in the January budget, uh, which we were supposed to get started on this. We don't have a software company to complete the current digest as of yet. So that's something else that we have to take in consideration. And I thank you for your time. And that's all I got for right now. Thank you, Mr. Baker. Chairman, I'll turn it back over to you. All right, thank you so much. And I would like to thank all our citizens who came in today to, to uh, express your concerns and provide public comment. And also thank you so much, uh, Commissioner, uh, Tax Commissioner Baker. Uh, all of everybody, everyone's uh, matter will be taken under advisement. Uh, we're I, moving. I raised my hand, am I able to speak? Uh, we, we're we finished with the well, yes, I, I will not close it off. Uh, Lisa, did uh, you have the probate court uh, judge on this, on the list to speak? But we certainly open it up for additional people to speak. So um, probate ju judge, um, newly elect uh, Peterson, you have the floor. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I just wanted to state um, for the record, um, there's a lot of news reportings that I've seen. It's been misreporting, and I just want to clarify a few things. Um, for instance, um, the first thing that has been misreported was um, I, as probate, the judge-elect, first of all, I've never, I never asked for a car allowance that was offered to me um, by uh, the county chair. Um, and that's fine um, if that was taken away. I saw that was recently taken away. But understand, the reason I came before the Board of Commission, period, is because y'all are considering the budget. I know the trend, once I come in office, January 1st, this court transitions to Article 6. I asked for the budget necessary to help me do my functions. Um, not getting the probate court, not getting what it needs ultimately affects the citizens of Douglas County. So the citizens might be uh, upset at this point. Oh, she's asking for more. But if you if this court can't function, it ultimately affects the citizens of the county. Now, as probate judge, I'm a public servant, but I, you must understand that this court is not subservient to any other court in this county. I saw some news articles um, misreporting um, salaries in neighboring counties. Um, those judges came to me and they were very upset. Um, Randy Travis of Fox 5 misreported a lot of things. He talked to Kevin Holder from the probate council and Kevin Holder gave him the true and factual information. That information was not reported. So this is, it, it's concerning, um, but I know what we're in. Basically, I'm just saying, I'm looking for fairness across the board. I understand that the count, the commission chair removed the car allowance because she said she was remaining fair and consistent. So in regards to salary, I ask that you also still remain fair and consistent. When you were looking at the, at the, at the salaries for um, state and superior courts, I don't think you looked at the Carroll County and, and Paulding County numbers. We didn't compare Atlanta attorney numbers. 
you came, they came in and you gave them the salary of 179, 179,000. When the state court judges came in, they came in day one at 171,000. And that's not including their supplements. That, that's not including their supplements. So I think it's not being fair and consistent. I have those same qualifications as everyone else everyone else. So I'm just in regards to the budget. My budget hasn't been changed. Um, it looks like it's it's same. I have like operating expenses of around 18,000. That's not sufficient to, when I said it was not sufficient, I mean, it's not sufficient to run this office. And I'm just asking that this county remains to lead by being a leader um, instead of being politicians. A politician is controlled by relationships and who he likes in order to lend help. A leader is led by doing right. And my constituents, out of 6, 69,000 people that voted, 51, about 52,000 checked my name to, for probate judge. You voted for inclusiveness, fairness, and consistency. And I ask that you remain to be consistent and fair when we're talking about my salary and we're talking about the budget for the office so that I, I can make sure I protect the people of the county. I protect your family members. I protect your estates. I protect your money. I protect your vital records by any means necessary. I, you can guarantee you get that from me. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, newly elected probate judge, uh, Christina Peterson. We appreciate you coming in and you, this matter certainly uh, will be taken under advisement. Thank you. All right, uh, any other uh, citizens who want to speak before I go on to the next topic? And also I appreciate our uh, newly elected official speaking and also our elected official um, tax commissioner Baker coming in as well. Board of commissioners, if, uh, if you do not have any comments, certainly it's your pleasure. I'll move on to the approval of the minutes. Board of Commissioners, you have the minutes of the commission meeting December 1st, 2020, the work session minutes of November 30th, 2020, the special call meeting minutes of December 7th, 2020, and the executive session minutes of November 30th, 2020, and December 7th, 2020. Are there any corrections, additions, additions or deletions that need to be made? No, ma'am. Being none, the minutes stand approved as presented. All right, Board of Commissioners, we're going to move on to a public hearing. We have three public hearings tonight, and uh, the first public hearing is tab number five, public hearing to consider amending the Douglas County Code of Ordinances to allow for virtual meetings. Before I open this public hearing, I will yield to Attorney Bernard to facilitate discussion about this proposed consideration for amending the Douglas County Code of Ordinances to allow for virtual meetings. Attorney Bernard, are you on the line? Yes, ma'am, Madam Chair and board members. Uh, this matter comes to you as an update to the code. Uh, the code when drafted obviously did not have the technological features that we now have and then the year 2020, Madam Chair asked me to look at and the legal department to look at updating the code to, uh, to allow for virtual meetings of both the board and committees thereof uh, as necessary. This proposed change would just simply add that as in the toolbox of arsenals for the Board of Commissioners to meet in compliance with Georgia law and in compliance with the Open Meetings Act. It also gives the clerk the discretion to make sure that the public input is heard both at virtual meetings, similarly as it is heard in regular meetings where we're all together. Uh, because the public cannot sign up 10 minutes beforehand, the clerk has been getting get, been given gratis in order or, or flexibility in order to make sure the public can participate in the process of meetings. So this does not require the meetings to be virtual. This just gives the ability in a non-emergency setting, which we're in today, uh, in a non-emergency setting for this board and committees thereof to meet virtually so long as they're advertised, published, and the public has participation rights. Okay, thank you so much, Attorney Bernard. Um, thank you for your uh, deliberation. Uh, this public hearing is now open for citizens' comment. Are there any citizens here that would like to speak regarding the ordinance amendment? 
Do we have anyone on the line that want to speak? OK. Being none, uh, that we have no one here to speak, this public hearing is now closed. Board of Commissioners, do you have any comments? Yes, ma'am. OK. Vice Chairman Robinson. Um, thank you, Madam Chair, and greetings to all. Uh, County Attorney Ken Barnard, um, one more time, this is, is this always or just whenever we need to? And before you answer that, um, you know, I, I, I do believe in high touch. I personally don't believe in this technology in this new age. I, I, I get it, and that's where society as a whole is, is going. Uh, and I understand it's going to be an important fabric, um, but it's nothing like looking a person eye to eye, right? It's nothing like it. I think there's some truth to our founders who created like, no, you got to have access to the politicians. I get it. Uh, I, I, um, there is a dark side to technology. Uh, there is something about like, okay, y'all know these are avatars, what's real. Um, this younger generation really believes like, you know, 9-11 didn't happen. Right, they, they look at it like no, that wasn't real, right? So, so there's something about like, I get it, I get its importance, but I don't ever want to give away or give up the right or to nullify uh, th this through convenience or local ordinance, the right for the citizens to have access to us. It's not like being in the town hall and letting the citizens go at you. I love it. I feed on it. That's important. You got to feel them, right? Personally. I can't see. Uh, you guys know I, I'm blind, so it's irrelevant that through this. I have to listen. It's all about listening. And so it's nothing like being in person per se, but uh, I just wanted to go on record for that, that uh, while I'll, I'll support it, I'm still making a pause on, I don't want to give up the right that we will always be in virtuality. Uh, I get right now we're in COVID, Madam Chair, no problem. Keep it moving, keep it moving, keep us safe, no problem. But I, I, at some point, um, I hope this board considers like, okay, once once that's been lifted, uh, and, and I get that there may be some convenience sake, convenience sake, but never give up the full right of, of being accessible to the citizens uh, person to person. And um, with that, Madam Chair, I yield the floor. Uh, but Ken, can you answer that question? Is it forever, ever, or is it just convenient? Uh, no, <clears throat> no, sir. I think it's intended to be for convenience. It does not convey the right. It doesn't convey the future right to meetings outside of an emergency to always be virtual. That would be up to this body. I guess the chair of the committee and the chair men would have, chair woman would have the right to call a meeting, but this board ultimately is run by a majority vote. So this is not intended to set a precedent for a non-emergency always meeting virtually. virtually. It just simply could as an asset or a tool. Understood. Just wanted to clarify that. Madam Chair, I yield the floor. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from the board? Uh, Commissioner Guider? Yes, ma'am. And maybe I to direct this to Kenny. Is it possible to set a number of uh, virtual meetings for each individual uh, commissioner? Like three. I'm, three. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I missed. I did not hear you. I'm sorry, Commissioner I'm, Guider. Okay, is it possible to um, put any ordinance? I don't you know. Can't order, you can't do anything with the Come feedback. Come on, got some papers so, going. I need to, uh, everyone. If you can mute your microphone, please. All right. You have uh, the floor. If, what's, if it was possible that we could put. Uh, a limit on the number of virtual meetings each commissioner could have uh, without it being, a, you know, it, it's not an excuse, you know, such as three a year. And that's... Well, that's let, let me... Go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. Go ahead. No, I, I was pretty finished, but I was just wondering, is it possible to do a limit on that to keep someone from just skipping all the meetings. <laughs> yeah, well, well, uh, Madam Guider, let me suggest this. Th this rule only makes virtual meetings possible. It does not change Robert's rules of order 
or any future rule or, or, or policy that this board comes up in the future. So this policy was not intended to reach as a mandate on commissioners of attending or not attending. Right now, a quorum is established by the nature of the meeting. So if it's virtual, under Robert's rule, the meeting is established by attendance in a virtual meeting. If it's in person, the, the meeting requirements are established um, by actually attending the meeting. This is not intended to overcome procedural aspects of Robert's rules or, or order or any other. I do believe somewhere, and I'm saying this off the top of my head, is buried an attendance uh, as part of the duties of a commissioner. There may be somewhere buried something about attendance, but this is not intended to, to breach that or mandate how one attends. The right now, the question is, if we have a virtual meeting, attendance is appearing virtually. If we have a physical meeting, attendance is by appearing physically, and the rules of Robert's, Robert's Rules of Order, any procedural uh, rules that this board establishes downrange would govern what is considered attendance. So I want to be careful about getting outside the box that's been uh, dra been proposed today and say this does something else. But presumably this board could establish rules regarding that so long as it does not violate the charter and does not violate state law. But this is not intended to address those two topics. Well, uh there's two situations here. It's like the pandemic during the pandemic and then after post pandemic when we get back to actually going to the courthouse and everything. So uh, and there was some talk uh, yesterday about the fact that it um, it'd be nice to be able to access the meeting if you could not make the meeting by doing it like through like the telephone like uh, Commissioner uh, Mitchell is doing tonight. So, um, but I'm, I guess we're going to do both. I, I'm kind of confused about all of this. Well, I think right now attendance is established by the nature of the meeting. If it's virtual, however you appear virtually, and one of the options we provide virtually besides a, vis a visible screen or Zoom or Microsoft Teams is a phone link. So that meets the attendance requirement during an emergency. Uh, physical presence meets the attendance requirement when y'all are meeting physically. This ordinance change has nothing to do with either. This ordinance change has nothing to do with what establishes quorum, what establishes a minimum attendance or anything like that. But the nature of the meeting establishes what is considered quorum. So while I understand the question, I don't know that that question has any uh, has anything that's on the table presently. We'll be glad to look at whatever this board asks us to look at and, and get more in depth about attendance and what that means and all that. But right now, the nature of the meeting establishes quorum. So this is just to make it legal to this, have these virtual meetings that we're, we've been having. <laughs> Oh, no, I think it, no, I think in an emergency, well, so long as there's a group, the reason why you're having virtual meetings right now is because I, I, I don't want to say I said you could. They've been called by the chairman, but the law allows in an emergency a flexibility of rules of procedure for purposes of meetings so long as they comply with the Open Meetings Act. And so the, we're still in a governor-declared emergency. Theoretically, if the governor's emergency ended tomorrow, the chair could declare an emergency for 30 days. And as long as the board did not override that during that 30 days, she could also declare that we're in emergency with flexible rules and meeting virtually. What's proposed tonight just simply says, we, we looked at it and really this emanated from planning and zoning as much as anything, but maybe some committees, we thought about what if you're not in emergency, but now we've perfected in Douglas County, a way for the citizens to see their, who whatever the meeting is and to conduct a meeting where is that buried in our code? And we discovered, well, wait a second, when the code was uh, created, we didn't have all this technology that we have today. So it's just, it's, it really is. It's a clean board. up. It's kind a clean up. It's okay. a clean up. And if this board, as a majority, decides, hey, no, we're not going to, we, we don't want to meet virtually, then that would be up to this board. Uh, if this board or a committee of this board decides, hey, because we're meeting at two o'clock in the daytime, Maybe we would have public more public participation by meeting virtually. It could do that. 
Right now, we're meeting in all these settings because we're in an emergency setting. The okay. question is, what happens when there's no emergency? Okay. All right. Um, Madam Chair, I'm you back. Thank you, Kenny. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thanks. You're Madam Chair, you're, you're muted. I think Madam Chair is frozen. Uh, Madam Chair, we cannot hear you. Now, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay, I'm sorry about that. I was couldn't uh, unmute my computer. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Commissioner Guider. Thank you so much, Commissioner Robinson. I don't believe we have any other comment regarding this uh, topic. And thank you, um, Attorney Bernard, for explaining what this tool allows us to do. It's just another tool in the toolbox. Uh, and it's certainly not to circumvent the face-to-face -face meetings. I, too, enjoy uh, the personal touch with our citizens. Board of Commissioners, uh, since there is no more discussion, do we have a motion to approve uh, the consideration to amend the Douglas County Code of Ordinance to allow for virtual meetings? So move. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We have a motion and a second. When I call your district, please respond accordingly. District one. District one. He may have fallen off. Lisa, can you check to see if Commissioner Mitchell is there? And I'll move on to district two. Yes, ma'am. No. Okay. District three. Yes. District four. Yes. Okay. Commissioner Mitchell, are you there? Hmm. Lisa, do you see him anywhere? I don't, I don't see him, Chairman. Okay. Hmm. You want to try to reach him, but I'll just go to Chairman. Yes. And I'm just going to see if we, if you could, uh, I'll wait for a second to see if you could reach him. Okay. Bear with us, uh, Board of Commissioners and citizens. We're just uh, trying to reach one of our commissioners. I believe he was on the line. He may have fallen off. Okay, I have Commissioner Mitchell on the phone. He's on he's on the meeting, but we just can't hear him evidently, but he is on my phone right now. So oh, okay. the chairman is taking a vote. Okay, yes. And I know and it's yes. Okay. okay. Yes. Okay, we have a four one vote and the motion carries uh for yes. All right, thank you so much, Board of Commissioners. We're gonna move on to our next uh, public hearing. Uh, this public hearing, uh, before I open the public hearing, I will yield to our manager, Ron Roberts, to facilitate discussion uh, for request of an off-premise beer and wine alcohol license for uh, Mr. Chu Chuwaka Akabata. Um, manager Roberts, would you please take the floor? You have the floor. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much for, for this opportunity. Merry Christmas and happy holidays to everyone. I will share my screen. Um, uh, I did. Uh, Mr. Uh, Agabata was on the phone. He's on. He's joining us on the phone. Um, uh, let me see if I can uh, just do this real quick. Um, um, so, uh, yes, we have a completed packet for a, a beer and wine off premise license. Does everyone see, uh, do you see the location? This is at uh, 393 uh, Maxim Road. He, he's, he's wanting to do, and I'll, I'll speak for him a little bit because his, his, uh, his, um, 
his English is very challenged. So um, he's wanting to do a Bodego kind of uh, 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 store uh, and sell beer and wine. Uh, this is ver very much akin to what we saw last at the last meeting uh, on um, veterans it, um, to do uh, to, to sell like foodstuffs and uh, chips and things like that. Um, and, um, and, and the location is, uh, um, like I said, 393. Uh, does everyone, can you see, can you see my screen? No, Ron, we can't see your screen. Okay. All right. Hold on a second. I always, Mr. Uh, Agubata, you can unmute your phone. I know you. we asked you to mute it right before the meeting, but if you could unmute your phone, please. I'm not hearing him. All right, so I had a backup. Please bear with me. Um, just one second. I will call him. He does. He does not have a computer. Um, Yes, I'm gonna put you on on speakerphone now. You're in front of the board of commissioners, so we 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 discussed your um your application. It is a completed application. He has gone through the RAS certification. He has the, the public notice has been done, and 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 everything has been is a completed packet. So uh, you're actually on speakerphone, um, um, Mr. Uh, Agabata. Yes, sir. I can hear you. Can can the, the board of commissioners hear you as well? Okay. Um, thank you for. I want to thank everyone for their time, for their patience, for everything. I wish every one of you Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year in advance. Uh, I, 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 so we're going to open the public hearing. Um, on your application, sir. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. Okay. Madam Chair, if you would like to open the public hearing on, on this application. Thank you so much, um, Manager Roberts. This public hearing is now open. Do we have anyone here, um, uh, any citizens here to speak or comment regarding this um, request for the off-premise beer and wine alcohol license? Anyone here to speak? Okay. Being none, this public hearing is now closed. Um, and certainly I want to open it up uh, for our um, Board of Commissioners to comment. Any comments from the Board of Commissioners regarding this uh, uh, request for the off-premise beer and wine alcohol license? Vice, Vice, Chairman. Uh -huh, Vice Chairman Robinson. Based on home room to my peers, I have no objections with this application. I yield, I'm sure. Okay. Any other any other remarks from our board of commissioners? Yes, okay. Madam Chair. Uh huh. Commissioner Carthen. Thank you for the floor. Uh, to the applicant or to uh, Manager Roberts, has this applicant sold uh, this um, type before? Has he had an alcohol um, license before? Mr. Agabata, the the commissioner is asking you if you have uh, have uh, experience uh, selling uh, beer and and wine previously. Yes, 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 sir. I I learned it uh, sometime last year with, uh, with my Indian white white uh, white friend. So he taught me the business and the. That's why I like the business. I want to start it. I have not, I have not done that business before, but I, somebody, uh, the Indian man, teach me the, the business. 
So that's why I want to start it by myself. Okay. Thank you. Manager. Thank you. Manager Roberts, have we done all of the background checks for this individual? Absolutely. Um, you know, before it even gets to this, uh, uh, Madam uh, Carthen, uh, we, 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 we do everything. Uh, uh, we have we have a completed packet, which should be in 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 your um, um, uh, civic clerk for you to review. Um, uh, and actually, I, after af this afternoon, I drove by this area mm -hmm. um, just across the street. It seemed like there was a, a lot of a lot of these little uh, businesses are starting to pop up. There was like at uh, at um, um, diagonal across the street from from this applicant. Um, w was a, a series. There was a uh, um, a shop for a. Um, um, there was a couple little restaurants there um, and and things like that popping up. It's kind of like a as 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 the applicant came through uh, last month. Uh, kind of like a bodega. Mm -hmm. And there's certainly a, a lot of uh, employees and, and 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 workmen in the area, so uh, I, I wish him great success. Uh, so you are recommending this? You recommend this um, license be granted? Yes, yes, ma'am. Okay. All righty. Thank you, Madam Chair. I yield the floor. Thank you so much, Commissioner Carthen. Any other comment from the board? Okay. With that being said, we'll we'll move on. Um, and with it, and certainly I'm gonna call the question at this point. You have any other uh, additional remarks, uh, Manager Roberts? Uh, no, ma'am. Uh, Mr. Uh, Agabata, do you have anything else you'd like to add? Uh, no, sir. No, sir. I don't have anything. I don't have anything else to say. Okay. All, all I'm waiting for is my license so that I can start over. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank yeah. you. Thank you very much. Okay, sir. I appreciate it. Thank you for everyone for your time, for everything everyone has said. I had I had about it. I appreciate all of you so much. Thank you once again. God bless all of us. Uh, thank you, sir, and Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. I wish you the same, sir. I wish all of you the same, sir. Okay, we'll wait for the vote. Don't don't hang up yet. Okay. okay. Thank you. Board of, Board of Commissioners, I'm going to call the question. Uh, Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to approve the an off-premise beer and wine alcohol license for um, uh, alcohol license? Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We have a motion and a second. When I call your district, please respond accordingly. District 1. Yes. District 2. Yes. District three. Yes. District four. Yes. Chairman, yes. We have a five oh unanimous vote and the motion carries. All Mr. right. Mr. Agabata, it's a unanimous vote. Congratulations and I wish you well on your project, sir. Thank you very much, sir. All right. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you for everyone, sir. Sure, thank, thank you. Have a good evening. And you too, sir. Have you have you finished the meeting? Yeah, you're done. You're done. Yes, sir. Okay, okay, we're done, right? Yes, sir. Everything's good. Okay, okay. All right, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Sure, thank I you. All of you. Merry Christmas in advance. <laughs> Merry Christmas to you, too. <laughs> yeah. Merry you. Christmas. All right, Board of Commissioners, we're going to move on to tab number seven approval of an on premise beer and wine uh, liquor alcohol license for Sissy's license. Uh, uh, Gina. Lynn Brand uh, at 14790 Veterans Memorial Highway, Villa Rica, Georgia, 30180. Uh, before I open this public uh, hearing, I will yield to you, Manager Ron Roberts, to facilitate discussion uh, uh, regarding this request for the off-premise beer and wine al alcohol license. You have uh, the thank you. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. I, I really appreciate this opportunity. Yes. Uh, so. Uh, Gina Librand has, has 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 made the application. Um, she has completed all the the RAS certification, um, the public notice, and everything. This location actually was, uh, it, some of you may know it, it was formerly Leathers on on 78. 
Um, she's looking to reopen that and um, and is requesting a beer, wine, and uh, liquor on premise um, uh, pouring um, f uh, for that location. Okay. Uh, Miss Le uh, Miss Lebrand, are you are you on the phone? Are you are you muted? Miss Librarian, are you there on the phone? If so, please unmute. So Manager Roberts, you want to try to call her and I can certainly I want to open up the public hearing as soon as you reach her. Let me know when you reach her. Yes. Yes, okay. go ahead and do that. I mean, I'm going to call her up real quick. Okay. Hey, Ron, but Madam Chair, as a point of order, yes. we probably need to make sure that applicant is on the line during the public hearing for purposes of process. Yeah, that's what I was going to do. I was going to wait until he reached her. Appreciate you, though. Thank you, Attorney Bernard. Okay. Okay. Um, um, so uh, they're actually reaching out to her right now. Um, I'm not sure uh, what, where the disconnect was, and I apologize for the delay in the meeting. I know we got a long evening anyways, but um, um, uh, Tammy uh, Carden is actually going to call her. Tammy, are you are you on the line? Manager Roberts, we'll wait a probably another minute or so, and then I'll just pivot back to this one. Okay. Yes, yeah, I'm going to pivot yeah. if, if we. So I'll give you about a minute, and if she doesn't come on, we'll come back. I understand, and I apologize. Um, I really do. Understood. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Ron, I see Ms. Jamar is on the line, but she's muted, and she's got her hand raised, I believe, if you want to check that participant i don't she may not can unmute herself she may want to hang up and call right back in if that's the case yes yes ma'am um why you all work out out the kinks i'm going to move on to our next item and then just take okay. slide. we'll come back to tab number seven just for the sake of time Board of Commissioners, I'm going to move on to our new business item, which is tab number eight. Tab number eight is authorization to approve the uh, quit claim deed to the city of Douglasville and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to authorize? So move. So move. Do you have a I guess uh, microphone, please. Mute your microphones, everyone. Did you hear my second? Yeah, I didn't hear, but now I hear you. Thank you. So we have a motion and a second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion, Board of Commissioners? We Ms. have a motion. Madam Chair, as a clarity record, I don't know if they heard um, the clerk. I made the motion, Kelly Robinson. Yeah, yeah. you did. We heard. Clerk, did you pick up uh, the motion from Commissioner Yes, ma'am. Yes, yeah. ma okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We have a Motion in a second. When I call your district, please respond accordingly. District one. This is Ms. Librand for the liquor license for sissies. Can you hear me? Yes, Ms. Librand. We we've uh, moved on to another item, but I'll circle back to you in just a minute if you could just uh, just be patient with us, okay? If you could just yes, hold on. I'm sorry. I don't. I couldn't get my phone to work properly. I had to call back in. Yes, ma'am. Understood. Um, district one. Okay, let me go back to you district. Me, district. Now? Yeah, I, yeah, I was waiting on you to vote. We don't yes. Okay, district two. Yes. District three. Yes. District four. Yes. Chairman, yes, we have a 5 0 unanimous vote, and the motion carries to authorize the approval of the quit claim deed uh, to the city of Douglasville. Thank you so much, Board of Commissioners. We're going to move back to tab number seven. Ms. Librand is on the phone now. Uh, certainly, Ron, you have uh, certainly gone in and, and framed 
what the discussion is about for Ms. Labrand and certainly wanted to yield to allow her to uh, chime in. So Ron, if you could guide her discussion, uh, Director, I mean, Manager Roberts, please. Oh, do so. yes, yes, ma'am. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm able to share this, but yeah, this was formerly uh, uh, Leathers. It was uh, a restaurant. And so the applicant is actually looking for beer, wine, liquor, and on-premise. I mean, beer, beer, wine, and, and, and liquor on-premise permit. She has completed all the RAS certification. Um, uh, she has gone through the background check. Um, we have a completed packet, Madam Chair. And um, so this is a, a, a formerly uh, a, a, a restaurant bar um, that's looking to reopen under a new name, uh, Sissies. And, 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 and thank you, Ms. Librand, for being on the call. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. I just I had a difficulty earlier trying to get in. It, it happens. Ms. Librand, do you have any comments before I open this public hearing? I wanted to give you an opportunity to speak. Yes, ma'am. I just wanted to state that I've been in the bar business for quite some time. I am very familiar with the laws and how everything works with the bar and serving alcohol. I just want to bring something new to Douglas County and see if we can't uh, give back to the county. And I appreciate your time. Thank you so much, Ms. Librand. Uh, thank you so much, uh, uh, Manager Roberts, Board of Commissioners. This public hearing is now open for citizens' comment. Do we have any citizens on the line that would like to speak regarding this uh, proposed approval for the on-premise uh, beer and wine, liquor, alcohol license? Do we have anyone on the line? Uh, yes, I wanted to say something. I wanted to ask a question. Yes. Please proceed. Mm -hmm. You have, and please give us your name and uh, your address, please, for the record. Uh, this is Triana Arnold James. I'm I'm a Douglas County resident. Mm -hmm. um, and I just wanted to ask a question. I need, your, uh, I need your address to Miss James. Could I? We have your address for the record as well. Oh, 3007 uh, Summer Breeze Drive. And I, the question I just wanted to. Um, is that conducive with the where the direction of the county is going to have more liquor stores and more liquor in the in the county and and what kind of programs you know for these stores are going to give back to the community I, I i'm really confused about, about that like is that the direction we want to take with more liquor stores and more liquor in the in the in the county okay uh, that's a good question miss Arnold. what what happened what what i'll do is when uh, i open up to allow uh for the board of commissioners to uh for their comments we'll we will respond at that time uh any other comments from the citizens regarding this uh, proposal for the uh, beer and wine and liquor liquor alcohol license for sissies being none, this public hearing is now closed. Board of Commissioners, this is an opportunity for you to weigh in. We have any remarks or comments from the Board of Commissioners at this time? Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Guider? Yes, Mrs. Librand, <coughs> is that how you yes. pronounce it? Um, yes, ma'am. What kind of food will you be serving there? Uh, we're going to have all kinds of food. We're going to have shrimp. We're going to have fish. We're going to have burgers. We're going to have wings. We're going to try to have a three, a meat and three veg like specials every day for lunch. I do realize that Southwire is really close to there. So I really want to try to pinpoint and target a lunch area for them since there's not really anything close for them to go to. I was told that a third pro was going to be um, opening in that area. So it's more of a restaurant with alcohol serving and liquor and beer, not uh, a liquor store. And I would like to comment on the last comment, if I could, give it uh -huh. back to the community. Is that okay? Yes. Uh huh. Well, I just finished shopping for the Children of the Domestic Violence Center. It's something that I do every year. I've done it for the last six years. We had originally started doing a charity for children at Christmas and it went to Toys for Tots, but it did not go to the county that we live in. 
so I wanted to be able to target the children that are here in our county that needed help, not for it to go out of the county. So I do everything I can as far as charities, helping people in need. I have several um, things that we could discuss that I've done in the past, but I do try to give back when it's needed. Uh, thank you. Um, I'm very familiar with this site. Uh, the Richardsons uh, own the property. I assume they still own it. And you're going to rent it from them? Yes, ma'am. I'll be renting it. And do they have any qualms about uh, it being uh, like a, I guess it's like a Taco Mac or someplace like that? Yes, ma'am. No, they are um, really happy about it, I believe, just so that we can get something going in that area. Well, at one time, it was a, um, very much a, like a, a private club, I think, way back in the day, I remember, um, uh, because they had bands and stuff like that. But, um, okay, well, I was just wondering if um, uh, what kind of food you were going to serve, because it used to be country cooking. But, uh, well, there'll and be then, some. Go ahead. I'm sorry, there will be some country, but it will probably be more on the upscale of, you know, upscale bar food, but I think it'll be really enjoyable if you'd like to give us a try. <laughs> okay. All right, with that, I yield back. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, uh, yes. Commissioner Guider. Um, Commissioner Robinson? Yeah, and thank you, Madam Chair. You know, um, you know I, I do appreciate the applicant and the prior applicant. Um, the, we do live in interesting times. We are experiencing hardships. Um, everybody has a hobby, a skill set, or some type of something that they can offer the public and it can be monetized, right? In other words, when a place is viable, everybody's not going to work for someone. Some people have choice. They prefer to do it this way versus that way. Douglas County is open and, and, and supportive for those who have that, that, that adventurous spirit to say, hey, I want to bring something special. Um, there is no exclusion in consideration um, in the county. Um, I, I believe that it, it's a free market. Um, I, I think that's important. Uh, it is very competitive uh, when this, this Board of Commissioners knocked over this county early this year because this pandemic, we wiped up the board. A lot of small enterprises. So the fact that I see some coming back I'm, I'm, I'm encouraged by that. They, they, they put real money into making their enterprise work, right? And I don't, I don't want to marginalize or have it be invalidated. And I appreciate, um, you know, because there is risk with that. Like you said, right up the street, I'm trying to find my niche. It's like, all right, she, she knows what she's talking about. All right, very good. That's not what we're here for, to, to sort of bless it that way. But as far as the comment is concerned, I, I think the atmosphere is important to say that you are welcome here. Um, and I, I, I do appreciate you. I wish you the best of luck, and Madam Chair, I yield the floor. Thank you so much, uh, Commissioner Robinson. Okay, if there are no other comments from the Board of Commissioners, I'm going to move. Madam Chair? Uh-huh. Commissioner Carthen? Yes, thank you so much for the floor. Ms. Mm -hmm. Lin Linyard? Libran? Libran. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. I have a couple of questions for you. The first one is who besides you will be doing the um, the pouring of the alcohol? Who will be doing that? Oh, uh, uh, just people that I hire, but they do have to go through certification and you know, they have to get a liquor license to be able to pour and serve. Okay. I just wanted to make sure you're gonna answer that correctly. <laughs> okay. Uh, yes, Good question. <laughs> this, this, is, this is real, yeah, because what we don't, you know, we don't want is to uh, not be in compliance. The uh, second thing is I saw some of your character references, and one of them happens to be uh, our attorney's firm. Uh, so uh, do you do you know Sherrod and Bernard's firm? I know John very well, yes, ma'am, okay. and I've met okay. him a few times. Okay, wonderful. Just wanted to make sure that's out there on public record. Uh, he has not asked us to do anything, but I did want to make that public record in case somebody came back and said something. Um, and Madam, Madam Carson, Madam Carson, hold on, hold on one second, just, Attorney just, Bernard. Okay, hold on one second. 
And the third thing, Ms. Ms. Libran, that I have for you is the, the location of where you are. What else is around you that you would be able to continue the ecosystem? Like what, what businesses would be around you or are around you rather? Well, not really businesses, but there is that huge subdivision near a lake that has just built all those houses. So it's okay. just an opportunity for them to have somewhere closer in the county okay. to be able to go to. Okay. And Southwire is there. And I heard Surpro was coming there as well. So we could be a lunch and dinner option. Wonderful. And Villa Rick is only like five minutes away. So they could come that way as well. We might could just bring a little bit more people in our area. Wonderful. So all of this um, would really help that economic development down through that way. Yes, ma'am. I believe it will. Okay. Wonderful. That's all I have, Ms. Lyburn. I thank you for uh, bringing this forth to Douglas County and especially in that area where there is not much. And uh, I wish you the best of luck if this passes. And Chairman Jones, I turn the floor back over to you for Attorney Bernard. <laughs> okay, thank you so much, Commissioner Carthen. And Attorney Bernard, I believe you have something to say or? Yes, Madam Chair. I, I just wanted to be noted on the record or participated in any aspect of this. I think it can be confirmed by staff. Second, I've already sent a text to my partner about writing letters. I don't know that he realized where this was going, but anyway, I'm not involved. <laughs> okay. And I will recuse myself. Okay. All right. Any other comments from the board? Okay. With that being said, we've had remarks from our and comments from our board of commissioners, and I'm going to move on to, and I'm certainly at this point to call the question. Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to approve this on-premise beer and alcohol license for uh, the uh, sissies uh, uh, on behalf of Gina Lybrand? Brad, Brian, Brian, I'm ruining your name, but it's Gina Lybrand. Okay. okay. Do we have a motion, Board? Yes, ma'am. So moved. Do we have a second? Second. Yeah. Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We have a motion in a second when I call your district. Please respond accordingly. District one. Yes. District two. Yes. District three. Yes. District four. Yes. Chairman, yes. We have a 5-0 unanimous vote and the motion carries. Thank you so much, Ms. Librarian, and have a merry, merry Christmas and a happy holidays. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, guys. Merry Christmas. Okay, Merry Christmas to you as well. Board of Commissioners, we're going to move on to our next item, which is uh, tab number nine. So we will um, pivot to our business item. Tab number nine is uh, authorization to approve the amendment of Douglas County fiscal policies. Uh, mm -hmm. Beth, I, I would ask our, uh, our Jennifer. Mm -hmm. yeah, may, may I, as just a, a, a point of order, can we push this until after the budget? it um, as an item, uh, push yes. it after the budget. After the budget, okay. Yeah. okay. Just down line, two, okay. two items. Okay, consider it done. Okay. Okay. All right, I'm gonna move this item just above the consent agenda. Right. Okay, Board of Commissioners, we, uh, that uh, leads us into our resolutions. Um, Board of Commissioners number 10 is a resolution for COVID-19 response funding. And I would love for our Commissioner Carthen, who was very instrumental in, in um, developing buckets for this uh, resolution to take the floor and certainly, uh, number one, brief the Board of Commissioners and then enlighten our citizens. Uh, Commissioner Carthen, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. uh, to my fellow board members, this resolution is for the coronavirus response funding that we received. Uh, this uh, money was due to the federal um, giving the state money and then the state passed it down to us based on our population to be used within the county to help in response to the funding for the coronavirus. Uh, so I crafted a resolution uh, that is before you tonight uh, I won't read the entire resolution, but what I will read is a portion of it. And it states that 
Now, for, now, therefore, be it resolved by the Douglas County Board of Commissioners in response to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, the Douglas County Board of Commissioners hereby directs the following. One, the Douglas County Finance Director shall allocate up to $4.6 million from the, from the contingency fund for the purpose of providing emergency assistance to those affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. And the total funds may be utilized for the following. Technology upgrades, $866,666. Then we have economic stability needs. That includes small businesses, entrepreneurship and education, $866,666. Then we have our community stability needs. Now that incorporates our seniors, families, youth, homeless and transient. And as it stands, that bucket is also $866,666. And then we have our Cobb Douglas Public Health, which we will allocate up to $1.5 million. And they came before us on yesterday to tell us how they would utilize that money within the community. And then of course, our stability is still functioning right now. And we put to the side, $530,388 to help them to continue to have open courts during this pandemic. Now Douglas County shall seek reimbursement from the state of Georgia and from federal emergency. Com Commissioner, you, you're frozen. Can everyone hear me? Yeah. Okay, just wanna make sure she's, we've had, we are experiencing some technical difficulty. We we'll just um, I give her a moment to try to get back on the line. There you are. You're back. Okay. Sorry about that. I was frozen. Okay. okay. All right, Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. So before us are the buckets. Uh, again, this meets the needs of the people in Douglas County. This one is about the citizens. We already took care of our first responders. We gave hazard pay earlier. Uh, so we've done that. This one, these CARES funds really will go into the community. Um, you read all of the buckets and right now I ask that you uh, go ahead and adopt this resolution so that we can put it out into the community and serve the needs of those who are expecting us to. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay. Any any remarks from the board or any comments regarding this resolution? Yes. Okay. Commissioner Robinson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Madam Carthen, um, well written, very well crafted. We appreciate the work you've been doing regarding this. Uh, you've taken a leadership role, and and being in in um, only your second year. I mean, you're just becoming that that legislator. And so, thank you for your efforts. A um, couple of questions for you. Um, and so and you broke up a little bit. So respectfully, I just want to clarify um, uh, just in case you did say economic development um, or the one we're dealing with community, specifically um, entrepreneurship and economic development. Did you mention that specifically? I did. It's small businesses, entrepreneurship and education. And that I want to highlight that one as being important for the public. Uh, the Board of Commissioners had a consideration earlier this year uh, to participate in perhaps um, um, an, an alliance that, that would give um, federal dollars um, to, to small businesses through, through grants and uh, direct grants, uh, maybe up to $5,000 a, a pop. And it was something around to the tune of $200,000 that the commissioners were being asked to support. Uh, and I took a position that I didn't think that was probably the best use. I mean, if you do the math, um, you've only got what you know, two hundred thousand dollars divided by five thousand doesn't go very far, right? Maybe forty companies, but we have over five thousand businesses, right? And so it was just a matter of like, mm. and so the board of commissioners. That was just my position, but the board of commissioners landed on what they landed on for their own reasons, and that did not pass. However, I do appreciate it, uh, the consideration on this one because as opposed to giving someone a fish, let's teach them. Um, and this entrepreneurship uh, component is key. Uh, there's some fundamentals that we need to get back to, not, not just the fundamentals of, of entrepreneurship, but, but financial understanding, um, home ownership fundamentals. Um, and so I'm proposing as part of that, a, a focus on learning, 
uh, that's going to be key to help us get through this. So as opposed to how, how do we make the, these businesses more sustainable, you've got to teach them. It is all about education. It is always about higher learning. Talk to any entrepreneur who just sort of went out there from vision, they skipped the plan and went right into action, they learned a lot of lessons. And there's some things that we perhaps can do here to make things more fundamental for them uh, to increase the likelihood of their success. Second point uh, I want to make, uh, Madam Carthen, is that you mentioned Community Service Board at all in this. Again, one more time, if you did, I apologize that if I did not hear you. So that is the community stability needs, that's seniors, families, youth, homeless, and transient. And I do know on yesterday the CSB did come before us and they asked us to include veterans. They wanted us to help them fund um, some housing for our veterans. And so uh, I think that would be great to include in this resolution. Uh, but of course it is up to the will of the board, but I would like to include veterans. Then with that being said, I will stand with you and ask uh, my, my peers to join with amending that resolution to include the veterans population, which is something that um, still um, they're a special class. And, and, and again, they should not be marginalized. They should not be assumed that they go get taken care of because we know that they're not. So let's show that we actually see them um, and we hear them uh, without them asking. We've got to go get them uh, for the service that they've rendered. Madam Chair, I yield back to the floor. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, Commissioner Guider. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Commissioner Carthen, uh, would you explain what it is for technology? Eight, 866,000. Yes. So the county does need some technology upgrades. I noticed that on several calls. Um, for those of you who are at the courthouse, including Chairman Jones, she keeps dropping. They kept dropping yesterday. Um, I think you dropped a couple of times. There are um, some stability needs we need in regards to technology. We also have the opportunity to help out with um, our server capacity and uh, to help the uh, tax commissioner's office with what they're doing. Although he has never closed, he has ran into a lot of, um, I would say, issues in regards to technology and making sure that he can capture the money for us. So part of that would go for those upgrades, but right here in the county, we need it so that we can continue to operate. Um, also, I think I mentioned on yesterday that I had asked for uh, our clerk, Ms. Watson, um, to look into a uh, civic clerk and the expanded capabilities of civic clerk, because if we continue to do these hybrid meetings, there are some um, other things that we can do that would allow us to actually vote virtually as opposed to what we've been doing um, with Madam Chair, her having to call out each one of us. So there is opportunities for upgrades there for us to be able to do this, even in committees. We have a lot of committees, you and I do committees and we do them virtually and we do the best we can. But there's a lot of things that we could be utilizing through what we already have. We just haven't turned on those, those features yet. Well, I think some of the drops and everything has to do with our areas because um, at and is always up the road for me <laughs> working on it. And I think uh, because my all of my uh, apparatuses in the house, they go down. The TVs, everything, you know, and that affects the Internet because I have U-verse. Uh, but is this uh, is this is the CARES money, right? I I don't see the connection this, with the, with the CARES, the CARES money with the technology. I'm sorry. <laughs> Fill me in, please. Yes, yes, Madam Guider, this is the CARES fund money, and this is the. Um, Due to this pandemic, you and I would right now be sitting in the courthouse, right? You and I would be sitting there and we would be doing this meeting in person. But unfortunately, you or I are doing these meetings virtually, right? There is a capacity that we can't even stream this on Facebook Live right now. Like there are a lot of technology upgrades we really need. And this pandemic has actually given us the, you know, it's it's giving us, you know, the 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 slate to say, okay, if you really want to do this, this is how you can do it. Um, we just lost our IT director. You and I were at Switch, didn't know that was going to happen, 
but I wish while we were at Switch, we would have talked about this, talked about upgrading our server. We have had server um, issues within this past year before the pandemic even hit that um, we had issues that the tax commissioner was asking us to, to upgrade. And our IT director told us that we needed to. We've had vendors to come in and show us and tell us how they could update it. Now that we're in this pandemic, we actually need to update this. Um, we have people who are using borrowed laptops. We have our own commissioner that um, actually had to use his personal laptop because the one that was given to him by the, the county was not operating correctly. I mean, the technology needs, and you're on the technology committee, so I'm pretty sure you you know what I'm talking about. I These needs I, are great. <laughs> and a lot of this is, is because we're doing this, this virtually this because of COVID. Under the parameters of the grant, the CARES Act grant, does this fall under those parameters? Because it just seems like it it's not going to the people. It's more um, just, you're frozen again, I'm sorry. It actually is going to the, um, this actually does fall under that. Actually, these buckets I got from uh, NACO and uh, our partnering surrounding counties. So yes, so some of these, uh, my legislative aide and I researched and came up with them. So yes, they are, other, other counties and other municipalities are using technology upgrades because of course you still have to deliver services. We can't just stop government because we're in a pandemic. And the way, only way we're able to deliver the majority of this is through technology. So yes, it is. Okay, um, does this resolution allow the money if you don't need it over here, but you need it over in this Cameron other- Jones, can you- Thank you, pardon. Commissioner Carthen, I heard you call my name. She's frozen. She's frozen again. Hmm. Yeah. That's yeah, that's an indication we definitely need to upgrade our but that may be her area, her service too. So but I was just wondering, does this resolution have uh, liquidity where you can move it from one bucket to the other if it's needed over here and it's not needed in this particular category? Is this up to 866,000. Yeah, it's listed on her resolution is up to 866,000, but I wanted to it give her the to, opportunity. Yeah. To. yeah, but I want to give uh, Commissioner Carthen the opportunity to respond. Let me give her just one second. She she probably just called in. Lisa, could you just have our commissioner call in? And uh, technology is challenging today for some reason. Yeah. I, my service here at the house has been going on and off, on and off for about three weeks now. And I, and I don't know what's happening. <laughs> right. And I believe that's likewise for all the, the, uh, the board of commissioners. In fact, you see, I'm in the courthouse. I'm in my office because I just, I'm afraid to stay home this, and try to conduct this, a meeting. This sucks. Hello. Maybe. I just wondered, wanted to know, is it liquid enough to where it can, the monies can be swapped from one bucket to the other as needed? Uh, are we locked into the 866, 666? I don't like all those sixes, by the way. <laughs> uh, that kind of runs up a red flag. So anyway, um, just wondered, if it's liquid enough so that we can move the funds around because I, I can't, I don't foresee 866 in some of the buckets, but anyway, I yield back. Madam okay. Chair, yeah. may mm -hmm. I? Yes, uh, Commissioner Robinson. And mm -hmm. I just want to stand um, alongside to probably add a little bit value to this. The buckets are a framing to my peers. Um, this wasn't our first time in framing this. Remember, we're framing this in such a way that, okay, Madam Chair, now, this is supposed to be an emergency mode, right? We made a comment 30 days ago. We said all agencies that were interested, they needed to apply. 
This doesn't mean that it's all this what she's listed. It's just that right now um, th there is room. So it hasn't been exhausted. There's been no, no details. It's not our job to create the business models for the community to step up. So if the community is listening to that, if you're looking at those buckets regarding community, you've got a veterans program, you've got a women's program, you've got an entrepreneurship program, we'll, 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 we'll pitch us. We're not in the business, our job is in the business of, of we, we, we appropriate. So I believe that there is room in there. We're just framing, well, here's the totality of everything, Madam Chair, right? Remember, executive mode, that's what this is. Um, and obviously, um, anything that's presented, it has to come back for the Board of Commissioners, so you'll have your checkpoint. But the second thing I just want to clarify, and Director Hallman, I know you're out there, uh, we're talking about what this money is and is not. Um, the money is being pulled from contingency. Um, our CARES money, I, I don't know if um, Director um, uh, Tiffany Stewart Stanley is there. Let's, let's be clear and clarify the public on how the original money came down and how we used it to backfill our budget for hazard pay and all that. Uh, for public safety, and then the money that we already had budgeted, it was now free. Please clarify that. They, they need to read that resolution right, please. Either one of y'all. Uh, good evening, Commissioner Robinson. This is a uh, Director Tiffany Stewart Stanley. Yeah. So the money that uh, the um, Douglas County received um, from the state of Georgia was a reimbursement for funds that we had already expended uh, um, earlier this year for public safety, and so the funds that have come from the state or funds that Douglas County can use pretty much however the board sees fit um, because it is a reimbursement from the state of Georgia. So our CARES Act funding did not come directly from the U.S. Treasury because of our population size. So we got our money from Georgia CARES, which was a reimbursement. So you are free to use those funds um, in the way that the board sees fit. And so to, to, to that point, um, so here we are, we, we put a lot of money on internally focused. But now we want to focus more on, uh, to your point, the people. That technology is very important. We just voted for access for virtual access, four to one. But yet we won't put the money into the infrastructure to ensure that we have a 99% uptime. There's nothing like walking through a meeting and watching things break down. You can't hear things. It, what did they say? Right? And these are material moments. These are official records that we're doing. And it's not consistent. It's like, oh, it kills me. So I, there, there is a proper use for technology um, to that point to ensure when people have phones, when you got to send everybody home, the front desk and everybody to work from their homes, you got to make sure they got laptops, you got to make sure they got phones. They shouldn't have to use their personal items to do county business. So that was a, re a, a reduction of actual assets. So I was just buying time. Uh, I just wanted to make that comment to help clarify as we waited for the technology to come back online. But I just want to add that comment that there was flexibility, Madam Guider, in those buckets per se, but we agreed as a board, well, these are the buckets, these are the amounts, but we'll look to the community to help us fulfill those things. And Madam Chair, I yield the floor. Thank you. Hopefully, Madam yeah. uh, McCarthy's back. Okay. This is Madam McCarthy back on the line. I am Sharon Jones. Thank you so much. Yes. I had to get on my phone because the county laptop kept dropping. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay, Commissioner Guider had a question for you. Uh, I believe Hmm. Madam Chair, mm -hmm. Madam Chair, this is the Director of Elections. Yes, but I, I, I had, a, uh, hold on, Director, for a second. I have a commissioner that was speaking. I just want to make sure she didn't disappear. Commissioner Carthen? Yes, she dropped again. So you have the floor, uh, Director Kidd, until uh, Commissioner Carthen returns. Yes, uh, Director Key. Yes, ma'am. I just had a, I just had a comment that was germane to the subject matter. I will state that uh, the elections department is conducting uh -huh. a runoff election currently, and the entire county network went out for almost two hours yesterday, in and out, during the middle of uh, an election that will decide the U.S. Senate. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Point well taken. Thank you so much for your contribution, Director Kidd. Uh, Commissioner Carthen, have you returned yet? Hmm. Madam Chair, we're going to have to carry it. Yeah. 
Wow. Okay. I, I had not called up uh, uh, the question yet. I was just allowing uh, Commissioner Carthen to to elaborate. Any other remarks from the Board of Commissioners? The categories, uh, uh, according to Commissioner Carthen, were pulled or extracted from the uh, certainly from uh, NACO, which is our National Association for County Commissioners, and um, and also this she used it as, uh, used it uh, the the categories or the buckets uh, as a template to how that would guide us. However. Uh, again, to answer your question, Commissioner Guider, uh, if the board so chooses to allow this uh, resolution to go forth, that will give me some autonomy to respond to the needs of the citizens uh, regarding in those various categories. And I know I, the uh, you had a question regarding the information systems, but it's very apparent right now that we all are struggling just this moment uh, with our system, and we need to make sure that we're shored up for the remainder of this pandemic. I believe 2021 will be uh, a testament as well. Uh, it would look, look very similar to 2020. Uh, it's my understanding last night in uh, watching the news that there will be, uh, uh, there is a different strain of this virus now that uh, the new vaccine may not even address. So this is again, uh, a marathon and not a sprint. So I just want us to keep in mind that that did I hear you, Commissioner Carpton? Yes, I know. I'm, a, I'm agreeing with you. Yes, this, we, we, we may be in this for the long haul. One of my colleagues keeps saying 2021 may look a lot like 2020. I believe he's correct. Uh, Commissioner Mitchell keeps saying that. So we're trying to shore our technology up. And uh, I've, while I've been sitting here, uh, the uh, there are different um, departments that have texted me and said that their technology um, has acted up while they were doing things. And then I think I heard uh, Milton Kidd say the same thing. So it's, this is not unreasonable for us to do. We got to carry out business. So um, I agree with you. Okay. Yeah, and, and really what's uh, really sparked my attention uh, last night, just seeing that th this vaccine may not address this new strain. So that tells me we have another challenge on our hands and before us. But with that being said, if there are no other remarks, board, yes, uh, Vice Chairman Robinson, before I yeah, call I mean, I, 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 again, I, I respect Madam Guider's point, just making sure of the appropriateness. It was a very valid question. I think we've all clarified that. But this this IT, I mean, again, everything shifted online. Uh, for any vice president, senior VP, chief technology officer, they would know that you need to invest in this area. Look at where the stocks are going. Where is the money pouring in? Um, obviously, this is not something that can be done part time. This is something that needs to be focused on. Um, and I believe that we're showing as a board of commissioners, we get it. So I'm hoping that the administration will uh, uh, commit to this um, and, and making sure that, okay, guys, access this for what this is. This is not a help desk moment. We need to invest in our own infrastructure, just like with roads. We need to invest in our technology infrastructure. And I yield the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay, thank, <clears throat> thank you so much, um, Vice Chairman. Okay, uh, Commissioner Guider, did that I'm satisfy sure. you, or if you just hold on well, one? Uh, 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 Director Kidd said that the whole system was down. Was he talking about in all the precincts? Was it, uh, or just in the courthouse? The system in the courthouse, or the county? We don't, we don't do the infrastructure out in the county. That's what I'm getting at. So uh, I'm not sure whether he said in the county, are you talking about mm -hmm. the entire county or just in the courthouse? Madam Gardner, for this election, we're operating out of all the county facilities. So all of the county facilities all day yesterday, we had the highest uh, early voting total for a runoff election period. And they were going in and out all day, but for at least two hours, we were basically operating off of a shoestring trying to get voters to continue voting on yesterday. But it was the system that was connected to the county system going down? Yes, or was it just the uh, network? The county system. Okay. Because when you said county, I got, I didn't know if you meant the, literally the county or you were just talking about the courthouse network it, it was the courthouse but deer lick park boundary waters dog river library yes ma'am it, it was county facilities your connect 
activity to the courthouse. There was problems. Yeah, they, well, it's the server capacity. The servers that the entire county operate on were going in and out on all day yesterday. Okay, okay. Uh, no, I, I'm fine. I was, uh, uh, Commissioner Carthen, what I asked when you dropped off and everything yeah. is, is, is this resolution liquid enough where we can move the funds from one bucket to another if needed? No, um, it, it is not. I mean, if the board so chooses, it can. Right now, as it is stated, the buckets are the buckets until we uh, move them out, until the money comes out of them. The, I, is there something that you're looking to add besides amending it for the veterans to receive the 305 that was asked from C CSB? Uh, no, but uh, I have been approached by the pantry. Uh, they need a new truck and they deliver food for the entire, you know, the a county for free, and their truck has um, played out. <laughs> and I had asked at one time if we could make sure maybe that was in there, but I was told that it could not be. So, but they 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 provide a service for the entire county, not just a given area. So, uh, Madam Goddard, what I would suggest is, like I was saying yesterday, uh, and, and I think I harped on it, Madam Chair told me I, I beat it in yesterday in regards to contracts and in regards to people coming before us and asking uh, for funds in the county to be used. I would just say if that is something that is to be used in the county and it is in the bucket areas and it will meet service delivery, for those who are impacted, which to me food would be because I've done four food drives, then that could be a consideration from the Board of Commissioners through the CARES Act. So that they need to make, well, they've already made application to me and I sent it to the chairman and she denied it. So uh, I didn't know what else to do. <laughs> Uh, I would like to see 50000 for the, a new truck, for the refrigerated truck is what's required. But anyway, we'll, we can address that at a later time. But I just wondered uh, on anything, what if we don't need it all on technology, 866000 on technology, but we do need it for the homeless, the vets, and people like that. So uh, I just wondered... Can thing, the funds shift if needed? Under the CARES Act, that money that we have right now, the 4.6, I evenly divided up the buckets. Um, as you yeah. can see, probably, you know, technology, you know, may or may not take up that money. I'm pretty sure it will. But if there is money that's left over, I'm pretty sure uh, Director Holliman will let us know, hey, we have um, more CARES money left over. And if that is the case, then we as a board can say, hey, we have money left over this area. Can we shift it over? We can bring it back before the board. That way we all get to make the decision. It's not just one person telling someone yeah. to do something. Right now they're all equally divided. And uh, if there is money at the end, then let's bring it back before the board of commissioners and let's address it. Okay, thank you. You're back. You're welcome. Thank, thank you so much, uh, Commissioner Carthen and Commissioner Guider. And certainly, uh, Commissioner Guider, my soul won't rest without me responding to your comment that said the chairman said no, particularly during a pandemic. First of all, uh, that was the first leg of uh, money we had uh, allocated for me. I believe it was around the 97,000. I'm sorry. Yeah, about 97,000 that was allocated for me to spend on certain items. And, and I did address the food pantry by providing several donations for food, probably I believe about $10,000 for food. And we may have even uh, rendered more uh, of that first batch initially around April, May when we extended hazard pay. But this, this money wasn't, I believe at the time when you asked about the truck was not available, but this is a good conversation to have. And you know, we hadn't established buckets and certainly I, 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 uh, I agree with you. Uh, if we need a truck to service all the citizens of Douglas County to feed, feed them, 
uh, I'm definitely on board for it. So I just wanted to just make to clarify to you and to the public, I, this is a time that we need to be servants and have a servant heart. And I would love to see a refrigerated truck, certainly if our uh, money, should I say those buckets will allow. Okay, I just wanted to just clarify. Okay, thank you. But I, I do believe it was the, these funds that we were talking about, but that's okay. No, I understand, but we, today we alloc at first we had everything reserved. So I understand we, we did not have any discussion of where we were going to, but it's neither here or there. I don't want to uh, do that. We owe the citizens more respect. We will uh, allocate funding uh, within those buckets uh, as they come forth to me and promise you, I, I hear uh, you loud and clear and I will make sure our citizens are fed. With that being said, I believe our attorney Bernard, you had something you wanted to say. Before, yeah, Madam Chair, I uh, just was going to clarify for the for the, I'm just was going to clarify for the clerk procedurally. You have a resolution that's been read by Commissioner Carthen, a friendly amendment that was accepted uh, at the request of Commissioner Robinson, the vice chair, and it sounds like Commissioner Carthen's resolution read would encompass the veterans uh, issue that was raised by Vice Chair Robinson, and that's where we're at now. There is no uh, motion to approve yet or second. I just want to make sure the clerk concurs with where we are right now. Okay. Yeah, I have not made a motion yet. It was basically purely discussion. So with that, I have not called the question, so should I say. So with that being said, if there's no more discussion, I will call the question. Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to approve the resolution for COVID-19 response funding with the uh, amendment of 300 and I believe 305 thousand dollars to address the needs of vet veteran housing for the community service board so moved second we have a motion in a second any discussion board of commissioners we have a motion in a second when i call you district please respond accordingly district one yes district two yes district three yes district four yes this uh, ch chairman Yes, we have a five of unanimous vote and the motion carries. All right, Board of Commissioners, we are moving on to tab number 11 and I'll circle back to tab number nine when we finish tab number 11. Uh, tab number 11, just, just to just give you a heads up, it's about the resolution to adopt the 2021 budget. And before I call on our um, Jennifer Hallman to certainly frame uh, the discussion for our budget tonight, I want to just uh, start off by saying to the Board of Commissioners and the citizens of Douglas County, this is the fourth budget I am bringing before the Board of Commissioners and uh, this administration's messaging for this 2021 proposed budget aligns with practical fiscal management, which requires the discipline of doubling down and controlling operating expenses amid this unprecedented pandemic. As we chart our course of the county's future with fiscal policy reform, I'm confident we will sustain our ability to respond to the volatility of the economy and the health crisis, healthcare crisis that we are facing in our county, in our state, and in our nation. Despite the circumstances, the most recent uh, report from Moody's for Douglas County offered favorable indications that our financial position is robust and our credit position is very strong. With the pandemic, this is very, very good news. The budget uh, being presented this evening, it yields consideration to current economic conditions while reflecting the general responsibilities of a government which serves, uh, which services close to 150,000 residents. I appreciate the executive cabinet, the county administrator, uh, Mark Teal, the director of finance, Jennifer Holman, and our financial advisor, David Corbin, for providing quantitative and qualitative advice during the uh, budget preparation uh, phase of this $184 million budget. Board of Commissioners, this is the opportunity uh, after Jennifer Holman, our director of finance, and then of course, we'll have some comments from our, our financial advisor as well. This is an opportunity for you to weigh in with recommendations and adjustments that you would like to see in the 2021 budget. I am respectfully asking that we respect one another's conviction during our deliberations and refrain from personal attacks. 
You will be allotted five minutes for discussion and two minutes for rebuttal regarding the budget being presented tonight. Board, at your pleasure, I will yield the floor to our Director of Finance, Jennifer Holman, to allow her to roll out the 2021 budget proposal presentation. Jennifer Holman, you have the floor. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, before I begin uh, the 2021 budget, um, I just wanted to share a little bit of news that we received from Moody's, of course, is a rating agency. Uh, they do an annual comment, issue or comment every year uh, when we have bonds or any government entity that has outstanding bonds. Um, so we have um, received the issue or comment as of yesterday. It became official, a uh, final version that uh, was now public information. And um, before I turn it over to our uh, county um, financial advisor, I just wanted to kind of just give you a short highlight um, about what the annual comment uh, said. Um, it did have an increase in our median family income, um, which is now $70,000. Uh, the credit overview said that Douglas County has a very strong credit position. It is a AA2 rating, is equivalent to the median rating of a AA2 for U.S. counties. The key credit factors include a robust financial position, an extremely small debt burden, and a mid-range pension liability. It also reflects a very substantial tax base and a healthy wealth and income profile. Uh, that's again, just the uh, highlights. I did email this out to each of the board members, uh, Mark and the assistant finance director, as well as our financial advisor. And if David is on the line, if he would like to uh, chime in and, and uh, give his thoughts on this as well. Uh, good evening, Madam Chair and commissioners. Um, thank you, Director Hallman. You know, I, I'll try to be pretty brief, and uh, I, I am uh, ecstatic that the county has received, again, a, a stable and uh, solid bond rating from Moody's. What I want to make sure I emphasize, uh, Jennifer did get into some of the details, but I want to highlight the fact that the rating really reflects your commitment and your, your willingness to um, make some tough decisions, particularly in this pandemic year but it really reflects a lot of decisions that you have made over the last four years in terms of having some, some discipline in how you operate the county's finances relative to, your, to, to how fast you are actually growing. So you've got a, the Moody's report says a lot of detailed things, but primarily um, what is underpinning uh, that report is the fact that you've maintained uh, county services without borrowing a whole lot of money You've effectively not borrowed much money at all over the last um, four years. Uh, you have a SPLOS that's outstanding. You, when we did the SPLOS back in 2016, the revenues uh, were, the revenue projections were relatively conservative, uh, which are allowing you to actually finish projects that you had started and have um, some remaining funds left over. You haven't, um, you're still able to meet most of your capital needs. You've got a pretty robust economy. Uh, the tax base is continuing to grow, the population is continuing to grow, and you're in a good position to service them over a period of time uh, over the next, uh, the, over the foreseeable future. Uh, the bigger thing I want to make sure we point out is there's been some discussion about that we had about the millage uh, impact last year. And I will tell you that I think that uh, reflects more in your rating than anything else. The fact that the board saw where you were going um, and you had to make some critical decisions and critical moves to basically stabilize your outlook. And I think the, the rating agencies rewarded you uh, with a stable outlook and a stable position in terms of no change in your financial in your financial outlook because of that. So I'll leave it at that. And um, I'm glad to answer any questions you might have, Director Hallman and uh, certainly you know, County Manager um, Mark Teal, I've done a great job in addition to the legislative and policy decisions that you that all of you have collectively supported in this process. Any questions from any of the board members at all that I or Director Hallman can answer? Okay, thank you so much, um, Mr. Corbin. Uh, board of Commissioners, any questions for uh, or comments for Jennifer Hallman or uh, David Corbin? 
Yes, Madam Chair. Okay. Vice Chairman Robinson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, um, obviously, I am as, as equally um, pleased uh, with the Moody's outlook. Um, obviously, uh, their opinion matters. It tells the truth about financial condition. Um, there's been a consistent um, expression over the past four years of like, watch your debt, no debt, no debt, right? That was key. Um, that pandemic was tough. We weren't alone. We had to take a hit and I get it. I understand. I understand my citizens. I get it. But it was it was it was it was a policy shift and we're gonna get to that later, uh, which is we, we had to correct our course. The historical policy in this county, we wouldn't have made it. We were trying to buy time since last year. It's like, okay, guys, we gotta go in a different direction. We're not gonna make it. Right, and I, I appreciate um, what we all did, and it's a collective we, uh, because this report it validates, it vindicates. Like, no, we know what we're doing. Right, take the politics side. No, math is math. Now, don't politicize the numbers. And so now, to that point, we do have a robust economic development. Yes, we did take some hits. We lost some large companies. We lost a lot of small companies. But but we we will survive. Mr. County, we will come through this. Um, but this is this is as an underpinning. This is like, yeah, this was good. Um, and I think I wanted to make sure I expressed that that while we still got to play through, we still got to go through this winter, and it's not over. They're saying that they didn't change our outlook. They didn't say you know raise it one way or the other. But it's like, okay, keep going. The point is, okay, keep going. With that, I'm sure I yield for. Thank you. Thank you so much, Commissioner Robinson. Any other comments for David uh, Corbin and? Or Jennifer Holman. Okay. At this point, uh, Jennifer, are you in a position to uh, roll out the budget so we can look at the budget before? Uh, certainly, I'm, I definitely will not be calling a uh, the question until you provide some detailed information to allow the board to weigh in um, one way or another. And this is their opportunity. So. Yes. Yes, ma'am. I'm I'm ready now. Okay. Let me share my screen. What I'll do is uh, just show a PDF of uh, a summary of, of the general fund and all the other funds. Uh, then I'll switch the screen into our Excel spreadsheet to kind of go over some things that were discussed in Finance Committee and uh, any changes or anything that y'all may or may not want to do, we can add real time and y'all can see the impact. So let's first just kind of go over high level of the budget and I'll share my screen. It's coming. Okay, can you see it? Yes. Perfect, okay. Uh, this is what we um, <clears throat> have proposed. Um, we'll start with the general fund revenues and the different categories of taxes. That's not just property taxes. That is your sales tax, your title ad valorem tax, your real estate tax, your intangible tax. Uh, that totals 86.7 million. You have, uh, we have small license and permits, intergovernmental charges for services, courts and law enforcement, investment earnings, miscellaneous, other financing sources, and the use of fund balance. So our total general fund revenues slash use of fund balance is $99,015,497. This is just the general fund. Now within the general fund, as far as expenditures, you have different functions. We'll start with the general government functions. This is primarily all your administrative uh, departments. Um, you can see them listed with all the district one commissioners, I'm sorry, district commissioners, one, two, three, and four, the board of commissioners, communications, courts, uh, courthouse maintenance, election board and voter registration, external affairs, finance, general appropriations, motor pool, human resources, information services, legal services, printing and mail, property management, purchasing, records retention, risk and safety, tax appraisal, 
Tax Assessor, Tax Commissioner, and Tax Equalization Board. That makes up all of your general government at $27.5 million is what's being uh, currently proposed. Then under the function of judicial, you have everything from the Clerk of Superior Court, District Attorney, Juvenile Court, Juvenile Public Defender, Juvenile Programs Administration, Magistrate, Probate, Public Defender, State Court Clerk, State Court DUI, State Court Judges, State Court Solicitor, Superior Court, and Superior Felony Drug Court is just under $17 million. Public safety consists of coroner, emergency management, sheriff detention, and sheriff enforcement at just over $36 million. Public works is a function within the general government or general uh, fund. You have DOT administration, DOT maintenance and construction, DOT traffic operations and fleet management at $5.8 million. We have Health and Welfare, which is the Board of Health, Boys and Girls Club, uh, Community Service Board, Public Welfare, Family and Children Services, and Senior Citizen Services, which is $2.7 million, $2 million. You have the function of Parks, Recreation, and Culture, and this includes your libraries, your Parks and Recreation Department, Aquatic Center, and Senior Center. That is uh, $5.9 million. Then you have your planning and community development, which is your cooperative extension department, your economic development, GIS or geographic information systems, your ride share pro or I'm sorry, Connect Douglas program, and your share house, which is just uh, three almost 3.9 million. So your total general fund is 99 million, 15,400 and sorry, 97 dollars. Before we jump into the details of, of the general fund and what we discussed, I do want to say that we do have other funds, as you know, that we're required or the board is required by law to um, adopt budgets for. We have special revenue funds and they total $29.2 million and they consist of animal control, your district attorney, your drug abuse treatment and edu education, which is also referred as your date fund emergency E911 fund, your fire and EMS fund, hotel motel tax, the law library, the neighborhood stabilization program, the sheriff asset forfeiture and inmate commissary and other programs, your sidewalk fund, the state court technology fund, the uninc fund, and the victim assistance fund. Other than special revenue funds and general fund, we have the capital projects fund, which is the 2016 SPLOS Capital Project, as well as the Debt Service Fund. The, uh, the reason that these two budgets are identical is because that is the debt service that is um, for next year, 2021. And so the SPLOS comes in and then it is paid into the Debt Service Fund in order to make that debt service payment. We have one enterprise fund, which is your solid waste or landfill fund, which is at $2,196,600. Then we have two internal service funds because we're self-insured with both uh, health care and workers comp, and those total $16.9 million. So right now, the total of all funds is $181,149,963. So um, I will now bring up the PowerPoint, I'm sorry, the Excel spreadsheet so we can see the transactions. Can everybody see that? Great. Yeah, mm -hmm. Okay. 
Um, we talked about the items um, after the budget hearing that um, I believe I, bl I discussed those at the work session. Uh, then we met um, yesterday uh, for our finance committee and um, there was some discussion about some items or was that today? I'm sorry, that was today. It was supposed to be yesterday. It was today. Um, and so the four items that um, have been included or placed back in uh, or is being recommended to be placed back in the budget um, is the adjustments um, to the probate judge just based upon um, an email I received yesterday, uh, which was a reduction. The development authority, $75,000 for a tax allocation district feasibility study of $75,000. Uh, to increase contingency back to 275,000, because if you remember yesterday, um, there was some discussion about two items that were um, suggested to come out of contingency, which was the millings for Reagan Road at 50,000 and the library study. Um, however, um, during the finance committee, um, it was suggested that we uh, take contingency back to the 275 and just let those two items come out of the budget. Um, and then there was discussion regarding um, updating, changing Terminus is contract, which is our financial advisor from uh, the 78,000 to 125,000. So those are the four changes, um, but you can see that um, it, yes. Hey Jennifer, if I may. So also what we discussed in the transportation committee meeting today, if you'll go back up to the Reagan Road millings. So we've got three or four projects that are under budget uh, in the SPLOST. So we talked about putting those under LMIG or one of those other projects and using SPLOST money instead of uh, general fund. Okay. Right. Thank you, Mark. So if that's the case, then I would reduce this by 50,000 and let it come from SPLOST. So in doing that, um, you can see that our unassigned fund balance um, would be 11.1 million or 11,187,043, which is 11.3% um, of our total expenditures, which is within our current policy uh, which is to maintain a minimum of 10%. And uh, Madam Chair, I'm um, complete right now as far as making my presentation. Um, if you would like to answer any or have any commissioners ask any questions. Thank you so much, uh, Director Holman. Board of Commissioners, this is certainly your opportunity to weigh in and, and, and certainly uh, contribute at this uh, time regarding the budget. Are there any comments, remarks that you would like to make? There are no remarks. Okay. Yes. How oh, can this Commissioner Guider? I see your hand. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, ma'am. Um, Jennifer, what happened with the chamber and the museum and cultural arts? You were talking too fast. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, that's fine. Um, yeah, they're still. Um, listed right here. However, they're in the column to be revisited in March after we do a final close of 2020. So we're giving all the hotel motel tax to tourism instead of leaving it like it was last year or past few years, I guess. I believe that. I don't know if that contract is on the agenda or not. I, uh, Lisa, do you know if that contract's on the agenda tonight? It is not on the agenda tonight. Um, Travel and Tourism Board was not ready. They needed to review it. The chairman, yes, you had I, said you were going to contact and I, them. And, and I did, and that's what I'm getting ready to chime in. I'm just trying to allow you to finish your sentence. I had an opportunity to I, I, uh, convey to the board that I would get a definitive answer regarding those three entities. Uh, uh, I spoke to the president of DCT, I mean, uh, uh, DCTT, and uh, she made it clear that the chamber will not be funded. So that was, so I wanted to certainly ask the board if they would just allow us to maintain the 110 
uh, as proposed for this budget. I did ask about the uh, Douglas County Museum as well, and also for CAC, which is the Cultural Arts Center. And um, there was indication that there may be an opportunity for some funding to be available. And those two entities will be getting together and chatting and trying to negotiate something. But I was, uh, it was very strong uh, in terms of the in indication that they may not fund what has been done in the past, such as 54,000 for CAC and then uh, the 110 for the museum in full. So therefore, I requested this morning if we could just just continue to earmark those three areas: uh, the chamber, the CAC, uh, CAC, and also Douglas County Museum. Uh, particularly into March to kind of see exactly what everything is going to look like. Um, again, as Jennifer just mentioned, I believe that was Lisa, that DCTT has not uh, finished their contract and they have not uh, brought it before the board. So I just didn't want to leave it uh, wide open and nothing happens, but at the same time, I just want to earmark those dollars in the budget for March. And that's But, but if we left the money in like it was last year, we wouldn't have to be considering this. Um, uh, I know uh, Commissioner Carthen wanted all the money that hotel motel tax put in the tourism, but um, I would hate to see in in first of March for us to not be able to help with the museum and the cultural arts because that is tourism. Um, I would suggest that we put it back into um, like it was last year and um, or take the funds and fund these three items um, and take it out of the tourism um, or the hotel motel tax. Yeah. Um, I would hate for it to come up and not be able to help these organizations they haven't had an opportunity to find out that they were not going to get this and it's going to uh, really hurt. And those are two things that really attract tourism to the county. So I, I, I would like to see it be put back. Okay. Any other commissioner want to weigh in? This is certainly your time to weigh in. And I, I'm just uh, respectfully asking uh, Commissioner Carthen if she would uh, concede to let it uh, some of the hotel motel tax go to fund these and then it not have to come out of the general fund later on if we have it. The name of the road. Pardon? <laughs> the name of the road. <laughs> I'm sorry, I forgot my mic was on. I was sharing some notes with Sabrina. <laughs> yeah, the road. I was, okay, Commissioner Carthen, I'm, well, I know you're addressing her, so I'm, I'm not sure if she heard you. Commissioner Carthen? Do I need to yes, make it in, in the form of a, an amendment or what? <laughs> yeah, rebuttal. Okay. Chairman Jones, do yes. I have the floor? You do have the floor, Commissioner Carthen. Okay. Awesome. So yes, so just to give uh, education to the public, the hotel motel tax comes from the hotels and motels in the county. These are not hotels and motels from the city and county. This is strictly from the county. The Cultural Arts Center and the museum and the chamber are entities. Museum and Cultural Arts Council are 501c3s, if I'm not mistaken. Us being able to help fund them, I am not opposed to. However, I am opposed to sending the hotel motel tax to them when the hotel motel tax is strictly for tourism and product development. So uh, I will restate what I stated yesterday. The Cultural Arts Council and the museum can go before the Douglas County Travel and Tourism with their idea of how they can align what they've done in the past and what they want to do in the future with what Douglas County Travel and Tourism is planning to do. Those two entities and those three entities should work together. I'm pretty sure if Emily from the Cultural Arts Center and the ladies from the museum will go over to Douglas County Travel and Tourism, 
and present, like everyone should come to, before the Board of Commissioners and present, then I'm sure they can work together. Now, the amount, I cannot tell you. I wouldn't know. I don't sit on that board. As far as the chamber, the chamber is a private organization. They make their funds from membership. I don't understand why we would be funding them at a tune of $110,000 when they are the chamber. I don't know of another organization that funds their chamber to the tune of $110,000. I do believe that the chamber is a great organization here in Douglas County. I do support them. However, instead of us just keep giving out money to these entities, they need to come before us, present what we are getting for that, how are they working in our community and on all of the citizens behalf that includes minority businesses women businesses and veterans business so i'm aware of what the chamber does now i'm not aware of them doing it to the tune of hundred and ten thousand dollars but i am not on their board i do not know what they spend i just know what i see within our community so again all hotel motel tax should go through our uh, DMO, which is our, de our designated marketing organization, that organization should align up for tourism, what that looks like in Douglas County. And ent any entity that wants to help them to do that is welcome, I'm pretty sure, by that board to come before them, present to them, and then see what can happen. And that's where I stand, Chairman Jones. Well, okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Commissioner. Madam, Madam yeah. Chair. I never yielded back. Oh, I'm, giving, <laughs> I'm giving you the floor back. Her, her talk, mm -hmm. but I had, had addressed her, but I never yielded the floor back. But I, um, I think we're turning our back on the museum and the cultural arts. I know the chamber wrote an extensive letter as to how they promote tourism here in the county. And um, there may be an argument there, but the, the other two, it's a shame that we're handing off some 5013 501 501-3Cs to another 501-C3, I think there are six. Um, and we're shunning our, bit, our uh, duty to uh, support these two touristic um, organizations, the, the museum, and the Cultural Arts Center, uh, our council. So um, uh, I hope, and when we revisit it in March, if we come up short, um, we might want to reconsider it next year or something, because especially if they do not get any of the funds from the hotel motel or the tourism uh, 50136, because they don't have to give them anything. and it sounds to me like they don't want to give any of it to anybody else. They want to keep it all. I can't see that tourism would need as much money um, to you know, advocate for our county. And there's so much you can do. You can put some ads out there and a couple of billboards if you want to. But uh, I, I don't see how we can... We had so much money um, this past year, we couldn't spend it all. We had to hurry up and spend it. Uh, so it became a problem because we did have too much money. So um, I, I think when we readdress re this or revisit this in March, that we may find out that we, we're not gonna be funding the museum and cultural arts and then we're to blame for that. So with that, I yield back. Okay, thank you. Chairman Jones. Uh-huh, thank you so much, Commissioner Kyder. Commissioner Carlton, you have the floor. Thank you. Uh, to my colleague over there in District 4, uh, I, I don't believe she fully heard me when I said that those two entities need to go before the Douglas County Travel and Tourism and present. Um, not everybody, uh, just gives out money like BLC. <laughs> so you have to present. So if they have the need and they are able to meet that need, that board chairman has so stated that they can come before them 
and they can work together. And that's how it should be. This is hotel motel tax. This is not Douglas County money. We collect it from the hotel motel taxes of the county hotels. Cultural Arts Center is for the city and the county. So we're not the only entity that helps fund them. And again, these are 501c3s. They should be um, going out and receiving money um, on their own. If they are waiting for Douglas County to, to be the sole ones to fund them, then that uh, to me just is not good business. So um, I'm hoping that we are not their only ones funding them. Um, however, I am not opposed to helping them just not taking it out of the general fund to the tune of 110,000 and 54,000 without anything to show for it. Um, and that's that's all I have to say on that. So again, they, they need to go before them, work together to make tourism in Douglas County profitable, more heads and beds. And again, the hotel managers sit on the DCTT board. They should be the ones who have the say as to what those dollars and cents look like to get more heads and beds. Um, I don't wanna keep beating this dead horse. I just want it to be cleaned up. One entity that we send it to, and then that entity helps the other entities if they so choose to carry out the mission um, for that, for tourism. That is all Chairman Jones and I yield. Okay, thank you so much, Commissioner Carthen. I'm so asking for the, just the, um, um, at the pleasure of the board at this particular time, because the, there was such a short notice of the uh, change for both the um, CAC and also for the um, for the uh, Douglas County Museum, uh, when I spoke with the president last night, she said, because no, they, no one has had an opportunity to speak. I just wanted to earmark it. It doesn't mean anything, but just to keep it just in case. Uh, first of all, we're not, uh, first of all, I'm not sure what DCTT will uh, provide in terms of funding. And just wanted to earmark, simply just an earmark, just an holder until they can have an opportunity to speak. When I spoke to the president, again, I sit uh, on this board as an ex-officio member, and I, I can attest that we have not had any conversations with those two entities, and I don't believe it's not because they don't want to speak. It's just the, the timing. Um, so if we could just earmark it until uh, March, see what it looks like, in that, and uh, um, the president, Dorsha, assured me that, that she will be getting with those entities, and those entities will be meeting with her as well. So it will be in collaboration, but I just wanted to not approve this budget tonight and not have anything, and then we have to come back and revisit. But certainly if, if it's the will of the board and you want to come back and revisit it later, if things don't pan out the way as, as we are projecting, we certainly could, can do that. So I'm open either way. Madam Chair? Yes, Vice I, Chairman. I, I, I'm looking, it's, it's not my five minute narrative, but just sort of, um, to sort of add to this. Um, Douglas County um, is changing, um, um, and I think we're hitting on ahead if the public is watching this. There has been a historical handshake, uh, a historical of, of, of funding uh, and supporting with no thought of accountability, right? I mean, these are grants. I'll cut a grant, be accountable, and keep it moving. There's they're sort of like this, it, it, it's a shift. So to the public, there's the shift of, of the way of doing things in Douglas. That's what you're hearing, right? In other words, like we, we, we can just spot somebody, uh, uh, you know, um, food for the pantry, right? We spot them, right? $50,000, but we can't do the corner, pick up our people. Got to get used cars. Like, the, look at the language. Look at how this thing is shifting. And so what you're hearing is that uneasiness of, of that, okay, things are shifting. But we, this board, are responsible for it. So at the end of the day, we can't allow these. You have these back doors and these exclusionary, and it's like and it's like entitled and forever. And it's like, okay, we'll, we'll see how that work out, right? There's a you no. Know, it's been a year in making that conversations could have been had. We've been talking about this for 30 days, right? And, and, and so, but it, it's so used to the way it was. It's just like and it's like, okay, come on, wake up now, wake up. There's no way if the public really knew how Douglas County Road, they'd be shocked. They'd be shocked. And what you're hearing is, 
uh, a desire that says, okay, on our watch, now we, we, we since we're held to a, a higher and a double standard, that means everybody else is too. Right, getting his ring. Right, no more spotting. Right, so I, I think that, that I'm tend to be the definitive one. Let me just get right to it. Now I think respectfully, you said we we're going to revisit. I'm fine with revisiting it at some point. We can't override that 501c6 that the administration created. I mean, I, I, I get the chamber. I, I, I understand that they didn't want to do it that way, and I, I get it. The deal, you know, DCTT didn't want to do it that way. I get it, but I, I think we've got a lot of these organizations that we created to now take wings. It's 150 years. We're turning the page. Now let's let this go anew. Let, let it be anew. So I don't want to belabor this, Madam Chair. We got man, we get, you got this budget to get through. Yeah. But I want to clarify that it says, I mean, as we we, we, were, we like you said, we respect each other's position. Unless you got two of the people that's going to join you to take something off or add it, you pretty much got to let it be for where it stands right now. Uh, for the sake of the conversation, as to not go back and forth, back and forth beyond just the initial rebuttal. I yield the floor. Thank you, respectfully. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Vice Chairman. All right, uh, Commissioner Guider. Yes, uh, Jennifer, would you go back up to DFACS, uh, the DFACS budget? Yes, ma'am. Did we make an adjustment on that? You talking about this right here? Yes, was there was there an adjustment on that? Because um, was there a budget cut on that? Um, I think that they were part of the um, across the board cut of eight point two five, but not. It hasn't been cut. It hasn't changed since we presented this. Am I correct, Sabrina? Since we presented this at the budget hearing budget retreat or budget hearing. There's not been any changes. There wasn't even the budget. Because this is for foster kids and, and children. And um, I just wondered, had we cut that budget too? It, it was, um, their budget was cut, like I said, with the 8.25%, like every other department. So how much was that? Um, they're on a very tight budget as it is. Um, how much was that, Sabrina? Okay, say that again. It's yes. not understand. Um, go ahead. Okay, yes. Um, it looks like that DFACS requested 75,600. Um, then um, there were uh, the across the board operating cut and then a, another 10% operating cut from the 2020 budget. So their budget was cut 10% from their 2020. And then when we had to do the 8.25% operating cut, so they went from a request of $75,600 to $63,918. Um, let me ask, uh, on, under the CARES distribution, um, you know, this is for foster kids and it's for the children that are being taken in and everything. Uh, if they run short in this budget, could they apply for additional funds since their budget was cut. I don't think they were aware of it. Um, or maybe they didn't realize it, but uh, could they apply for some CARES fund under that bucket, which is for community and vets and stuff like that? Stable, sta was it stabilization or something? This, this, is, this is foster kids. Um, and I know they're 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 just on a very thin line as it is, and I just wondered would they be able to come back and uh, request some funds under the CARES? Uh, 
uh, Commissioner Carthen, that you want to address it or? Sure, I, th I thought you would. Yes, Chairman yeah. Jones. Commissioner Goddard, I think that that is a great idea. And again, I will harp again, when you come to the Board of Commissioners, just make sure you have your request, your ask, how you will appropriate it, and when we will get our report on what you did with the funds we gave you. There has to be an accountability. So I would say apply, apply, apply. <laughs> okay. Those would be my so thoughts. They would qualify is what I'm saying. Under they, the would, that, that they would. Under that bucket of the 866,000 minus the 305 for veterans, they would. They would, they would qualify. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. I yield back. Thank you. Um, Thank you. I hope that answers your question, Commissioner Guider. Yes, I, my response to you was yes, but I wanted some elaboration from uh, uh, Commissioner Carthen, because again, it is we want to take care of all our uh, citizens and that uh, family and services, uh, which is uh, defects, certainly encompasses our children, uh, those who are um, compromised and need some support as well. So yes, when they come to me uh, as the executive, uh, they just documentation uh, uh, stating what they need. And we, we keep very uh, seamless records of the activity because we just want to keep it as part of our reporting mechanism. But yes, to answer your question, DFACS can approach us and come uh, for, uh, to receive some of this funding. Okay. Any other comments from the boards regarding any other um, topic or any other part of the budget that you want to elaborate on? May, may, may I go? I want to make sure Madam Goddard got her, her narrative in. I don't want to take any of her time. But okay, I'm, I'm okay. I did have one other piece, but you can go ahead. I'll, I'll yield to you and then I'll come back. Um, Commissioner. Okay. I will yield to you if you if you would like. No, no, no. I want the full floor. You go ahead and finish out your item. Uh-uh. <laughs> We're good. Okay. No, no. Okay, um, go, Jennifer, put the first slide back up. Uh, the first slide, uh, the revenues and the expenditures. Okay. It was a breakdown. I would like to respectfully ask the commissioners that have AIDS at $40,000 a year, if you would consider cutting that amount because of the fact that you're paying them more than full-time employees that work for this county and you're paying the, and they're certainly not putting in the hours, especially with the shutdown. Um, this is a very sore subject with the public. And I would just ask that you reduce it um, to be more comparable to the workload that they have. Um, so um, they've already been approved but uh, I, I didn't agree with how much you were starting them at. People in the courthouse are very upset with it. Um, and um, they're, they're young, very young people. This is probably their first job out of, the, out of school. And it would, it would just behoove us to, to hear the public outcry about them. And I, I ask that you cut their, uh, their contract before it's approved and and thus reducing this budget. As you see, scroll on down. Um, as you, you see, the 59, let's see, I don't know what that even means. What's the 59,000? Does that include the AIDS there? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and and another thing, <laughs> your aides are making almost twice what you're making. That how backwards can we get? 
So I really wish you would consider reducing that amount. Thank you, and I yield back. Okay, thank you so much, Commissioner Guider. Any rebuttal response? Okay, Vice Chair no. Robinson. No, she, she's yielded. Has she yielded completely? I, I, Have you yielded completely, Commissioner Guider? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. All right, let's get to this. We'll, we'll get along. All right, so let, let me let me address the aids. Let, let me set some context. Right now, we're 150,000 people, 150 years. Right? I'm not going to argue all these aides. Yeah, my aide just graduated from college, Texas A&M, a senator, 65,000 strong, about to be the next Kenny. Right? I remember Kenny when he was in high school. So what I remember my my aide, somebody who lives right in this community, was given an opportunity, like Kenny. I get it. It was open for anybody to apply. And this is the value that we place on. I have 78 communities I have to oversee. I do get out. I personally don't sit in an ivory tower for me. I'm talking to my citizens. You know, I get out. Right? We're, 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 we're taking this to a whole nother level. When I came on board, you guys didn't have town halls. You didn't get involved. That was 12 years ago. It, 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 it was such elitist just just to be elected. And it's like, okay, but what about the citizens? Right? But 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 it's got a scale. It's like, okay, we can do more. You got congressional offices, they have people. You have General Assembly, they have people, and so do we. It's our choice. Right. I'm fine with somebody getting paid. I, I'm fine with my two dollars and fifty cent that I get paid, and I haven't had a raise in 12 years. Thank you. I get it. Right, but but how we run our offices, that's how we run our offices. It's choice. Now, if you can find two others that's going to stop them AIDS, it's a new way of life. It's not debatable. This is important for us to be able to function, to do it well. My colleagues are busy, but they want to put in the time with the citizens. They got full time. Everybody ain't retired or got options, but they they, they care. They want to make sure that it's so between the two of them, they can make sure there's a full person part time, part time. But you know, we're not again, we don't you know, for the public, we don't debate ourselves about what we're going to do in our respective office. We're all sovereign. Right. I can't tell them to do nothing more than they can tell me. Right. So I have to respect the will. And this is how we're doing it. It's we don't have to maintain the way life used to be. That was that era. You got the baby boomers, Generation X and the millennials coming online. Now, I'm, I'm in the middle. I'm an X. But I ain't gonna be here 40 years. But I'm doing a different type of way. And I'm swinging it to the young ones like that probate judge I'm about to deal with in a minute. Right? No, go in a different direction. Right? No, it, it and I get it, but I also when you say here the public outcry for every yes, somebody wants a no, for every no, somebody wants a yes, like it's all, it's not just one view of Douglas County. That's important. So for all citizens, I, I get it. Right. This is, you know, we appreciate that, but uh, for the citizens who celebrate it. Uh, my age when they when they clap for them and stuff like look look we're we're, we're growing the next generation, right? My, my aide in there on a, a First Amendment. Now he wants to be an attorney. He's in the room with this ex attorney general. A First Amendment issue. Now that's how you grow locally. He had an opportunity. He got to apply like anybody else. He competed. He wasn't spotted. He competed. Interview process was the best. So with that, like, no, he, no, we're not, no, you can't take that pride. You, you can't marginalize that what they ain't doing that. That's my value. I determine that. You don't get to dictate what's valuable for me. Don't do that. Let's, let's, let's stay in, stay in our lane, right? You know, I can only speak for myself, but no, that's important for me. He does what I need him to do. We make this thing happen. We make it, and we're just, if it wasn't for the pandemic, I mean, it, it'd be much, much greater. Right? I mean, we were ready to go when the A's was coming along. Then it was like, boom. I get it. But I mean, look, guys, we talk about $184 million. There's no way I'm going to sit here and debate my peers over $40,000. Right? Now, I get it. But that's that's the game. They, they, they try to say, like, look, you need to be focused on that. Like, I ain't going to spend that time on that. I just want to address that in rebuttal. All right, let me move on. All right, let's go on to the probate. Um, let, let me, and hold on a minute, Jennifer. Let me just get my thoughts. 
uh, um, I appreciate the citizens' um, input, right? Um, uh, and and I, I, I want to set the stage, and I do appreciate um, the gentleman, um, God, Mr. Holder, who spoke. Sometimes you got to get outside of Douglas County because people will do you your voice and your mindset. You always got to go across the river and get outside council. You never want to be beholden to anybody to just get you, like, it, that you become a moon to somebody's earth. You become an asteroid in the belt. Like, no. It's, it was important. So I, I'm saying that, that like, that's kind of, we're, we're, we're better than that. Yeah, we, we, the, the atmosphere I know up at the national level, I, 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 I get the state level. I, I, I get the, 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 the First Amendment versus the Eighth Amendment. All right? I, I get freedom of speech versus cruel and unusual punishment. I, I, I get all that. But look, look, we're neighbors. We're neighbors. And some of the commentary, which it doesn't, it's, it's, it's inadmissible on this side of the fence, right? It's, it's like, well, I mean, I get it, right? I mean, I get SCOTUS versus executive versus congressional. Everybody stay in their lane. It's important that me as an elected official that I do my own work. So I'll reach out and get intelligence and frame this for myself. That's what you do. Like I said, I earn my two dollars and fifty cents. Right? That that that's important. But 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 again, some of the narrative I got I gotta speak to it. No, don't 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 no, this is not gonna be that type party. Don't don't treat. We should be celebrating. Thank you, um, um uh, Madam Probate elect for, for, for going out there and you won. You didn't get spotted. There was no retirements, movements, and stuff, and people getting appointed. She hustled countywide, constitutional, young. Thank you and good night. Maybe we'll have this conversation. And really not. I, I'm just, I got to address it. <laughs> I, I, I have to address it. Y'all better turn your microphones off because y'all y'all may hear some stuff. I don't want to hear no feedback, with, uh, uh, some of the things I may say. Um, this is important that we treat. Everybody equally. Now, equal is relative in that there's equality and there's equity. Across, and then how do we distribute? It's the whole person. This, this is not, no, but I want to call it. Um, like I said, probates judge me just the, the language. Like, like that, that's, that's down there, minimum wage. Like, okay, really? So, so all the Gen Zs is coming out with high school, coming out of going to college, and all those people getting master stuff. They're saying that okay, when you get that, that's invaluable. You got to go here and do this, and that you're no better than that person right there that's got a high school. And I'm looking at y'all like, oh my goodness, really? And you you're speaking to an elected official, really? She was smart enough to say, well, I, I'm sorry that he didn't know that he can get all that vital records, but I mean, I can read. Right, and it, it, you're trying to marginalize, and I mean, it wasn't a raise; it was a compensation adjustment. Well, the general assembly should have took care of it. It's on us. We are a subdivision of the state. I get it. It's on us. Sorry, guys. I mean, they they could have took care of it. 159 counties. Why? And had a model built in that would recalibrate automatically, but they didn't. They're like, we're gonna let y'all handle that through home rule. I, I got it. We 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 got this. But 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 I I, I just gotta. No, that, that that's. No, not on my watch. There's no nod. No, there's no, I can't believe. Oh, come on, judge. Like, hey, like Kim Bernard said, I wish you would stay out. Like, why y'all, don't politicize that you're a judge. Like, really, judge, I've met with you. Like, we, 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 we talked, right? This, like, why you, you SCOTUS, right? You. Like, but I get it. I, I I get the First Amendment, but it, it's like, but I'm not gonna buy into that. Like that that's that's like no, no. Just not me. Just not District Two. It's like uh okay, right? It's like don't treat our neighbors like that. That's that's that's. I mean, dishonorable. How we treat our corner. So we want to spot somebody for fifty thousand dollars, but yet we want to find some used lease bus to, to get pick up our deceased ones, and we still ain't got that done. Uh huh. Look at the. It's like being in two rooms at the same time. You got to know who you are. Like I'm cool, 
I'm, I'm not saying replace the status quo, but I'm saying we're going to expand this thing. It's going to be equality and equitable. Like you, we have to work through those things. Everything must be in reason, but it's to not to consider. It's like well, wrong generation, wrong guy. I, I, I mean, I, I'm listening to the narrative, but I, I think it's unfair because you put that type of pressure. And it's like, now I, I, I don't read that stuff anyway. You know, I'm not on Facebook, so I don't, you know, that First Amendment was like, okay, whatever. But it's something about being blind. You could see totally different. Like everybody to me is gray. So I got a certain freedom that certain people couldn't say, shouldn't say, wouldn't say. I'm like, no, I mean, I get it, but no. But, but, but I, I get we can express ourselves any way we want to, but it's like, well, let me get involved in this conversation now. And then I'm not in on it. Like, come on, Mr. Robinson, you know, like, what are you saying? Like, we were, we were talking about the buses and stuff, and I sat across from these ladies, and they're like, well, come on, Mr. Robinson, you know, they're going to they bring crime. Well, who is they? That, that narrative is it's a stench from old. This is not 1870. This is not three-fifths, that she's worth three-fifths. It was just the language. I got it. It was how y'all tried to frame the argument. It was the extra. I listened to the off talk. I, I mean, I, I can count myself. I, I'm pretty quick at counting. I, 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 you come to me, I figure out everything pretty fast. And I, but I'm, I'm listening to, okay, what's the spirit in the room? This is, we're, we're, not, we're, we're not wrestling against flesh and blood. Please, no one in here. Like, look, I love everybody. I get it. I, I, have, I have peace with everybody because I can talk to anybody. I have peace. But it's not, it's about wrestling not against flesh and blood, but against rules, against principalities, against in high places. Like, it, it, it's, it's a, now look at how, we're being asked to feed on our own. We're being asked to feed on the sheep or how the money goes out the side door and how we, like, no, guys. So for all of Atlanta that's watching this, no, this is New Day and Douglas now. It's shifted. Now, we have a, a matter of the, I think I'm about to, to tell in that, and I, I think my spirit is leading me, saying, okay, you, you said enough. Which is like, okay, guys, let's get that out the way. Like, don't, don't, don't try to suggest that and then it, it gets spotlighted up, right? Okay, the, you know, the, the Senate Commission versus the Senate Commission, right? The, you know, this side versus that side. Like, no, I get all that, but we, we're still talking about, like, okay, somebody needs to have a, a, their, their compensation package recalibrated. Well, why wasn't this taken care of? It's the first time in their history for 16, like, it's only been two probates. Like, I mean, Madam Guyton has been in office for 40 years, almost a third of this county's history. A third of the county's history. I ain't mad at you. Go home with your bad self. Ten straight wins. I ain't mad at her. Slaughter. I get it. Right? But 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 it's changing. It, it, it's changed. And so now we're just re, 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 recalibrating this thing for a better note. It, it's not to don't 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 fear anything. Like it's all good. Right? No, but there there is a there, 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 don't, we can do better than that. And I just can't be complicit for those who are not ready to change. I, I, I cannot touch that. I cannot touch and agree with that. But I get it. You're allowed to say what you want to say. But nonetheless, I must take my position. And it's just my position alone. I do not speak for my peers. And they know that when I get in this mode, like, no, District 2 this is what I believe. That being said, all right, so let's talk about this probate. All right, so there, there's, there's, there's six components of the probate. Now we we've talked about this since it was first presented. We've only heard from, uh, other than just now, we heard from Judge Elect uh, Christina uh, uh, Peterson, um, and so this is something that comes before the board. Like, okay, well we gotta we gotta go through the process, right? Um, and and there is a formal process. Any of you guys who are who well, I've talked to HR directors out there for these Fortune 10 companies, and you know I share with them. They're like, okay, well that ain't too difficult. I mean I, I get it. Look. I, I, I got my master's. I, I, I went to work for a bank. I mean, I mean, the person I was working for was making 88, right? 88. I came in making 150 with a 50,000 signing bonus. She was livid. She was my team lead. Like, it's like the chief judge. Like, okay, now, ha, ha, I've been hit from whatever, whatever. I get it. But that was the market. Oops. I've been here all these years and I worked up. Like, no, I get it. But also give that this is a public servant that was private sector. So there's a balancing act, right? So it's our wisdom said, okay, no, duly noted. And yes, there should be value based on education. That's all relative. It becomes a simple number. 
I, I get it. I mean, I mean, everybody who's watching this, like, no, we get it. And, and I know it, 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 it's, it's being amplified, but no, we get it, guys. So there's six components to this. And Jennifer, just hold me, hold, hold back now, but just confirm me for the categories. There is associated with a, 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 um, um, the probate court, there's six components. There is what? A base salary. Make sure I get, y'all write this down who paying attention. There is a base salary um, component. There is a supplement component. We have an earmark for vital records. There is uh, what I want to call uh, um, the, the um, uh, employees. Uh, and you would just want to say employees. And then there's an operating cost. That was one, two, three. Which one did I miss? Did I get everybody? Let's say them again. There was a base salary. There is the supplement. There is vital records. There is um, um, uh, the employees, meaning the, the existing employees, plus the new employees, plus the um, um, the operating costs. Did I get those six buckets right, Jennifer? Yes. Yeah. Um, the, I'm sorry, I'm getting sorry, some get feedback. Some feedback. Just, just read, just read out loud my six buckets that I had earlier. Just read them. Sure, sure. There's actually, There's actually seven, seven from what we talked, what we talked about. about. It's probate, probate judge, judge, base pay. Yep. Yep. Excuse probate me, Jennifer. Jennifer, Jennifer. Excuse me for a second. Everyone, please mute your microphones. Thank you, Madam Chair. All right, take your time, Jennifer. Just lay the seven out. Just read them. Mm -hmm. Sure, sure. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, you got probate judge base pay, probate judge supplement, probate judge car allowance, vital records, staff salary, benefits, and operating. All right, I, I got them pretty close, except for I, I forgot the car allowance. All right, so um, if, if you're going to approach this, you, you've got to look at it wholly, right? That, that's the fullness of court, right? So you have to back up and look at this. This is business. Take the politics out for a minute. Show that you know what you're doing and stop being politicians, right? And that's what we're doing right now. I'm, I'm just saying we have to, we're telling the public like, okay, there was a business side to this. All right, so that being said, Jennifer, do me a favor. Um, take my suggested off just for a minute and hide it. And I want you to put up the proposed versus the suggested. Just take mine off so it doesn't influence the moment, please. Can you do that for me? So you want the proposed and the requested. That's correct. Take off the suggested for a minute. Okay. Just hide it. All right, let me unshare my screen for a minute. Yep. Give us a minute, y'all. We got we got to get through this. I know this is the main act. Can everybody see that? You got proposed and requested, right? Correct. All right. All right, so blow it up. Just, just. Okay, so to, to, to make some rational sense of this, and this is, you know, I mean, that, that education side comes out of me. It's not trying to politicize this. Let's lay out how, how the Board of Commissioners is being presented something. That's important, right? What, what was presented to the Board of Commissioners and how we're approaching this to take all the, 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 the rest of the stuff, uh, take the noise out of the way. So, Director Holman, you have a, um, um, you, you have the um, suggested and you have a, no, you have the proposed and requested. Talk about the request. Let's start with the request. What was requested based on your understanding, all the emails, all things that you came in speak to the requested based on how you framed it according to how the board of commissioners sees the world so read that for the public please sure the requested yes ma'am okay uh yes based upon the letter um that she sent um we uh took the base salary um plus the eighty six thousand eight hundred ninety dollars that comes up to the 175 that she was asking for uh, she did not ask for a car allowance. The vital records is by state code. Um, the staff salary, she asked for her current, you know, the current staffing as well as um, four part-time, uh, four full-time and one part-time. 
Um, in her request, she did mention that, you know, she did not have the amount for benefits, but I added that down here um, of what the benefits would be, and they would be, uh, be um, then you have your operating. She looked at what the current uh, proposed budget was uh, and said that based upon what she's going to need to do in order to have the um, Article 6 uh, court, would be an additional, I mean, not an additional, would be $138,000. So the total request, when you take her request plus add in the benefits, because we needed to calculate that for her, was $1,063,539. What's currently proposed is $490,497. The difference of what? $573,042. Right. So that's what's on the floor. What is the proposed, what is the proposed base salary? The current proposed base sal uh the base yeah uh is 88,110 dollars and then uh after yesterday's discussion I was instructed to make it a uh uh 90,000 dollars even so that it would make the supplement be the difference to get to the 90,000 which was 1,890 dollars. And then, of course, there was the car allowance that was in there as well. Right. So let's talk about this real quick. So eighty-eight for the public is what, Jennifer? That that comes from where? That's not our number. What is that? Eighty-eight thousand one hundred and ten dollars is the base salary according the way it's got to be calculated through state law. All right. Very good. All right. So so we we state law, state law. We have no conversation with that. The key thing here is for the board of commissioners is that what will be the supplement? I can't change her base salary. All right, so, so let's all not have misunderstanding of what the Board of Commissioners uh, can move and not move. So one of the levers that we can move is consider um, that second one, which is the supplement. What is the supplement of the magistrate, the senior magistrate today? $36,688.32. All right, so just do me a favor. So where you got the 80, I'm just going to just, where you got um, where I want to say a, we're going to create a third column. I'm just going to put these numbers in as I go, Jennifer. So at the bottom, you've got 88, all right? You've got 88, whatever that number is, all right? Go up one, put in the 36,000, please. You got it? Yes. All right, it's just me and you talking, Jennifer, so I can't see if you're putting it on there. All right, so we oh, got Oh, I'm sorry. No, we're, we're fine. You know how we do this. So you got 88. All right, you got the supplement of 36000 So the base, we have nothing to do with. Take it up with the General Assembly on Thursday. We have nothing to do with that. The supplement, um, currently the $36,000 is associated with what? Uh, that's our magistrate. So that's our, our supplement for a, a judge, $36,000. Uh, does any other judges get supplements? Um, the mad, uh, the Deputy magistrate judge receives one that 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 is it as far as judges. All right. So 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 just as a comparable for the public, we're using what, what our precedent is already in place. Pound for pound, match for match, thirty six thousand, whatever that number is. So I'm going from so there's eighty eight, there's thirty six. Um, the car allowance uh, that was something that was proffered. Uh, I have no objections to it. Elected officials and certain people within the judicial side and other people that may need cars, I have no problem. Please put that back in there at 48. So that's, what's that? What, what would that person qualify at that level? We have a policy in place, Jennifer. What was the number you told me earlier? 4,800. So that's 12 divided by 4,800 gives me what, $400? So give yeah. or take. All right, all right. So it's four hundred dollars a month. So for the, I think, um, Madam Chair, and certain people get a much higher amount. The county administrator get a higher amount. It's either car or a car allowance. That's part of it for being elected and being at that level. All right. So that's forty eight hundred dollars. All right. So so vital records. Let's talk about the vital records for just for a second. Um, now that right there is all what we want to say straight cash on an annualized basis. What is that total right there for a minute? Thirty six plus forty eight hundred plus um, eight. 88. What is that getting to? Oh, shoot. That. Oh, wait a minute. Just adding up that hidden column that I have. Oh, okay. No, you can't show that. 
<laughs> We're getting there because I'm doing it my way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going reverse. We're good. One hundred and twenty-nine thousand five hundred ninety-seven dollars and ninety cents. All right, so that's one twenty-nine. All right. So currently, what is the now? Let's go to vital records. All right, vital records are what's considered what user fees. How, 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 what what is a vital record? What what is that? How does that? What how are you classifying that? That is the revenue that they receive. I'm not quite sure of the process, Commissioner Robinson, to be honest with you, because the proceeds we receive is directly from the probate court. But um, that is um, revenue that they receive for birth certificates, death certificates, um, items such as that, um, that they turn in. And by again, by law, um, the probate judge um, can choose to receive all or a portion of that amount. All right, so let's 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 go in reverse. Let's lay the people off for the public sake. We've got to put a proxy in there because it sounds like that amount is variable. Does it change every year to year, or is it fixed? It changes, and I'll, I've got down here um, the history, vital records history, since 2005, uh, 2015 all the way up to uh, what we estimate 2020 being, and you can see the variance if you want me to read them out. Yeah, read them for everybody, just for some of our seniors may looking at that, those little numbers, so I'm gonna support them. Yeah, read them out from 15 for please. 2015 was $5,706, 2016 was $6,318, 2017 was $10,064, 2018 was $67,894, 2019, 66,158 dollars, and we're estimating 2020 based on so far would be 71,400 dollars. Okay. So, what has been identified, if you know, as being the key driver from the first three years for these past three years? What has, what is, what's driving that? Do you know? Would you be willing to venture? I don't want to steal your idea, but after our discussion, it was probably the. Uh, Gun permits. <laughs> gun permits. All right. So we're, we're living in a time where Second Amendment is kicking in. All right. So if I've got to put something in here for a budget sake, on how I'm going to budget this, and I've got to look at the historical. The first three years are pretty small. They're what they are. Do the first three years, what's that average? Give or take. First three years average was $7,363. All right. So if it wasn't for the current state of turn, state of state of state of where we are, um, it probably just say 10,000 for easy math, but it's not. All right. Now do the average for the next. Um, so that's 10,000. Now do the other, the last three, please. Last three years average 68,500. Ooh, somewhere between 70 and 10,000. All right. But I'm sure if I go back further in history. Uh, th those last three are, are just sort of an anomaly. Hopefully, uh, you know, we're not all arming ourselves as much, though I, I, I get it, I have no problem with the Second Amendment. I, I'm just saying uh, as a baseline, right, how do I factor it in? So I don't know, somewhere between 70 and 10. If I've got to put a proxy in, just for the sake of this conversation. So if I have 130 plus, if it continues as it is, it's 130 plus 70 puts it at 200. Did I do my math right? Yes, sir. All right. It's 200. By default, I have nothing to do with vital records. Nothing. I have nothing to do with the base. Nothing. All right, the, the car allowance, that's just by policy. Everybody gets it. The only thing that we can move was just sort of what, what's fair and equal. It, 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 it's that supplement. What do all the other judges do? It's that supplement. All right, so it, I, I stay there on, this, on, on what I call the compensation package. Y'all need to think about that just for a second. Right now, that's not guaranteed. Next year, that, that 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 vital records could come down. Now, the key thing here is that again, those are do we budget for those vital records, or is that something that's just cash that comes into her office, almost like the tax commissioner, right? Or for passports, right? I mean, explain the difference, please. Yes, that money um, is uh, received through the probate office, uh, turned in to finance, and then based upon the what the uh, probate judge percentage wants runs through payroll, uh, the percentage that um, they are to receive. All right, so payroll 1099, I'm gonna give that, she'll work that out with the administration. My job is just to appropriate, got it. All right, so that brings me up to, all right, so one more time, the vital records are the vital records. We don't even, it's just a proxy that's there. 
but it's there. She would be eligible for it. Now, to, to, to explain the current, um, um, and I appreciate um, Judge Hammer, appreciate your service. Thank you, sir. I've always enjoyed you. He's probably almost on the road now sometime, but I do appreciate his service. That being said, um, how, did he take all the, the, the vital records or did he do something different? He did something different. All right. Can you explain that for the public sake? So we're, we've got balance in this conversation. It's my understanding that he took 50 percent. All right. So he didn't take all. Could he have taken all of it? Uh, yes, sir. To my understanding, the law states that um, can take all of it. OK. All right. And what you'll understand right now, the current judge like is what plan on taking half of it or all of it. The current judge or the, the judge elect judge elect. Judge elect. Uh, it's my understanding all of it. All right, that's fine. All right, just keep it simple. All right, so all right, again, we try to compare what the, the existing judge did or didn't do. Right. Well, he left what thirty five thousand points on the table. Right. 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 And that's just in vital. That was his. We really had nothing to say as a board of commissioners. Now, I'm, I'm just making that point. I got to go on now. But, but this is important because this is an important part. The rest of the budget, I think, is going to go simple. So the last two parts is there was an ask for um, employees. The difference between uh, there was, I think it was about four um, for whatever they were ne necessary. As a board of commissioners, like we do with other constitutional offices, which she is, uh, we, we, tend to, we, we can't micromanage. I cannot tell a judge how to run that court. I cannot tell a sheriff how many people he need. Okay? We, we can't get in that. We try to appropriate accordingly, but we can at least try to honor, tell me what the roles are so I can get my mind around how much I'm going to have to fund. So I know she asked for four. I, I think that, 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 that and, and so um, in my mind, uh, I tend to be a guy like, well, let's, let's just see. So my understanding based on what I see is very important. And this is just Kelly uh, is um, obviously um, the, the permit gun permits that that role i did talk to the prior uh the, the existing judge he says that area is it we, we got to keep up with that volume and i said okay i don't even have to argue that you won there and the other part is um a um uh, there was an ask for a law clerk and there was a lot of conversation with the superior courts they don't have law clerks and so forth but on this agenda later on one of our other courts are asking for what a law clerk seventy-five thousand. be consistent I get the funding sources different, but it's all taxpayer dollars. But it's our job, like, no, you got to be consistent. So I put, so put 45 plus 75. What does that get us to? That that's 45, 75. That's what 120. Yes, sir. All right, so that's 120. I'm almost at the end. All right, and so the rest will calculate benefits and all that. Is is that how you'll do that? Will it automatically calculate it, or you got to figure it out? For budget purposes, uh, we just say it's around 45 percent of salary. All right, can you do it, the, the upsell and put it equal to times 1.45? Can I show your column? No. <laughs> I, I enjoyed this better. I enjoyed this. No. All right, so do it that way. No. Because it was important to walk the citizens through what this was. We're just not trying to do an okie doke. It's not to kind of cater to one side versus the other. We, we have to be like judges. We have to rule. Right? Are, are we leaders? Can, can we be like Solomon? Can, can you cast wisdom? Can you do what's right? Right? Can, can you sit at the, the seat of the elders and make a, a solid decision? And so, Jennifer, you know how I do. Like, I don't influence my peers. I'm, I'm just one vote. Right? I respect them. It's one vote. So it was important. Like, no, let me walk them through my logic. So I'm almost there. The benefits, and what was the last one up at the top? It was seven. Did I get them all? And, and oh, then operating costs. Talk to me about operating costs. So the ask was what? What, 138,000. All right, so walk the public through what that ask on based on only what you understand. It's okay. You, you, sure. you have the disclaimer. Um, well, she was very de uh, very detailed in her letter um, as far as the line. She even used our line items. It was 138,000, uh, 50,000 for audit and legal, 10,000 for other professional services. Let me go back to audit and legal. She put in parentheses to pay required court appointed attorneys. Other professional services, she said, has courtroom supplies and technology at ten thousand, office equipment maintenance at three thousand, postage at six thousand, uh, communications, which is the cell phone and data card, at three thousand, advertised uh, advertisement and legal notice uh, for citations at fifteen thousand, 
travel expenses at 7,000, dues and fees at 3,500, training and education at 15,000, general office supplies 10,500, and minor equipment and improvements at 15,000. Cool. Just leave that for now. And that, that, that's for the sake of, of, of my peers, they'll worry out. So I'm almost at the end, I'm sure. So I'm, I'm, did I miss any of the buckets, Jennifer, as I bring to my summary? Any buckets? I uh, know, sir. All right, so 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 here's what we're talking about. So I, I think I've, I've covered basically the, the, the salary component and the one lever that we can move, which is that supplement, which I use as a proxy. What are you giving that current judge? You give this person. You give that person a car, get this person a car. You give that person a law clerk, get that one. It, 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 equality. Now, there is an equitable difference. I get it. Criminal is not the same. I, I get administrative versus criminal. I get it. Right? So there, there is reasonableness. But we did not create this structure. It's our job just to fill in the holes. So my last point, we were talking about the, the work that they're doing. And I, well, I have to address that. Like, no, don't marginalize this person by, OK, now, what I heard in one meeting in the Constitution retreat, well, that she's she going to have her hands full at the first year. Then I heard that once this the, the request was asked, now it's like, OK, oh, y'all going to keep all the work up there with the other judges. You know that she's qualified. You actually can redistribute that, those cases, especially those that are qualified, and push them down. Right? You can optimize, which means you can push more through the more complex cases which you guys are criminally capable of doing. You got more capacity versus dealing with the stuff that, that you, you, you spread the love. But instead, what I'm hearing, you're clogging it up to depra deprave that office. Like, we're not going to give it that. It's not worth that much. Like, okay, but she's worth what she's worth. Now, if you're choosing to, as a system, not to support that, I get it. But I won't buy into the argument. I can't get on SCOTUS side, so all to the public, I got to stay over here now. My job is just to appropriate. All right, so all being said, Jennifer, what is that? No, you just add me all up. I got to get off the flow. That all being added up. Just that column, which is my suggested. I'm just making this up. This is $350,844. That's the difference? The difference from uh, the proposed, what's currently being proposed versus what we just discussed, the changes. Yes. All right. All right. So I'm, I'm just going to frame that there. That That, that is... Um, I know what she asked for, she submitted. Thank you, it's been submitted. It's up to the Board of Commissioners, there's five colleagues to sit here and finalize that. So it's not a, a one or a zero. You never want a one or zero, and you know that any attorney out there, no, you don't want to make it a one or zero, yes or no. There's always got to be compromise. That's my world, right? We, we have to compromise. So that being said, um, so there was a proposed um, that we were trying to, and that was just working through the details along the way. Now we're at the day of the show, so now it's like, okay, now we've got to finalize this. We had some. We didn't have all the information along the way. Um, it, it came in pieces as 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 we. We never had a chance to do this before. There is no model. We got a lot of information. I think now. Uh, I think the board of commissioners are in a place where, guys, this is my suggestion, uh, as is, um, um, in, in that in that what I want to call the suggested bucket. But of course, I'm going to yield the floor, Madam Chair, to allow anybody else to weigh in accordingly on that uh, on that column. Um, but again. Uh, we got now to rebuttal, and um, we'll keep the Roberts Rule of Order. Again, no attacks on each other per se. But again, guys, if there's some other thought against what's been what, what I'm suggesting, I, I'm hoping that you guys will stand with me, take all the noise out, stand with me, but but shape it. By all means, shape it. I yield the floor, Madam Chair, to my peers. Thank you so much, uh, Commissioner Robinson. Uh, Board of Commissioners, certainly, uh, uh, Commissioner Robinson has framed. Uh, his opinion regarding the probate judge's uh, salary and also operating expenses. Do we have um, any commissioner that want to weigh in? This is certainly your time, and I would appreciate uh, appreciate your talent with uh, responding. I see your hand, Commissioner Guider. Yes, ma'am. Um, the state law sets the constitutional base salary of all the the officers the state law now i don't know if um i know once the tax commission becomes ex officio in other words they they do the levy and own taxes they get a little supplement i don't know if the probate judge once it we 
past the population level to where it requires a um, an attorney. I don't know if they get a supplement, but this is certainly something they should address with the legislators because the law is law. Um, a lot of comparison to the sitting judges, the superior court judges, and by the way, this has nothing to do with race, and I get sick and tired of the race uh, uh, issue being dropped every time something comes up with an African American. This has nothing to do with race. This is just the law, and uh, the sitting judges have been there for a while. They have gotten cost of living raises. They started out at the bottom, and they worked up. And so you're not even taking that into consideration. This has nothing to do with a woman either. Uh, I was a woman elected official. Uh, there's probably just as many women probate judges as there are men. And why do we even bring these issues in? It just clouds the issues because it has nothing to do with it. And then... Um, as I said, the state law sets the pay for every constitutional officer, which the probate judge is a constitutional officer. Every five years, they get a 5% in, in, I mean, every four years, every term, they get an additional 5%. The legislature, if they give the state employees raises uh, in during a year, then the constitutional officers get that. The um, magistrate court, they don't get uh, these vital record supplements and our, our fees. They don't, they don't get that. No other judge that I know has a car. And uh, the purpose of giving anybody a car is if it's needed to do your job. I don't know of anything that the probate judge would require going out of the office all the time to use a county car. I was tax commissioner for 28 years. I never had a car. I never asked for a car. The one before me never had a car and the one after me never had a car. And none of the judges have cars because their work is done in the courthouse. But um, they're, they're, they need to talk as far as being a judge, I mean, being a, an attorney to hold this office. They need to talk to their, through their association, to the legislature. And if it, if it requires being an attorney, then maybe they need a supplement of some sort built into their pay. But um, a lot has been said about law clerks. Now, a law clerk is someone that sits in the courtroom as court is being held. And, and the, the other law clerk that we have on the agenda tonight is, some, is a judge, is a juvenile judge and it, it, there's a difference there the probate judge may have a handful of hearings but they're not going to need a full-time law clerk and as far as um, a staff attorney or, or whatever else that was in there she's an attorney she's supposed to know the law <laughs> so why do you need another attorney to tell you what the law says if you are an attorney. But this can, this just is way out of, out of whack. I suggest that we start with the base pay. If y'all wanna take it up to 90,000, big deal. You're talking about less, and this is what we talked about yesterday. And I thought we had a consensus, so I don't even know where this is coming from. There was a, a, a car allowance. Um, even discussed because no other judge if we give her judge you got to be equal as he says we got to give all the judges cars mm -hmm. uh vital records uh that is up to her whether she keeps half of it or all of it 
but we can't just put a hypothetical figure in there of 20,000. We it could be 70,000. Then she's making more than the judges. But uh we uh the other judges, the full-time superior court judges that have been sitting for years on the bench and has uh gotten cost of living raises. Now, as far as her staff, you might want to give her half of what she wanted as far as staff, and then we can address it later on. But we cannot just give anybody that's never stepped foot in an office everything they want. Otherwise, we'd go broke. And, and we do tell the sheriff how many cars he can have. That is part of our job, our only job, is really is to do the the budget the budget that is what we're here for otherwise why don't we let all the elected officials set their own millage rate because who takes the who takes the heat on the millage rate or when taxes are raised the county commissioners not the 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 other departments so i say we need to stick to the initial plan of the base pay plus a small supplement, and I don't even really agree with that. I think we need to stay with the base pay, forget the car allowance. It's up to her about the vital records and, and compromise on some of the staffing. But we cannot do this. This, this, is, this blows a budget, something like this blows a budget because we need to allow her time to work in the office to really determine what she does need. There's no disrespect here. We have done this for years. We've never required uh, or given a new employee or a new elected official everything they wanted. Most of the time, they are not even included in the budget. But, um, we, we've got to be sensible here. This is way off the, <laughs> the grid here. What is uh, what uh, Commissioner Robinson is even implying or hinting at or whatever. Let's stick to the plan. We, we are going to take care of her, but she, if she wants to go and talk to her association, every one of the constitutional officers, they have an association. Work through your association if you think because you're an attorney, you ought to get more money. And I'm not opposed to that. But do it the right way. There's The law is out there. We are following the law. It has nothing to do with slavery or women. And y'all need to get away from that. Y'all are dividing this county with talk like that. And y'all to be ashamed of yourself to even hint at it. And so with that, I yield back. Madam Chair, thank, let me thank, 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 thank you so much, Commissioner Guyman. Uh, Madam Chair, may I have a rebuttal? Yes, you may. And then right. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Uh, well, I got two minutes. Um, real quick, I acknowledge um, I didn't say share cars. I said share staff. We, we give them buckets of money and let them go figure it out. But but duly noted. The second thing is, Madam Chair, we, I, I had for the record because it was there. The car got introduced. Uh, Jennifer knows I asked her to put that there because it was put out there. And so we can take that out, Jennifer. So back out the just for the sake of the conversation, take that off the grid. It, it's not an issue, but it's important here in Douglas County. We codify the conversations. So it, it, that, that's why I had to do it this way. These are my thoughts. Um, the, the 88 is the 88. I think we agree on that. I agree with Madam Guider on versus four people versus two. We agree on that, right? In other words, I'm just saying that, that I, I agree with her statement, not that she agrees with mine, uh, but I agree with her statement. It looks like we're in alignment with that. Um, the operating costs, well, it's just, well, he had operating budget. She has one. She has more responsibility. She actually has real work. Right, we keep saying, well, she's she's not good enough. It's not mean enough. Like, okay, we we drop Superior Court just then day one, boom, same amount of salary. Appointed in, you get inconvenient, right? And I just have a problem with this, and it's like, no, just no, no. We would know Douglas County is changing. I get it. Can't run from it. You got to look at it in its face and say, no, don't do her that way. That it's not good enough. Look at look look at the implications. It's great to be free. 
in your mind. I think it's something neat about not being able to see. Because I don't feel that. It doesn't move me. Like, okay, so back to the back to the task. 88, I got it. Uh, again, the vital records, I just put that as a proxy, Jennifer. We talked about this. That was just a proxy. I just didn't want the public to be okie doke because we had to put something in there as a reasonable number. It could be as high as 70,000 and there's nothing we can do about it. Right? It's irrelevant. She's eligible. Right? So that's not out of hand. He could have had double that. He chose not to. So I'm not, we're not, I can't stand there and punish because he was unaware. Uh-huh. Right? So don't, don't marginalize her, her intelligence to bring this to the table. Like, I'm impressed. Like, okay, no, you can't marginalize her intelligence on this. Uh-uh. Right? So all I'm back to my, my, to my colleagues. That you see, the, the staff, four versus two. I got it. Take out the, the car. The base is the bay. The vital is the vital. That's just a proxy, guys. Those are like user fees. Ain't nothing we can do is go go directly to her. We may not even see them. Sounds like she's going to keep, keep them as 1099. We may not even see them. It may not come to us to do IRS. It has nothing to do with us, but I had to codify it so the public understood the truth. Right? It has nothing to do with us. On the books, take it up with the delegation. The only thing we're talking about simply is this. That $36,000, which is, uh, I'm asking my peers, the magistrate judge gets 36, she gets 36. That, that's the only lever the board of commissioners can move in this conversation beyond the rest that we've already, it seems to be reasonable. That right there. So I guess the other three of y'all need to weigh in on that 36. I mean, I mean, obviously all of it, but the levers that you can move is that one right there. That's more than two minutes, I'm sure I yield to the peers. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you so much, uh, Commissioner Robinson. Uh, Commissioner Carthen, would you like to weigh in? Yes, Madam Chair, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, I just counted up, Madam Chair, uh, an email that we received regarding the 2021 elected county supplements. Mm -hmm. And on that list, we give out about 36 local supplements. Mm -hmm. um, they range from as little as and it's not little because this is all taxpayers' money. So this this is not little. So I don't I don't want to I don't want to say that. But we give away from one thousand six hundred and twenty seven dollars in local supplements, all the way to forty seven thousand seven hundred and eighty four dollars and twelve cents in local supplements. That's a lot of money. So I just want my uh, colleagues, my other commissioners, to know. Uh, there is precedence for giving those supplements. This is on top of the base pay uh, that others make. So, so this for for the probate judge or any judge, it didn't matter what color, what you know, what gender, what um, um, political persuasion, any of that. What's fair, right? So, if she has a base pay, and we give supplements to others within our county. Why would we treat her any differently? I wouldn't do that because I wouldn't want anybody to do my daughters like that. I wouldn't want anybody to do me like that. You know, oftentimes I know politics, you have to take your heart out of it, but I can't take my heart out of it. I was talking to one of our um, um, colleagues last night and, you know, and I told him, I said, you know, I wouldn't even be talking to you if I didn't care. It's because I care, right? It's because I care. We we have a unique opportunity to do what's right because it is right, right? Righteousness, right? So I wouldn't do anything to anybody I wouldn't want done to me. I wouldn't sit up here and go against somebody's AIDS knowing I full well have access to the AIDS, knowing I full well have access to someone all to myself who makes more than the AIDS, knowing I full well don't get out in my community and do other things that I see my other colleagues doing. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't come after somebody. I would never say that. I would never try to talk talk down or, or make light of what someone else does. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't say it has nothing to do with race or nothing to do with gender. If it doesn't, then why bring it up? So for my vote, the probate judge, should definitely get a base salary and she would she should get what the other magistrate judge is getting, which is the thirty six thousand six hundred and eighty eight dollars and thirty two cents at the very minimum. 
with a law degree. Now we do know, and she does know, she can go out and make a whole lot more money in private sector, right? But she signed up to be a public servant and this is taxpayers' money. And the least we could do is this. That's the least we can do for her to be able to run that office. I think what you had on the tab yesterday should stand. If you offered her a car allowance, give her the car allowance. If you offered her the, the base salary and the, the supplement, give that to her. It was on the tab yesterday. I don't even know why we're revisiting this. This was already done. This is a done deal. Why, why are we doing this to this young lady or to anyone that would come in this position? We wouldn't do it. We shouldn't do it. So for my vote, definitely keep it like it was yesterday. Revisit the staff uh, requirements once we ensure that we have what we need at the end of the year. But definitely allow for this to take place. And that's my comment on, on that regarding the probate judge. Thank you, Madam Chair. I yield. Okay, thank you so much, Commissioner Carthen. Commissioner Mitchell, you have any comment? Yeah, I'm over here struggling, but I'm trying to speak and ask at least comment because this has been a, a great situation. So, but what I will just for the, I don't know, this may be something that uh, can. Ken, are you on the line? Because I don't know, I don't think you can answer I, I my question. Oh, okay, thank you. Thank I'm you. I'm here. J just for the record, so I can understand and don't get lost in all of this. Um, can you tell me, uh, let me see. Um, what's the order when it comes to starting with the superior court? Just give me that order first, I guess. That's my first question of the system, of the judicial system. Uh, well, it sort of depends on the matter, but I would say that the well, normal... The normal pecking order is the Supreme Court, then Correct. the Court of Appeals, then the Superior Court, and then some counties have state courts depending upon their size. We we have a state court system that's funded by the county. Uh, there's probate, magistrate. Uh, let me make sure I haven't left anybody out. Juvenile court. So some of it is a is a the system is designed for what is the matter. Uh, meaning what is the subject matter of the jurisdiction. Probate probate has a unique uh, jurisdictional uh, deal relating to vital records, gun permits, estates, deaths. Death, uh, death so, certificates. So, right. And, 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 uh -oh. in, and, in counties, and in counties where there is no state court, uh, some probate courts handle uh, citations and things like that. Where you have a state court, state courts took the misdemeanors out of the probate system for the most part. Uh, so, that, you know, as far as pecking order, I, I want to be careful as a lawyer in saying what's the real pecking order. It, it sort of depends on what the matter is that's before the court, but that's sort of the system. Now, I will tell you just so it's clear. Okay. okay. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, I'm sorry. You, go ahead. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. There's a difference between what is constitutionally based and what is statutorily based. That distinction really just is where the eminence of power comes from. And so when you hear somebody is a constitutional officer, it's just the jurisdiction that emanates from the Constitution or the Constitution delegates to the legislative branch uh, the ability to create other sub uh, Court. So for constitutional purposes, uh, probate judge, tax commissioner, sheriff, and clerk of court, I believe, are the four constitutional officers, meaning their powers come eminently from the Constitution. The other systems come from other places in the Constitution, which either give a judicial branch a function or a legislative branch or an executive branch powers. But I hope I answered your question, and that is, it sort of depends. No, no, I, yeah, <laughs> I think you, I think you've done well, but I mean, continue. I mean, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm getting here. I'm going somewhere. Uh, so, so you know, before, if I had a probate court matter that needed a trial, and it was a not, you were in a jurisdiction without a lawyer as a judge, you try the case there. And then you have what's called de novo appeal to the superior court. So actually, the superior court 
is elevated above the probate court as a court of original jurisdictions, ju jurisdiction for appeals emanating from probate court, and then you go directly to the Supreme Court. When you have Article VI judge, those judges, that means they're a lawyer, they have more expanded jurisdiction. Those, those judges can try certain matters, and the appellate jurisdiction depends on the type of matter. So I hope that sort of, it, it would be hard to say that Superior Court isn't above the probate court, right. because for some matters, the Superior Court is a direct access appeal from a probate matter. Uh, understood. Understood. And, and 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 what I'm trying to get at is the true duties that we're all trying to say, what this consists of, and not to minimize her duties and or responsibilities because as a uh, legal attorney it, and passing the bar is a different layout. We got a different ball game that I think we're going to be playing with this particular probate court duty. Can I correctly say that, Ken? I think the role is expanded under Article Six when you have a judge that is a lawyer. And that's what I thought. And that's what I thought. And and I, and I think we're, we're trying to get somewhere that's reasonable. But if I'm hearing my colleagues, we've actually gave a range of supplements to any and all judges and or just looking at the supplements. And I think I heard from Commissioner Carson I think I heard that correctly. So if I'm correct in saying we've done this supplement, just answering that part of the, the, the Q&A, we've done that with most judges that we have already, correct? Or do you know that? Well, I want to be careful because some of your charts, I don't want to say they're, they're misleading, but let me, let me think, tell you what I think I know. And if Jennifer Hallman can correct me on, on judges that, uh, base comes from the state, like a superior court judge, they have a base pay plus uh, uh, salary increases, longevity increases, et cetera. And then the county, in addition to that, in order to, attr to attract talent, has given supplements. On state court judges, it depends on the legislation because state court judges are fully uh, funded by county governments for the most part. So it's possible, and I think our our uh, our legislation says something like this, but I haven't looked at it in years. But when the state court was created, that position was given some base that is tied to to superior court basis. And as the years have gone by with supplements, it, at some point it was determined, and I don't know the exact date it was determined, that the the state court judges pay need to be increased to track the supplements somewhat that the superior court judges get. So it, it, although it's fully funded by the county, and I don't know if Jennifer, is Jennifer Hallman still on the line? Oh, yes, I'm still here. Yeah, Jen, Jen, Jennifer, I'm, I, am I correct in saying the entire sum paid to a state court judge is all county funds, correct? That is correct. And so I think their base is based on a percentage of the Superior Court judges, but they came back when that court was created to the county and said, look, the Superior Court judges get a supplement. We're tied to a base. The state really never changes the base, but they, if you go look at the law books for years and years and years, it always looked like a Superior Court judge's base was like, and I'm gonna throw a number out, I don't remember, but let's say it was 98,000. But in fact, with all the little tack-ons, it actually had increased. But on the books, it was tied to a specific number. So what I recall is at some point in time, the state court judges came and said, y'all need to bump us, commiserate to make up the spread on the salary supplements. And so while that number went up, it, they don't get an actual supplement. They get a full number from the county. It really is serving as a supplement to the local legislation. Jennifer Hallman, am I correct on that? I believe what you said is correct. <laughs> okay, sorry, I'm, no, I'm rambling. So uh, the bottom line is this. I think many of the judges, and, and I want to be careful because I don't know specifically about the juvenile court judge, but I think many of the judges are either receiving a salary or an adjustment locally to the local legislation that created the, the judgeship, like state court, if I'm not mistaken. 
I got don't it. Know, and I, think, I don't know about juvenile court. That's the only one I can't recall. Right. And, and and that supplement is the at the wheel of, of using this Douglas County at, at, at Yes, sir. Just like the DA and the Solicitor General, y'all's addition to their salary, especially the DA. The DA is paid by the state of base, and I think y'all give a salary supplement to the DA. I think the Solicitor General is tied to legislation that tied to the state court judges. So when the state court judges got an adjustment from local funds because they're fully funded by the county, so did the Solicitor General, if I'm not mistaken. And there's some percentage that's tied to the state court judges. Did I lose you, Commissioner Mitchell? Commissioner Mitchell? Hmm. Okay. Ma Madam, Madam Chair, y'all heard what I said, correct? I, I think I lost Commissioner Mitchell. Okay, yes, we heard what you said. And uh, certainly, do I see your hand, Commissioner Guider? Or was that from previous, previous time? Okay, well, we'll move on. I, I guess I will chime in in the discussion. I'm sorry. I, I, I had my microphone on. Could I just put some numbers out there real quick? Mm -hmm. I promise it won't be over a minute. Okay. Okay, first of all, supplements are not given to the constitutional officers, so I don't know. Um, this is going to be an exception. Um, Judge Caldwell makes who's been there for 19, since the 1980s, makes far less than what we're even talking about here, far less, just a little over what the base pay is for uh, the probate judge. Judge Camp, um, and I'm t their office does like tens of thousands of uh, cases, and uh, Judge Camp makes... Uh, she's going to make more than Judge Camp after 20 years. Madam Chair, Madam Chair, point of order. Should, mm -hmm. should we be saying names? I don't think that that's right. Or or Attorney Bernard, but, is that? But they, well, I'll just say the magistrate judge then. Yeah. But, uh, well, it, it would probably be better to say the position, but I, I think these are a matter of public record, but I, I understand the, the concern. But um, anyway, the magistrate judge uh, asked for a law clerk, and she was denied with ten, you know, ten thousand cases. So we're getting way out of whack. Uh, I assure you, some of this that's uh, being proposed tonight is going to cause an influx of people coming to us, say, "Hey, you got to change mine because you change her. She's making more than I have. I am." Well, I've been on the bench for 20 years, you know. Uh, you, you've got to be consistent, and everybody started out at, at the base rate. But um, to our knowledge, the constitutional officers uh, here in Douglas County have not been getting a supplement. Okay. Thank you so much, Commissioner Guider. I just wanted to correct you. We do have one Constitution officer that is receiving a local supplement. I'm looking at the chart here. Had an opportunity while we were, uh, while everyone else was deliberating, I pulled the chart just to compare for comparative analysis reasons. And certainly, you know, um, I always stand on the wings of equity and fairness, and I'm and that's what I'm looking at now. So I'm, I appreciate. The, the longevity of the uh, deliberations tonight that allowed me to just really wrap my mind around uh, what is the right thing to do. Um, certainly, um, Commissioner Carthen, it's just one thing that you mentioned that you wanted me to, uh, you thought that should be added in here. I looked at all the judges and no one has car allowances. And I certainly put the cart before the horse when I had that conversation 
with the uh, with the probate judge, and I believe she has excused me, but I'm certainly not taking my eye off that local supplement because we have um, a majority of our judges are receiving, uh, in fact, all of them are receiving a supplement. So uh, I, this is the time and the place to consider that supplement and certainly wanted to make it very clear to the citizens that the $88,000 dollars at base pay is certainly state stature stature so the uh, board of commissioners uh really have nothing to do with the changes that's something that we would have to take before the legislation uh also the vital records are certainly a, a benefit uh certainly uh, a nice uh, benefit and perk but it's still something that i mentioned uh, early in the game that it's it's not stable it it may yield some and then one year it may not yield based on if you can look at just the, the the years from 2015 to 2020 there certainly has been a gap uh maybe vital records bringing in 5700 to as far as much as 71,400. Uh, but i i don't want to focus on that i want to focus on the issue at hand which is the equity um uh, the supplement in fact it didn't know anything about vital records or any other type of uh uh, fees that I know that our constitutional officers are usually uh, privy to. Uh, I believe the Superior Court clerk uh, get uh, some, some type of supplement, not, uh, well, not supplement, but some type of fees other than, I believe hers are related to passports. And then you have the tax commissioner. So I wanted to move all that off the grid. I wanted to focus on what uh, would, would be uh, beneficial and what would be fair to the probate judge here. Uh, and certainly I'm, I'm, I'm not looking at degrees, but which degrees are very important because she's an attorney. So we don't want to dismiss that uh, by no means. But I'm looking at, uh, we have 90,000 citizens here in Douglas County. Uh, we've exceeded the threshold, but also I'm noticing on uh, just the local supplement for elected officials in Douglas County, there's a dash uh, by probate judge. And that's just an opportunity for the Board of Commissioners to certainly uh, take into to consideration. Uh, we had some earlier discussions um, regarding that uh, supplement and uh, probably about two weeks ago, and it was about 36,000, was it $36,688, which is really uh, is is really a, a, a reasonable range for, for the supplement. So we need to make sure that the citizens uh, get all the information so they can uh, form their own opinions. I believe at this point they were thinking that that this elected official uh, probate judge judge is coming in asking for something, but she's not really asking for anything else uh, anymore that what's that's being provided to other judges. So I'm looking at this local supplement. That's the only thing I'm focusing on. And what I've done, I've sat here and looked at the entire list and every judge is receiving a supplement. She is a judge. I don't want to dismiss that, but I, we have two judges. Let me back up. We have two judges that I noticed that are not receiving, and they're our state judge judges, but our magistrate, our chief magistrate judge, our uh, superior court judges are receiving, and then we have some investigators. Uh, we have a couple of DA uh, investigators. In fact, one of our our external judges, uh, which I know probably it's, it's not full time here, which is a magistrate judge, and certainly I will refrain from, from names, but they receive a supplement is pretty healthy. Uh, it's not as right at that 36,000 threshold, but it's very close. So I would just like to ask this board to consider what we discussed two weeks ago. We, we did bake that 36,000 in there. And, and uh, that's something that we want to hold to because now, and I wish, uh, and this information certainly is open records, but I would like to, if I wish I could show that column where um, we have probably, as Commissioner uh, Carthen mentioned, probably about at least 20, 25 supplements on this list of elected, elected officials and it's local supplements. So, just that's what I'm focusing on. And my position is I wanted to remove the car allowance because I, I put the cart before the horse, not realizing uh, that all the no other judges get that supplement uh, for when I say car allowance, I want to remove that. But that local supplement is 
is something that I'm standing firm on, and I believe that uh, this is what she should be eligible for. It's called the local supplement, uh, supplemental component. And uh, to answer your question, Commissioner Guider, we do have a constitutional officer receiving supplemental, uh, local supplement. So I'm not sure if uh, Commissioner Mitchell has returned yet, but that's just where I stand. Um, and I, I, I'm not sure if he's back. Commissioner Chairman, Mitchell. Chairman, I, I do have Commissioner Mitchell on speakerphone right now. Okay, I wanted to, Commissioner Mitchell, I was just elaborating until you returned and was just actually stating my position as I'm looking at the documentation in my hand. I'm looking at it. I have the opportunity to compare uh, notes, look at every local supplement, and I stand on the firm, uh, uh, on the wings of equality and equity and the Equal Pay Act of 1963. All those things are very, very important to me, but I have the documentation and I'm looking at it, and I'll be willing to share this documentation with any citizen that want to have a conversation with this Board of Commissioners. I'm, I'm only looking at the documents, and I'm looking at the facts. Facts are very important uh, as we proceed with uh, making, uh, taking our positions and making a decision regarding our probate, our newly probate judge. Commissioner Mitchell, I want to yield to you. And, and Madam Chair, I, I think this is kind of as I think one of our earlier commissioners stated, being a dead horse, I, I, I think it's time to call the question and move forward. I don't know if you guys can hear me or not, though, so I'll leave it there. Okay, and and certainly, uh, Commissioner, this uh, this is just one component of the budget of, of the budget, but I just want to follow up with each commissioner and just see where you are, uh, Commissioner Guider. I, I would encourage you, if you could, Mark, if you could send. Commissioner Guider, this uh, supplement form, she may have already seen it. I just want to make sure I'm looking I'm looking at the facts and uh, I want to be able to address it, uh, and, and it, in it in a fair and equitable manner. And I'm looking at it. So um, what we initially t discussed two weeks ago at that thirty six thousand six hundred eighty eight dollars thirty two cents for the supplemental local supplement is not unreasonable. Uh, Commissioner Carthen, are you? Uh, can you work with me on, and I certainly talk, spoke with the uh, probate judge. In fact, she said, Madam Chair, I didn't ask for that. That was something that I was wanting to yield to her. But now, since I, I didn't look at the list, and now I see it that the uh, none of the judges are, are being allowed that uh, car allowance, allowance. We do have our DA and our solicitors uh, that do receive it, but they are more likely to go out in the field. Uh, in their positions. So if you could just uh, yield to me on that, with me on that, or stand with me on that, I would uh, greatly appreciate it. I believe that's something that I noted that Commissioner Robinson indicated too as well. He would be willing to just uh, certainly yield on the uh, taking out the car allowance component. Uh, Commissioner Guy, uh, Robinson, I certainly don't want to speak for you, but I believe I, I, I was taking copious notes when you were speaking. Is that something you're still standing with or you've changed your mind? I, I, I dropped off somewhere along the way. We got to fix this IT. This is ridiculous. Uh, but OK, um, I'm, what I'm hearing then, I came on to tell you that are we, we're saying that for the supplement, 30, 36,000 is in. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, that, yeah that's that's what, what I'm doing. I've actually ha I have the actual document before me. Uh, regarding the supplement for local uh, elected officials, and I've identified that uh, all of our judges uh, primarily receive a local supplement, except two. I've just noticed just that there's a, uh, it's two, our state judges, I don't see a local supplement there, but I do see some other type of supplements that are available to them as well. So, but what I'm doing is focusing on local supplements only, and I want to stay right there. So that right. thirty-six thousand that we talked about uh, a couple of weeks ago, I believe it was about two weeks ago at our last uh, board meeting, I I believe is sufficient uh, for uh, the the uh, and should be, uh, and I'm standing firm on that. Thirty-six thousand dollars, six hundred eighty-eight uh, dollars is appropriate uh, in terms of supplement. And I, I did respond to Commissioner Guido. She said she didn't believe any constitutional officers are receiving supplements. I'm looking at the document here. They are. Um, not not all of them, but I 
I, you sound like you had a question for me, I'd, Commissioner. I'd like to you know asked me to. You asked me to speak, and I wanted to speak. So you okay? Let speak. me let me let me give the floor to yield the floor to Commissioner Robinson, then I'll come back to you, uh, Commissioner Guider. Right. Commissioner. So, yep. Let, let's get on through. All right. So I heard. I'm just going back to base. We're not touching. So I heard thirty-six thousand. I'm still back to eighty-eight thirty-six. Um, I hear take the car out. That's fine. Um, um, the vital we have nothing to do with that. And um, the, I guess the question as it relates to the budget, because we get along, is are we going to do two people? Uh, I don't seem like it, it's much love or support for the four. So it's either two or zero or one. Um, I'm sorry, Commissioner Mitchell, if I missed you. I fell off on you like you normally do. But I think we just got to settle these buckets, guys. So it sounds like there's at least an agreement for 36 um, between Madam Chair and Madam Carthy. Henry, I did not hear you, sir, um, and where you stood on that. But then you got these other components. So. I'm sure we're just trying to speed through this for the rest of your budget. I yield the floor. Thank you. Okay. Commissioner uh, Guider, I believe you asked me a question. You wanted to know which uh, Constitution officer, is that what you're asking me? Yeah, which one gets the supplement? Uh, the chair. And that's the Constitution officer. Uh, his was a unique situation because he'd worked for the chair for so long that when he took office, he was making less than what his uh, chief deputy was making, and we had to adjust that because of that. But um, you're saying mm -hmm. that uh, with the probate judge, she's going to get 124,000 with with the supplement and the base pay, and then a 70,000 possibility for the vital uh, fees. So she's going to be making more than the judges that have been sitting on the bench for many years because they don't get uh, fees. So this is uh, this is wrong. But, uh, OK, I'll let you finish. But anyway, um, y'all going to do what you're going to do anyway. Well, so. let, let, let me let me actually pivot and respond to your question. You have your tax commissioner who is a constitutional officer. What I want to do, I don't want to mix apples and oranges. She's a judge, so I want to just keep that in play. But I can pivot to constitutional officers. Your tax commissioner has a, an ability to collect uh, taxes uh, uh, at the end of the year. You know, you all get some additional. You've been a tax commissioner, and I'm not sure what your choice was. But you, you there was some uh, additional uh, monies available to uh, there are to our tax commissioners. I believe uh, there's some funding that comes to the sheriff department. You're we have judges. We're comparing judges. Okay, so we can we can we can we can compare judges. Uh, we can do that as well. But I'm just saying there's no supplement, and and also vital fees are not. Uh, they're not. They're volatile. They're they they may vary from one year to the next. You would see, she would she agree to uh, just keep half of them? <clears throat> That's that's a question that we certainly uh, and she's not available right now and and right now the the proposal on the floor she wanted 100 percent, but in 2015 commissioner only uh, the total vital fees uh, for I mean your vital record fees was 5700 dollars 2016 6300 dollars 2017 10 thousand and I don't want to focus on vital. Look at seven. Look at 2020, ma'am. Yeah, I, I see and 2020. 2019, and well, add that to the 124,000. And I see that, but but guess what? She's not taking office into 2021. So I'm not sure what's going to happen in 2021. And I know our our sitting probate judge has $35,000 that he'll be taking with him. Uh, as he or, uh, leave this county, and I'm just saying this this right this vital records fee is something that's very uh, fluid. It moves back and forth, so it, uh, it you know it just depends. So that's what I'm saying. I don't want to focus on vital records fees because this is this is not dependable. I mentioned that early in the game. I said vital records you may bring in six or seven hundred, and then next I mean six or seven thousand, and next year you may it may drop, but. Uh, that's the cost of doing business, and that's the cost. That's what she signed up to run for. Probably, if, if all of us knew that vital record fees were available to us, probably all of us would have signed up to run for that position. And then the same thing as your superior uh, court of clerk, uh, the same thing. They they uh, generate dollars off of passports. So, but I'm focusing on equity. 
I'm focusing on the local supplement. That's the only piece I'm looking at. I'm not looking at that vital uh, records. And that's because it is volatile. It may, you may bring in 71, 71,000 one year and the next year you may bring in 5,000. How do we make that up, Commissioner? I'll, I'll, I'll allow you to respond. You can get a mean of it. Uh, start with 2015 and uh, go to 2020 and get a mean. We've looked at we, we've looked at a mean average, and right now that's about twenty thousand. If we add those up, that's twenty thousand dollars. I don't, I can't see on my screen if if Jennifer could scroll down some. I would start with two thousand seventeen and go up. But anyway, y'all are gonna do what you're gonna do, and you're doing it just for your reasons. And you know I don't agree with it, and I will not agree with it. So it is what it is. So we're wasting time. We're wasting the uh, public's time. Uh, they they're forming their own opinion. So uh, yeah. just just go forward. Okay, Commissioner Carthen, you want to chime in before I go any further? You want to chime in? No, I think I've said all that needs to be said. Okay. Uh, Board of Commissioners, you have any other comments regarding any uh, other areas of the budget? Uh, yes, Madam Chair, just for clarity, for the budget only. So it sounds like we're satisfied on this, that we're, we're at least there's three people who agree that 36 is the supplement for the probate. Um, the ED is state law. We have nothing to do with that. We have nothing to do with the vital records. And we took out the car. Did we take it out? We took the car out. Yeah, uh, we did. All right, yeah. so take the car out. Um, did you settle on the number of employees? Did we say two or four did she ask? I don't think there was a lien for the four. Is it two or wait? I believe you and Commissioner Guider uh, weighed in at, at the same amount of two About employees. Two. And where do you stand? Where do you stand? Uh, two. I believe that's appropriate right. too. And that's, uh, I heard of, and again, I want us to focus on, I know we all in vital records. We all over the place. Yeah. We need to focus on local supplement. Um, sure. We're, we're moving for the whole budget though. I got it. So Jennifer, Jennifer Hallman, in your numbers, you got to add this up. 88 to 36. Uh, we took the car out. The impact for two employees, not four. Right. And then we've got the operating at the top. And we're going to just, it sounds like we're going to let that be as is. That is the budget for the probate court elect. All right, so you got to freeze that. I'm just trying to freeze that component, Madam Chair. So Jennifer, did Director Hallman, did you get get this? I summarized it. 88, the 36 that we talked about matches the magistrate. We took the cars out. Uh, the probate, I mean, excuse me, the um, vital records has, you know, obviously that's just a zero because we're not budgeting for that. That's fees that comes in like user fees. And then obviously you've got Two people times the 1.45 will get you your benefits, and then ultimately you have the um, finally the um, the operating costs are what they were. Leave it at that. So what's that total number that you'll use when you get to the end of this this budget that we can adopt? Uh, the amount that would be um, the change in the budget would be three hundred and forty six thousand forty four dollars. All right, that's the difference. Okay. okay. All right. Madam Chair, oh. I yield back for you to move to the other parts of the budget okay. or anything else. Any, any other parts of the budget, uh, Board of Commissioners, up for discussion? Jennifer, could you just keep moving? And again, I encourage the citizens, if you want to chat with me, I have the document before, before with me regarding the local supplement, and we can sit down and chat and have a cup of coffee. But I just want to make it clear that I'm a woman that stands on firm on equality. That's just very important to me. And I'm looking at this local supplements and there, uh, and, and thank you so much, uh, Commissioner Carthen. I had mine, but I pulled it out and wanted to study it a little further. And I, I'm, I'm complete and I can sleep tonight because I'm looking at this local supplement and I want to make sure that we're fair across the board, equitable. And, uh, and I thank my peers for uh, working with me to remove the car because again, that would not been have, would have been consistent with our judges. So thank you and we'll move on to the other parts of the budget. Um, any other uh, parts of the budget, Board of Commissioners, that you have some concerns about or questions? Jennifer, could you lead us in discussion? Uh, yes, ma'am. Other than that, um, with that change, I just make mention that um, unassigned fund balances 
at 10.8 million, which is 10.92% of the expenditures. Okay, close to that 11% marker, but I know uh, because we have to make these adjustments. All right. All right. But that's okay. Anything else, board? Yeah, so we got 10.8. This is important. Back to our credit is good. This budget is not taking to effect that we have a 1% to 2% to growth year over year. That's not factored in, right? This is a tight budget, right? It's lean, right? We didn't factor in growth. We kept it flat. We're going to be okay, right? So we're at 10.8. All right, we probably, I, 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 I assume that we wouldn't go less than 10.5. So now I'm happy that we didn't go below 10.5. So we got about 300,000. But for the sake of the moment, we're good. It seems like, Jennifer, is that everything in then based on just what you've codified over? Is that it? That's the bottom number, 10.8? Uh, 10.9, yes, sir. All right. Uh, Commissioner Mitchell, I'm sorry, sir. Did you, are you good? Is there something outstanding? Um, is, is the task commissioner whole? I was not involved in that conversation. Is that whole? Do we need to address that now before we move on, sir? Commissioner Mitchell, do you have any, any further comment? Hey, I think Mark Kenny Robinson spoke on the task commissioner. And I'm, I apologize. I can't hear you. You guys can hear me now. Can, can y'all hear Commissioner Mitchell? He's on my speakerphone yes yes we can hear you commissioner uh commissioner oh, okay okay but 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 okay so where where are we with the tax commissioner and the software packaging that's needed to kind of you know to, to efficiently be effective and what he does in gfi and the uh, tax assessor's office so any idea where that is and i apologize i, I can't see and hear what you guys are actually doing but where are we with that commissioner uh we are that those are the item which uh, is the uh regarding the software and the system for the tax commissioner is uh, uh preserved and parked with the fair force because they were the first two brs that we really felt that are urgent in this budget and uh march we we will proceed uh, when uh, the you say what I thought. So what I'm getting at though, and probably more than Jennifer I'm here, but if I'm hearing correctly, we delayed it to March, but the request, as I stated, we they they know where the need is. They know where to go and get this done. Um, it may not be that it, it actually happened closer to March. But are we delaying it to not happen until then, or are we having uh, this request talking to the tax commissioner and, and, and asking the guys there that request is needed now to be prepared um, for that January, March, or January, February? But if you're saying, if I'm hearing correctly, that that money is not there, or is it there? Which one is it? That's my first question. Jennifer. Currently, as far as it being funded in the proposed 21 budget, no, it is not included. It is on the list to revisit in March. No, and that's where the problem comes in. You can't do that. To have a down payment to get that, that stuff moving, that's where you're going to have a problem. If we're going to wait until March to even to, to provide a down payment to get the software started, to get the software developed, then I think you're going to be way off on, on the collection rate. But I'm not the tax commissioner. I don't know if he can speak to that. But uh, I don't know if he's on the line. But I don't think, I think you're going to be, you're going to be hurting yourself more than helping yourself than to have that funding available now. And it may not give you end of January or closer to February. But he's got to get moving. You can't, you can't wait until um, March to start the process. But um, that's, that's where that problem is. So, so to answer your question, uh, Vice Chairman Robinson, um, I'm just, I'm concerned about that. Uh, and looking at it, you know, looking at his budget, the numbers have already been cut. I think I heard part-timers cut and something else was cut. About another $300,000 was cut if I heard it correctly earlier. Jennifer, did I not hear that? That some things were taken out, like 
uh, part time and cut out of his budget. Um, oh God, I can't remember. There was some other stuff, and I apologize, guys. I'm just struggling trying to keep up with you guys. Uh, yes, sir, you are correct. Um, there was no overtime placed in anybody's budget except for public safety. So that was, um, uh, I, I believe he um, did not have any overtime. And then um, the 8.25% operating cut for the tax commissioner's um, office was 24774 you. I'm just telling you, we are setting ourselves up, especially in that in, in our in our highest uh, revenue stream for failure. But um, I, that would be the one area that I would say, guys, take a take another look and and, uh, and make some adjustments there. And I and I apologize, I can't really see and get with you guys on it. But yeah, we we're we're way off on that end, guys. With the software and everything else. To include the software itself, mm -hmm. and, I, and I'll yield the floor and, and listen okay. for comments, and I hope I won't lose you guys. Madam Chair, now rebuttal, yes. Commissioner Mitchell, yes. to respond. Yes. All right. Hey, hey, can somebody quit with the like? There's a lot of clacking. Can y'all cut that out? It, I, it was cutting me off hearing Henry, Commissioner Mitchell, real quick. So what I'm hearing you say, uh, and I agree, guys. You got to re recognize the tax commissioner is revenue. It, it's revenue. Right, that drives the engine. Where the spin, but that's the engine to go get it. I mean, what what organization doesn't get it? It, it sells people out there to go get that, and, and those in the private sector that business development. This, this guy goes out here and he collects that money. That's important, right? So the handicap that that makes this a slower come in. You're 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 undermining you're 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 actually um, undermining yourself by not fully funding that. Right. It's all about like when we sit there, well, you didn't get the money in, well, you didn't put the, what was required to get it done. Right. Your, your, your technology infrastructure is dying. They had a heart attack last year. Why are we acting new? And you're about to go back through the pandemic. Round three. Right. And we're going to sit here. All of us and pretty much drop tonight. Really. Like, you know, with a part time help desk. Right. The server, everything's collapsing. So I think to that point, I, I think I'm with you. Uh, I think, that, but, but are they really ready? I don't know where they are at. So Jennifer, I got I got to stay within the budget. Does an additional three hundred thousand dollars back into his budget that takes it down what to ten five? Madam Chair, that's my bottom limit. Ten point five. What, what's the difference? I'm yes, to, if you included a three hundred thousand dollar increase, um, it would take the uh, fund balance to ten point five eight percent. Right. All right, so that's, Commissioner Mitchell, I know we took out contingency, but all those things, but does that help? In other words, you got 200,000, maybe as your down payment, make it move along. You've got some other things that were miscellaneous for, I mean, that's all we got. You're at the bottom of the budget. So it's 300 and that's it. You can't go higher. And we're at the bottom of the, the food chain, if that makes sense. You you can't go lower. So I'm asking you, Wayne, do you need anything for this? Well, or here's, here's what I don't know. I don't know what that magical number, I don't know if it's three as a down or five. That I, I wish I could tell you that, but I don't know the, you know, the software company that, that's being, because uh, there's a couple of not that are being proposed, and what, what their upfront fee will cost to, say, get it started. Now, you may use, let's say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say half a meal. You may use that to get started, but you may not, you may, may not be fully funded or, or, or need the rest until March. Give or take. I'm not sure. It's right. just a guess. But I think we need to be I think that we need a little bit more ready than that, than, than the three. But I, I get it. It's tight. And, and I don't know um, which is the better route to take to say trim back on the fund balance to, to accommodate, to be ready. Or let's do it this way. Yes, you, you can say three or five. But if needed, if, if the tax commissioner, GIS, and, and tax assessors need it to kind of move that project forward, then we'll have to dip. No questions asked. It'll have to be that way. You can't cause it, it, you can't move. And remember, that's your highest revenue stream that's coming, at least with it, the collection rate. If you want to collect, you've got to pay to collect. Yep. Un understood. So to, to, to that point, just to clarify, again, what we got right now, right, they, they've, they've had time to submit we, all we're doing is appropriating. We only can work with what we can work with. 
right? We need to make accommodations. Again, we, we can get started, get through this first quarter. There's a revisit. We have to, we have some savings of uh, the one to 2% kicks in. So I, I'm, I'm confident we're going to be okay, but we just need a proxy for a number today. We always can change our mind. We can always amend the budget, but for right now, um, three, I mean, that's, that's, I mean, three or no. I would say to be safe, uh, five would be safe if needed. And at least it's there. So if he needed to move forward, he can versus three. And he has to come back to this board and ask to, to give up at least another two just to kind of get it started. So I would say appropriate five. And, and I'm guessing at that because I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. So I'm, I'm really hoping that that would be sufficient with the tax solution, but I don't know. And I wish he was on the line to say, no, we need to start here. We got to have some kind of startup money. I'm on the line. I'm on the line now. Yeah. All right. So Hello? You know, we're, we're still on the floor. No, hold on. Thank you, Greg. But I'm, I'm going to finish this out. All right. I'm hearing you, Commissioner Mitchell. So um, um, we're in the middle of the debate. Go ahead, sir. Okay. Well, that would be my, that would be my number to say, kick it off with five. And it'll be as needed because if you don't need it to kind of move it, then he'll use two. He'll use one. It depends on the company itself and the, and the redesign to fit those three departments. All right. So, so for the sake of the moment, and, and, and to Task Commissioner Baker, I appreciate you, but right now we're in the middle of, of this moment, and I, we're, we're trying to get to the end as a framing. Uh, my peers, three. we're at the bottom of this. It's three or five. You guys have got to weigh in. That, that, that five will take us below 10.5. We're getting tight. But I need y'all to wait in now. So we all we're doing is appropriate. He can come back. It's not a problem. If he has to do all of it, we'll deal with that. But for right now, right? I mean, it, it's just right now. It's just sort of a, a an assurance. But we don't have to. I mean, we're pretty much with five. You're, you're pretty much funding six percent of it, right? So it's sort of like okay, that's that's more than a down payment of twenty five percent or twenty percent on a mortgage. And so I, I think we were trying to, you know, again, we're just giving a framework. All right, we're giving a framework. So, Madam Carthy, weigh in, guys. We gotta get through this. Yeah. Just, this is the last one we gotta get to. When she can call the vote on the budget, we can move on. So, I'm sorry, I yield, Madam Chair. Back to okay. You. Okay. Thank you so much, Commissioner Carthy. You wanna weigh in? If not, I'll weigh in. Uh, I, 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 I like the idea and the concept of we're just trying to frame the budget. Now we can always amend. If uh, the tax commissioner seems to come and say, you know what, I'm going out and I would like to start in January or end of January, February, we can amend. So we're just framing at this moment to uh, to allow us to certainly uh, keep the balance, the budget balanced. And that's just my position um, at this time. And I, I, I hear the three or five, but neither for me. I'm just asking if we could just keep it, keep it tight where it is now. And certainly we can amend if the if the tax commissioner decides he want to come on and, and and say in July I mean not July but January the end of January or either February we could just make adjustments and it certainly will not be a punitive moment you know when he come before the board we already have that in in our minds it'll be parked that we know if he decided to move quicker than what we thought or faster so oh, that's my position you said zero uh, Commissioner Mitchell said five I said three Madam Carthen please weigh in we got to get to some type of commonality. Weigh in. Okay, we're a minute. Chairman Jones, do I have yes. the floor? Yeah, you yeah. have the floor. We have the floor. Okay. All right. So we are talking about what 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 amount are we talking about, Chairman Jones? Where are we with the tax commissioner? Because I heard that he needed uh, the uh, at least the the postage to mail out stuff for us. I know we're going to address his request for the other budget item, which was the technology. So we will address that. So that's the item we're coming back to. But what are we weighing in on now? Three, five, three, five, what? Like I, this is <laughs> this is going on. Like this yeah. is. <laughs> I know it's going on too long. But anyway, uh, we're just weighing in on the, to, to allow the tax commissioner just to have those dollars already baked in, in this budget to, uh, for, I guess, the beginning uh, stage of purchasing his system if he wanted to go before uh, the, the second week in March. And I, that's when our books closed, the second week of March. Uh, but he may want to, we wanted to bake, I believe Commissioner Mitchell wanted 500000 Commissioner uh, Robinson recommended three 
300,000. I recommended zero because I'm saying he can come back and we'll amend the budget if we had to. And we're waiting on you to weigh in and then Commissioner Guider. We can just go from there. If I'm going to weigh in, the priority would be for us to give him what he needs in his budget to actually carry out what he needs to do that he addressed the board with tonight. That, that, that right there. That's what we need to really be considering. Uh, I'm sorry I couldn't truly hear Commissioner uh, Mitchell, um, but the technology piece, I believe we can take care of. The other piece that he needs and that he advocated for himself tonight was those buckets that he needed. Um, and I think I believe D Director Holloman said that no one got overtime in their buckets except for the safety. So um, I guess he can come back and address that. But definitely give him his postage and the part time that he needs to get the 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 work of the office done. So that's where I am on that. Okay, just to, to, to reiterate for you, Commissioner Carthen, he has dollars in his budget uh, for for postage. I believe Jennifer, do you have that number for the uh, tax commissioner for postage? And certainly we can tweak it. What's 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 your number, Jennifer? Uh, for postage, right now, what's being proposed is $83,512. So what, what do you utilize on postage this year as, you know, we use as a part of our guide? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, let me pull that up. And, and while she's while she's doing that, if we could just this 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 is why we have the budget hearings and the budget and all of the constitutional offices and all of the par department heads come before us. We've got to do a better way of making sure that when we get to this point, we're not doing this on the floor. There's a better way to do this, a smoother way to do this. You know, you, the county administrative finance director, get together with the comments and everything and then present so that we won't have constitutional officers coming before us saying, hey, you cut this out, you didn't do this. We can do better. I think our constitutional officers deserve better and the taxpayers of this county deserve better. And I, I won't uh, beg to differ with you. However, this information was brought forth today uh, at the ninth hour, Commissioner Carthen, I appreciate the finesse with the, system, with the uh, citizens, but I'm being very candid. This information just hit the radar this, today. And certainly we're going to take the time with the tax commissioner. I didn't have any other uh, constitutional officers come before uh, us today. And I want to just really give him the time and uh, the uh, ability to just express some of his concerns. But other than that, I apologize that it's on the floor. But of course, I want to make sure we deal with it before this uh, budget is passed. Because again, I want to uh, present, a, I, my goal is to present a balanced budget to this administration. So therefore, Jennifer, if you could just tell us what's missing uh, as far as over t overtime, you said uh, there's, no, which that's across the board because we're going into, a, again, a pandemic. 2020, yeah, same thing. So we're using the same guide as we used in 2021 with the 2020 budget. So mm -hmm. what, what what do we need for overtime, Jennifer? And uh, what did we, did we add anything in his budget for overtime? Uh, no, ma'am, because nobody... Except okay. for public okay. sector. What about part time? what about part time? Part time um, right now is being proposed at thirty seven thousand five hundred and thirteen dollars. Okay. So what was this part time before? And I'm, this is again, this is a very un, unusual year. I believe, commissioners, we wanted to use twenty twenty as our guide for budgeting uh, going into this year. Certainly, we cannot go back to twenty nineteen at this particular point. If not, we'll be right back where we started. The goal was to trim this budget down, keep it flat, and make sure that we could get across the river this particular year, which is 2021, which we have no idea what's uh, uh, hovering around us. Again, I said the surge is up and the numbers are up. And then we also, this, this vaccine is not responding to a new strain of a virus. So we, we just try and to just double down on expenses. A lot of the departments are back actually still, uh, they're telecommuting. So with business is not as usual. Uh, we are in a new normal. So I'm asking all the elected officials, the constitutional officers, we cannot think 2019, 2018. We have to think 2020. That is our manometer. And we just got to look at it because right now it's just extremely tight. And we're just trying to just, just keep everything in the fairway until... 2021, hopefully we 2022 will yield a much better year for us. 
um, postage, we're a little short on his po postage. How much is the post? How much did we budget for post postage in 2020, Jennifer? In 2020, $86,498. And I apologize. I'm trying to pull up um, on my desktop. I'm in my office on my laptop uh, speaking with y'all. So I have my desktop that I can go and reference. But unfortunately, uh, when I'm trying to get it's it's not working. So okay. I understand. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, Commissioner. It just keeps spinning. I, and I apologize. I am here no. and I'm getting trying are, to get the information. The yes, I am. Okay. Technology. Um, <laughs> Chairman Jones, uh, <laughs> at this point, we have what's in front of us. If um, if we need to, once we get more funds in and we close the books, then we address this and amend it. But I'm, I'm hoping that going forward, we, we will do a better job. I do hear you, and um, I accept what you're saying, but we, we got to be smoother and better on, on doing this. Um, I hope this is a lesson for all of us. Oh, but, um, I yield. Thank oh, you. Thank you. Just one quick point of order. Just one, one quick thing I just want to add so we all understand. From my understanding, the money was supposed to be put back in this budget at the top of the year. That's so we can continue with the digest, from my understanding, to even pay the bills from last, from the last go around. So just, just keep that in mind that this request, if you're saying it's going to be a request from him and that, that side of our uh, uh, department, come sooner than later. So if you just want to make the numbers look good, do what you're doing. But from my understanding, we'll see this top of January again with the request of paying 2020 deals to complete the digest, or to, to move forward to 2021. But again, again, we're looking good. But as Commissioner Carthen stated, we might want to try to, you know, this is what this is. We got to get a great, a good collection rate, and we got to. When I keep that thing going, keep that up, and get into the digest. But okay, I, I just want to make sure that, that we understand what we're doing here. Because the old company has to be paid, yet alone to move to the new software. Just FYI, I yield back. Okay, thank you so much, Commissioner Mitchell. Uh, Tax Commissioner, and I know Board uh, Board of Commissioners. Mm -hmm. I just want to I'll yield just a second for him to just. First of all, Tax Commissioner, I have a question for you. Uh, are you still on the line? Yes, I am. Okay. I'm still on the line. I, yeah, and I hear you loud and clear about your your need for your system, and uh, I certainly made it uh, a, a statement to the board of commissioners, and certainly they will take their own positions. Uh, if you decided that you want to come back January, end of January, we could make an amendment. Are you? Are do you just? Uh, are you getting out of the gate on January one with getting a new system? Do you have some priorities that have to be met? Uh, at a certain uh, timeline, uh, if you could explain that to the board, and maybe that would uh, kind of shift our decision making a little bit. Tell us what yeah. do you, you're going to get out okay. the gate January well, one on making payments, or what are you going to do? Well, yeah, that was that was the plan. Is January one we were going to come out with dollars to get the system working. We did not renew the contract on the old system, so we don't have a system to run the digest. I'll just be very frank with you. We don't have a I was told I was getting this money back January 1. Give it back. I'll have it back to you January 1. So now we'll have to probably go back to the old company and ask them to do the digest, which we ran five or six times again. And again, we don't, we're don't. we probably going to lose another 300000 They can't even run the TAD in the system. Mm -hmm. uh, we had that TAD, and we had to do that TAD by hand. We're not doing that this year. I can tell you that right now. Right. I'm not asking my staff to do it because it became a controversy on people saying we pay bonuses when we didn't get stuff done. So we're not doing it this year. So however it gets done, it gets done. But I'm not going to be responsible. I've already told you all. We're going to lose about three. I did the numbers that quit the night. We'll lose about three million four hundred thousand. Okay. Um, again, you guys told me I get it back in January. And how we get it done, that's on you guys. You know, I've done all I can. 
and I'm done. So whatever you guys decide to do, you do. Let me ask you a question, Tax Commissioner. Are you planning on um, what, uh, 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 I guess, a, just a down payment amount be okay? I believe uh, we have yeah. on, the take on the floor 300000 400 so you can get started. That's what I'm saying. Are you going to pay for the whole system all at once? No, what I'm you... not paying for the whole system all at once. That'll be a start to get it started, yeah. Three. What, what is, what is we got to get started. Three, would 300000 be acceptable? Yeah, that's fine. Anything will be acceptable to get it started. But it, yeah, I can work with that. Okay. Well, board, uh, you heard the tax commissioner said three hundred. I mean, three hundred. Okay, three hundred thousand right. to get started. And uh, we certainly do not want to stifle the the um, the county in terms of generating the revenue because you are the revenue generator for the county, and we realize that the system is at least probably thirty to forty years old. And so citizens, our citizens, we have a system that's antiquated. Uh, we are now, we're not even doing calculus. We are doing arithmetic in 2020 in Douglas County. So we really need to uh, move to the next uh, level. But of course, we were just trying to hold on to March to see what our numbers would look like. But we're very confident that our numbers will look better than expected because of some things that we've been able to do. And um, the Moody's report is very definitely reflected of that. So. Uh, Board of Commissioners, I, I, he, I said 300. Well, I heard Commissioner Robinson. Commissioner Carthen, are you okay with 300? To get him started. He said 300 would work. Are you okay with that? I mean, Commissioner Guider, that Commissioner Carthen, I, are you still there? I just want to make sure. Okay, I'm a, she might have dropped off. Commissioner Guider. Are you you are a former tax commissioner for 27 years? You need to get started on this system, and you understand the the um, the anatomy and physi physiology of uh, of the system and what's needed and what's required and the time that it takes to get a new system uh, imp uh, implemented in the system. Can you can you uh, chime in, Commissioner Guider? And then we're gonna. Do we have a chief appraiser yet? Tax commissioner, do we have a chief appraiser yet? Well, he wouldn't be hiring him. We would no, be. But he would. He would. He would know if he's hired. There's, That's why. There's, there's, there's not one yet. No. <laughs> well, he's going to be affected by this, the system, whatever we get to. So, um, but anyway, um, I thought we were going to just put it um, as a BIR, uh, and that would be in March, and and see how we end up with uh 2020 so i say zero for right now okay commissioner i certainly want to just just kind of spread our wings a little bit just because again if we wait to march i'm assuming he's ready to just get started and, and you understand logistics of systems it probably may take a while to get it implemented in full blown and i believe you need the system up and running, tax commissioner. Is it by June uh, or July? You need it at least to be up and running. And I know there are a lot of steps involved with uh, a new system. Is that? Respect your opinion, Madam Chair. Respect your position. Okay, I, I respect it. I respect it. I was just trying to see if I could just open the mind a little bit. Yeah, no, one, one, one quick thing. And I, and I'm Adam, I am open minded, oh. by the way. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate you. Okay, I won't try to change your position. Okay, Commissioner Mitchell. Yeah, this, this, this. Okay, so, so getting started. Yes, it is getting started. And yes, the the, the chief appraiser and everybody else need to be engaged to include GIS. However, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, and I don't know if somebody could chime in about this. Uh, can we use the um, the monies from uh, for the technology side of things? That's part of one of the buckets that we have to, to accommodate, is that doable or is that not doable because it's part of technology? From the COVID money, I, I mean, is, is that, I, I'm not sure, I'm just asking. So. That, that's a good point, Commissioner. Actually, when Commissioner Carthen was uh, elaborating on the buckets for the system, she mentioned the tax commissioner system. And uh, uh, certainly, I believe that would be a, a, a definitely a segue uh, certainly, and, and that would allow all of us to maintain our positions. Um, would love 
if we could utilize some funding from that COVID-19. Uh, and that's why I'm asking that question now to say, because if that's the case, then you're going to have to look at the other things that have a little kill risk really kind of keep things moving. Now, again, it might not be until March that all of this happens or not happens. But right. I don't want it to be... Uh, it's on hold until March yes. something. Only to find that that's when you start, but that puts you two months behind. So, is that uh, Commissioner Carson? I don't know if she knows the answer to this. Well, I don't know if that's more of a mark question, but if that technology money could be used, peel something from that 866 as a part of the three or five that I was proposing, a five, and then you move from there. Yes. Okay. Um, Commissioner Carthen, what are your thoughts? And, and Tiffany Stewart Stanley, our Director of External Affairs, said the money can be used primarily on anything, so it's not restricted. So certainly, if we could just uh, cap or reserve some funding out of that COVID-19, 866000 that would allow this uh, budget to hopefully move forward and then to wrap things up. So, Commissioner Carthen, I, I heard you mention the Tax Commissioner's budget. Someone's a microphone. If you could mute your mics, please. I uh, Commissioner Carthen mentioned several times that uh, the tax commissioner's uh, system needed to be addressed. Okay, thanks. Are you okay with that? It's somebody's microphone. Turn your if, mic off. If you mute your mics, please. Everybody, please mute your mics. Hmm. Can you see whose mic is on? Okay, thank you. Well, Okay, Commissioner Carthen, you want to weigh? In? Can you weigh in? I believe I like uh, Commissioner Mitchell's idea and so, uh, as a as a temporary solution. It, it, it'll allow us to move forward. Yes, Chairman Jones, I'm in agreement. Okay, what about you, Commissioner Car uh, Commissioner Guider? Are you in agreement that we could should use the CARES, CARES funding? You're gonna have to, I guess, because you're gonna. Okay go below your your ten uh, percent so uh, anyway you okay. break your own rules well I wasn't going below that's why I was asking we have another solution which is that cares funding I appreciate Commissioner Mitchell bringing that to the floor so that's why I say I'm thinking that that's a good idea so that'll keep us above the ten percent threshold so I definitely don't want to break my own rule yeah. particularly in a pandemic yeah. uh, Commissioner Robinson. Yeah, there, there's no way, guys, that I would have supported anything going on that policy. No way, right? I mean, I, I appreciate this, but but there's no way. I, I mean, we. I, I'm not certain where you, I, had, I dropped off and I came back, but what are you talking about? We're below 10, how do we get there? You can't get there. There's no way we'll be in violation. I mean, everything we just talked about, like, no, I, I'm told we get, need to be partial. I, I get it. Y'all yeah, heard of CARES, but I had to weigh in like, what now? It shouldn't be played, it shouldn't be toyed with to even try to push it below it. There's no way I would accept that type of position. And we went through all this, we go below the policy? Absolutely not. We're not going to say. All right. Well, it sounds like y'all got the majority. I just, again, I dropped and I came back in, but it sounds like y'all got it solved. So, Madam Chair, it sounds like you got your budget whole now. So, okay. we're ready to move forward. Okay. Board of Commissioners, sounds like we're whole. Uh, we have a solution. Um, and uh, do we have a motion? to approve the 2021 budget. So Madam moved. Chair. Yes, Com Commissioner Carthen. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Commissioner Carthen. Uh, that, uh, it, Jennifer. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so that, that's that's yeah. okay. I, I didn't mean to interrupt. I just wanted to make sure. Um, can y'all still see my screen? N yes. Okay. So is from talking about using the technology, does this 300,000 stay in? And y'all were saying anything above that, we would go to the resolution and use part of the 866? No, I believe what we were saying, just take that out completely and we'll just uh, go utilize the CARES Act funding for now. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. No, no, no. That's not what you, that's not what you said, Commissioner. Is that? No. Okay. You keep the free in. And if there's additional funding that's needed to kind of either kick it off or move it or whatever direction it goes, you pull it from the CARES funds. Okay, that's what you were. Okay. Okay. I don't know if you heard Vice Chairman Robinson. That was a totally different, I guess, when he came back on as I've been in and off. But, but I think that's, there's, a, there's a problem with that side, if I'm not mistaken. 
Okay. And that certainly will not take us below the, the amount. Once you put that 300,000, we're still at the threshold of 10.58. Is that what we have, Jennifer? 10, 10.58%? Yes, ma'am, that's correct. Okay. Okay, everybody's completed the 10.58 percent. Yep. We say we need an additional funding to continue to jumpstart the tax commissioner system uh, in advance to the spring, you know, the March of 2021. We can certainly use CARES Act funding. So, any other comments before I call the motion? Board yes, to Director Hallman, do you have all the numbers lined up to give her the final number for the 2021 budget? Yes, I do. All right, lead it up, Madam Chair. Okay, um, Director Hallman, if you could provide me with those numbers so I could read it into the record, please. Absolutely. Uh, the. Uh, one second, Madam Chair, just pull it over before she kind of does that. Can I go back? Yes, Commissioner, you have the floor. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Mitchell. So, so, so Jennifer, just, just for clarity, I think he was leading somewhere when you mentioned, if I can hear you correctly, you said something about the three is, is left in there. And you were going to the, the, the uh, CARES Act monies to say the additional funds will go there. Am I correct in my thoughts while I was hearing you trying to go <clears throat> before we kind of got sidetracked? Yes, sir. The 300000 um, is still in the uh, 21 budget. Um, and so anything additional uh, would um, need to be coming out of the resolution. Okay, so I just want that statement to be known so we clearly understand that that's where the next funds will come from. And we, and we need to, I mean, to get started with the three. If there's more needed, it'll come from there. Mm -hmm. Because the technology side of things. <clears throat> Am I correct in making that statement, Jennifer? As to your marching orders. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Yes, said, sir. Okay, mm -hmm. I just, I just want to, you know, I want the board to hear it because I, I don't want it to, to be when we get there, it becomes something different. So I'll leave it at that. So I'll yield, Madam Chair. Okay. Okay. And you, all right, Jennifer, if you could read, the, give me the numbers so I can read them to the record, please, for the 2021 budget. Okay, I'm off mute now. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, the general fund, uh, if you would like, I can pull it up on the screen. Yeah, and then I can read it from there. Okay. Okay, can can everybody see that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so this is what you have. You have the general fund budget at ninety nine million six hundred and eleven thousand five hundred forty one dollars. Mm -hmm. Let's make sure this is pulling the right. Let me make sure I'm pulling the right um, figure here. Yes, I am. That means the total of all funds would be one hundred and eighty one thousand seven hundred and one hundred eighty one million seven hundred and forty six thousand seven dollars. OK. Thank you. All right. Hi, this is Henry Mitchell, also known as. Sorry about that. <laughs> Did you lose? Mr. Mitchell, Mitchell drops off again. OK. Technology, you know, it sounds like we need to move quickly on technology. We're waiting on Commissioner Mitchell or the commissioners he dropped off. He's, he's back now. Okay, good, good. Okay, Board of Commissioners, thank you so much tonight for weighing in and working with me to uh, shape the budget and appreciate your, your input and ideas and understanding on, on the uh, adjustments we had to make. And I'm hoping that the citizens understand because everything is based Tonight, primarily, uh, we know on factual inf information and not emotions, and that's very important to me. 
Uh, again, we want to start with the Board of Commissioners. I'm calling the question. Do we have a motion to uh, uh, to adopt the resolution? I mean, to adopt the resolution for 2021 budget in the amount of one hundred and eighty one million seven hundred and forty six thousand and seven dollars. So moved. Do we have a second? Second, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We have a motion and second. When I call your district, please respond accordingly. District one. District one. Okay. District two. Yes. District three. No. District four. Absolutely not. District one. Lisa, she called on me yet? Yes, yeah, she, she yeah. just called on you. Can you hear me, Henry? Okay, yes, I got it again. I'm sorry. Uh, the chairman's waiting on your vote. I'm going to say no. I'm going to, yes, I'm going to say no. Okay. All right. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. So Fails. Yeah, it so, fails. Okay, right. we need to go back in and shape this budget even more. Okay, can can I determine with uh, the three commissioners that said no and I didn't respond, so we already knew that the, the motion failed. Um, Commissioner Carthen, what needs to be reshaped in your opinion and what do we need to do? I'll Thank you, Chairman Jones. For asking, thank you so much for asking. I won't belabor this. I will just say my comment is that we should only adopt a budget based on the funds that we brought in. So I already said I would not pass a budget that was not equivalent to what we brought in. So that's why I said no. So it sounds like you, you're you requesting us to shave some of this out of here, some of these things that are already proposed tonight, correct? Right. And I, Jennifer, if you, you could just, what you could, if you could compile a list of those things that are compressing this budget to back it out of there, let's see what we have. Uh, because she, uh, again, I hear Commissioner Carthen's concern. And then I'll go to you, Commissioner Guider. What can we do to reshape this budget to allow it uh, to pass in your opinion? I don't like any of it, to be honest. <laughs> um, mm. I don't like what was done about the probate uh, judge. Uh, that's uh, and I don't like. Um, we sat here and we talked about the the technology, the eight hundred sixty six bug thousand uh, dollar bucket, and the need for technology. And Lord, we done, done spent that money. We ain't gonna have nothing to fix anything with. Uh, we we just this first of all the tax commissioner's issue should have been brought settled before it got here. I don't like anybody coming up on the last day and throwing a wrench in the whole thing. Uh, Y'all should have had that settled. Y'all meet with them on a daily basis until you settle it, and it's up to y'all to do that. Uh, I don't sit in on the hearings. Uh, the, the chairman, you and the uh, uh, county administrator do, and the finance department, y'all need to have him on the same page as y'all. But to give give someone $300,000, and you don't even know how much the system's going to cost, to me, the shopping should have been done by now. We should know what uh, the system's supposed to be costing but uh, we don't even have a chief appraiser. We don't know if he's going to be on the same page as the tax commissioner. We're in a heck of a mess again. So uh, you I don't sit here on the last day and after four hours sit here and try to settle this problem. I think we need to uh, 
forget about the budget tonight, have a call meeting later on. Let us all send in our recommendations and get something settled before we put we come before the public in such a unorthodox way. Um, I know we lost the public a long time ago. They're not going to sit here and hear us squabble like this. So this is just a, a, a mockery of the system. So I yield. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah, Thank yeah. you so much, Commissioner Guider. Uh, Com Commissioner Robinson, you have yeah. to weigh into um, writing everybody's no, uh, comments. Keep going. Yeah, I, 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 again, one more time, I checked out because there's technology, so I apologize. And Commissioner mentioned my comments weren't towards you other than, okay, so Director Holman, and I heard you, Commissioner, Commissioner Carthen, how do we get, why, now we had a floor, and we knew, so were we within, the, what happened? When did we cross that threshold? That's a simple math problem. When did we cross over that threshold? Uh, when we had a cap that was established from early this year. Um, Are you there? Yep. Um, yes, the, the cap was that our revenues um, would be, we would um, project the revenues to be the same as what we project for 2020. Um, and then after that, everything was taken from fund balance. That's why when we showed on the spreadsheet, we were showing that as things were being added or taken away, that it was being taken away from fund balance because there was no more revenues to cover any of the additional requests. Okay, well, that, 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 that should have been said, but that defeats, to your point, I get it, no, no, but that defeats the point. You got a cap, you got a floor, right? That that, that should have been identified. It was. I know when we, it got away from us. Uh -huh. That was at some point the numbers are like, okay, y'all are, let us know when we. They sort of when the buzzer goes off at when you got three minutes, the buzzer should have went off. Um, and and to that and it's okay, you've captured it. So how far did we go below it? I mean, this we 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 no, we got to finish this. And I agree with Madam um, Guider. Uh, it, we can do better than this. Like, come on, guys. But all right, come on, Jennifer, help me out. Work me through this real quickly. When do we cross the threshold? Right now, that um, we have, we are going into fund balance one million three hundred and eighty-five thousand six hundred ninety-nine dollars. Okay. So, and that's below. That's more than the budget. I mean, that, that's more than the two thousand nineteen budget. I mean, the expenditures go more than a 2019-19 budget. I know what I'm saying. The the expenditures are exceed the revenues by that amount, and the revenues are based upon what we expect to get in 2020. Right. Well, you ain't gonna be able to cut a million dollars tonight. I'm agree with uh, Madam Goddard. You want to do another meeting? I, I can't cut a million out this right now. You ain't gonna be able to get there. I agree with Madam Goddard. We're gonna with the law of diminishing returns. And um, uh, I, I agree. We we said that we already established that this early this year. So as much as we're trying to put in, uh, not yet. We're not there. We'd be in violent of our, our policy, and that was my point that I thought I heard. That I apologize, I wasn't listening. But um, I mean, because of the technology. So, Madam Chair, you you can't cut it, man. We, we will be here all night. And yeah, I, yeah. We raise as much as we can, so we're gonna have to. Pause this. I mean, I'll, I'll yield to my peers, but I think that's it, guys. We've taken as far as we can. We pick this back up tomorrow. We, we, we just recess the meeting um, until sometime that you guys all agree tomorrow. And we pick it back up to finish it. So we freeze it to where it is. We pick it back up. Ken Bernard, county attorney, is that an appropriate? Because uh, I don't know, did we make a motion? Yeah. Did we get? Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, uh, I think the question, uh, Commissioner Robinson, is as to the budget, if you are going to table this item to a, the time certain, the question is going to be what are you going to do with the rest of the consent agenda, some no. of which is matters that need to be handled. So I, I think what I'm hearing is the budget needs to be tabled mm -hmm. until a date and time certain for a meeting, and then you would continue on with the rest of the meeting, I presume, unless y'all are saying let's continue this meeting until sometime tomorrow or recess this meeting until sometime tomorrow. So I'm not exactly sure 
what to ask is, but are you talking strictly about the budget or are you talking about the rest of the agenda? I'm talking about the budget um, to that point. Listen, this, there is some time since yeah. the thing I'm chair. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I, I prefer to wait, push the policy off as well to tomorrow because that's related to the budget. Okay. So. Right. so, so Madam Chair, I think you could, I think what y'all could do is uh, table this item, come back to it at the conclusion of this meeting after you finish whatever business you're going to finish tonight and then address a date and time uh, certain for it to come back onto the table or to come back to a meeting so the public is made aware. Okay. It sounds like you may need a special call meeting. And so I would like, if there's a way to do that, to announce what that is. If it's going to be, you know, like tomorrow, I think we need to announce it while the public is present. If it's going to be later than that, I think the county clerk can contact whoever. But to keep the a public apprised, I think the question is, when will you meet on this budget to try to finalize it? Okay, Ken, thank you so much. We certainly will meet sooner than later. And clerk, uh, I know you need to start uh, thumbing through the calendar to see what's the best possible date for all us to, to reconvene for this budget. And I appreciate our uh, commissioners uh, who said no, so we could back it up. It's so easy to spend money when you're just calling numbers out. So we need those gatekeepers that's out there to say, uh-uh, we've called, crossed the threshold. So really appreciate you holding the line. So with that being said, uh, Ken, I'm gonna make, a, uh, uh, Attorney Bernard, I will make um, a recommendation uh, so we can table uh, number 11, but also we're gonna come back to number nine as well. So can I can, uh, table those two at the same time or do I need to do them separately? Uh, uh, Madam Chair, I said, item nine, are you tabling nine until you take up the budget at a yep. date, later date? Or are you yes, tabling yes. it right now? You, yeah, I'm gonna table. Yeah, yeah. I, th I think it's fine to accept a table, a motion to table item nine and 11 and call uh, as part of a motion and call a special call meeting that's advertised so that the public is aware when that's gonna be. Okay, thank Madam you. Madam Chair. Board of Commissioners. Uh-huh, Commissioner Guider. I think you're gonna have to include item 13, uh, 12 too, because it's contingent on the budget. Oh, the 12 authorization for the yeah. chairman to execute employment agreements for contract employees is that that's contingent as well. Okay. Uh, I, yeah, I think we ought to. As well. <laughs> yeah, Madam Chair, I think what you're going to have to do is identify everything that's tied to next year's budget and table it until this budget is approved at a special call meeting and only deal with the remaining items that are not but they're not are not impacted by ne by a budget approval for next year. Hmm. Okay. I believe tab number 14 is uh not related to the budget because I believe they're paid a different way. Tab number 14, 15, um and 16. We're going to move forward with those. Uh the law clerk position is that is that a grant position but it's still Madam Chair, my suggestion is this. Anything that is dealing with next year should be moved to when the budget is approved and those items are taken up. I would only deal with tonight if the board wants to continue this meeting unless it wants to recess until tomorrow. Uh, I would suggest that you only deal with things that are have no impact going into next year, whether they're grant or otherwise, so that it's all done in one scoop. Uh, mainly because I think it will help Jennifer Hallman track it. It will also help HR track it, and it will help us track the contract. So I would yeah. just suggest if you're going to continue this meeting, only deal with the items that are budget, don't have any impact on next year's budget. And I'm looking, Ken, it appears that all of them have an impact so on next year's. Why don't we just recess until... So I'll just recess. That's what I'm going to do. I just noticed I'm looking at the list, and all of them, we have, there's an impact. Madam so Chair, Madam Chair. Madam yes. Chair. Mm -hmm. I think tomorrow's going to be too soon. I mean, it's 11 o'clock. When are we supposed to submit anything to you if you call a meeting tomorrow? I think, and to get all of us on the same page, uh, I think it's we need a day to do that. So I would suggest it be Thursday or Friday. I like that suggestion as well. Um, that's Thursday, Thursday afternoon. Is that good for everyone? Let's try Thursday afternoon. Is that good for all our uh, commissioners? When do we meet with the delegation? Uh, we meet with them at, I believe, 8.30. Let me look. Lisa, do you know what time we meet with the delegation? I believe it's 8.30. Yeah, 
Yes, um, ma'am. Okay. I believe you're correct. Okay. So, Board of Commissioners, are you you think you'll be um, you have all the information you need, and we'll all have time to just uh, chat, not together, but separately. And if you have questions or concerns, we can address this budget. It's Thursday afternoon. A good day for everyone. I'm checking. Okay. <laughs> Board of Commissioners, can you check your calendars? I'll make it work. The legislative uh, it's delegation the, order. It's in the morning, Henry. Commissioner it's Mitchell, morning, it's in, okay. yeah, it's at 830 in the morning. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I think it's okay for me. Okay. What about you, Commissioner Carthen? Chairman Downs. Uh huh. That's a good time for you Thursday afternoon. Yes. Yes. Thursday afternoon. I'll make it work. And so, so, so Madam Chair, I'm mm -hmm. sorry. Did you get everybody? No, I'm getting ready to check with Commissioner Mitchell to see if he's okay. And then we're going to move on. At what time Thursday? Did you say? Noon. Well, around after any time after the afternoon. So you want uh, one o'clock? One o'clock. Is that good for everyone? One o'clock. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. So, Madam, uh, if, so Madam Chair, if it's going to be one o'clock, I would suggest a uh, you entertain a motion to recess this meeting until this Thursday at 1 p.m. to continue via virtual meeting so that the clerk can get a proper notices out of the continuation of this meeting. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Attorney Bernard. Board of Commissioners, if we're ready, I would like to make a motion to recess this meeting until Thursday at 1 o'clock. Do we have a motion? So moved. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We have a motion and a second. Uh, uh, when I call you district, please respond accordingly. District one. Yes. District two. Yes. District three. Yes. District four. Yes. Chairman, yes, we have a 5-0 unanimous vote and we are in recess until Thursday at 1 p.m. Board of Commissioners. And Lisa, if you could make a note for my uh, executive assistant to adjust my calendar accordingly. If, if I have a meeting, we just have to move it because I want to be present and accounted for for this important meeting. Um, Attorney Bernard, um, all right, that means I'll hold off on announcements and approval of expenses and everything until we return for our recess. So thank you. That's correct. Well, you will pick up the agenda where you are in the budget, it sounds like. Yes. Okay, right. Board of Commissioners, any more remarks? This is about 11, 6, 16 p.m. <laughs> We've had a long night, and uh, certainly this is what, what the process is all about. We all want to uh, agree, uh, and we certainly want to uh, st uh, stay firm, stand firm on what we proposed earlier. We want to make sure that we align our budget with 2020, and we cannot take our eye off the pandemic. Uh, this is a new normal, and we just have to adjust accordingly. And I ask our public officials, our elected officials, our constitutional officers to just please work with us. This moment is unique to everyone. And in, in closing, we'd just like to remind our citizens to continue to practice those three W's. Our surge is up. The positivity rate right now is 600 to 100,000 cases in Douglas County. And I ask you to continue to watch your social distancing wear your mask when in public and please wash your hands repeatedly throughout the day. If there's nothing else to come before this board, this meeting is adjourned. Board of Commissioner, well, this meeting is in recess and we will see you on Thursday at 1 p.m. We are now in recess.